Yeah, nothing but worry on that. Well, wait. So, do you, do you, what what would you put your money on for being better, the Batman or Multiverse of Madness? I feel like I know uh, the answer. Batman. Bit. Batman. <laughs> yeah, Batman. Obviously, it's more low stakes, less variables to worry yeah, about. I was gonna say, it looks more promising. There's a funny element of like, well, which which one is traveling through multiple dimensions? You're like, oh, mm. uh, yeah, right. That's the. Which one is trying to do a billion cameos versus which one is trying to just tell its own story? Like, which explicitly one said is... they're not even going to try Expl and involve Yeah, explicitly, people. steadfastly a standalone project. I mean, obviously there'll be sequels and spin-offs and stuff, but it's trying to be its own thing. I think there's much more reason to be optimistic for the Batman than there is for Doctor Strange. Yeah, it looks uh, like there's some level of what we call artistry involved. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. It feels like there was a vision there. You mean like uh, yeah, storytelling artistry? Because I mean, Multiverse of Madness is going to look cool. Yes, we don't say that Multiverse here. Multiverse of Madness will definitely look cool. There are a lot of cool shots in the trailer, but I guess Batman already like Batman has a lot of cool shots. But also, I expect it to like tell a story. <laughs> you know. Like, we haven't had any quotes of Robert Pattinson saying, you know, I, I don't know what my arc is when I was shooting the film. <laughs> like, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, he isn't, he isn't going, fuck Batman in the trailer. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? That's like a seal of approval. I mean, that show's on, it's like, is it coming up to four seasons, that, that thing? I think, I think so. Titans, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Did you, that's, did that's you give that a look at any point, or? No. Wait, Titans still going? I guess I so. Think so. Yeah. I guess it's well, a show again, you hear nothing uh, about ever. Yeah, but remember, like the the CW Flash has already been renewed for like a ninth season, and nobody watches those what shows. The fuck, a ninth season. Uh, we still have to catch yeah, up like, on our Batwoman, or else. And so, yeah, we stopped watching Batwoman. Now, no one does. Um, Jill I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. She's actually tweeted at me every once in a while, like, you guys need me, to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, we'll get there. It's so bad, we need to see it. All in good time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we are live. Uh, how is it? Oh, hello, chat. How you doing? Oh, hello. Hello. We're, uh, we're here today to have a little, have a little chit-chat and to finally explore a divisive negative opinion on Arcane, because we were gushing over it way too much. I think it was totally fair that we should involve a different perspective, and that's what we're going to do. As well as probably try and catch up on the many, many messages we've had related to Arcane. This will be the end of the Arcane arc, which was all of February, apparently. Kind of strange, but that's how it worked out. Epilogue, if you will. The Arcane, There's a portmanteau in there somewhere. Um... What else? I was just thinking, what else is there to say? I guess people would be like, acknowledge Elden Ring. And be like, yeah. Game. Elden Ring's it, out. It yep, exists. it's out. Um, me, Metal, and Theo are probably going to be all people who get to the end of it. Um, I don't know if Das will, but um, that means yeah, that there I, are, uh, there's potential have, discussion, you know? Yeah, I mean, I may have been up until five in the morning playing it because it's the only fucking <laughs> chance I've gotten these days, but uh, I'll probably not finish it uh, before you guys uh, for a while because it's, it's tough what's going on lately. But uh, yeah, uh, I have enjoyed it and I've got some things to say negatively about it, but mm -hmm. overall, good outing. Um, I have so many things to say. Uh, there's are things to say, Ron. <laughs> oh my God. And yet, everyone's still in chat. Look at them; they're waiting. Yeah, but, um, hanging in there. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll tool around. We'll consider a an a, an event where we just talk about Elden Ring. I don't see why not. The only problem, obviously, being that Rags and Fringy have not played it, but they, I'm sure, I would be very interested it. in the uh, topics to be brought up related to video game design. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Ooh, yeah. I might take a look at it if uh, if we if we set ourselves to doing an EFAP, I might uh, get it, play a bit. Someone. Has already asked. Where's Metal? Playing Elden Ring. He's doing He's an Elden Ring Elden right Ring. now. Yeah. Streaming over there. I think he might even, I don't know, like, play it until the EFAP's done. Who knows? Quite committed. Um. <laughs> do you see that first super chat, for you? Yeah. <laughs> what? No, I didn't. <laughs> it's distracted me. <laughs> uh. Well, we can probably just jump right in, right? There's no reason not to, I yeah. think. 
Yeah. I guess there is no reason for us to not do that. Yes, indeed. So I'm gonna give you guys the old lunk to the to. The, oh yeah, so uh, Jay might show up. I don't know. I, I'm I'm pretty sure Jay knew this was happening. Jay's probably very asleep. That's okay. You do a little sleep. Uh, you don't sound like you're happy about that. I sound pretty neutral, don't I? I, I I'm not the looking rolling pin again. I, I think I think you're trying to sound neutral, but in doing so, in that case, no. that's exactly the tone I'm going for. As long as I don't sound too. I angry. am actually neutral. There you go. Uh, there you go. Are you neutral, Fringy? How do you feel? Right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess neutral is probably about that description. All right. Um, Das, you feeling neutral? Yeah, pretty, pretty neutral. I'm not gonna ask Theo, because Theo's clearly fucking enraged. Trying to just well, let's breathe. descend into our moods becoming horrifically negative after we watch this video. Well, yeah. that's- there you go. I'll get some contacts going. Actually, let's see if this is in- Okay, Steve, that is not the way it's supposed to be. Screen capture... Display... Oh my god, it's all ruined! There you go, it's fixed because again. Because we've been so used to doing the arcane stuff. Oh, I think that's just my computer. Sometimes it switches the screen names and so it flumps it all around. Um, so I will say, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed it, but um, Watch Together just like changes the way the window looks every once in a while. Uh, size. Because yeah. it's it's slightly bigger than usual. I, I, and I was like, yep, this is going to fuck up the... Uh... I guess the graphic designers need to get paid somehow. Like, yeah, we fixed it again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what did you fix? Oh, nothing. We just changed it. Yeah, see, look at this. Changing is fixing, right? The yeah, whole load of that. schnizzle that I've missed out on now. And I gotta make sure I don't scroll too high so I don't give away the URL, but there we go. Ah, fixed it. And we do this. Um, Alright, anyway, yeah. So, uh, when looking at different bits and bobs of arcane analysis, I had come across a channel, and I didn't realize it was the same one as the one we're covering today, unfortunately. But someone who makes shorts. Uh, if, I don't know if you guys ever watch shorts on YouTube, but sometimes they recommend them to you. Uh, They're like... A funny we'll do a funny it's, it's YouTube's That's attempt at being TikTok, basically. Um, yeah. It's like... Yeah. The videos are typically like 30 seconds or so, something like that. Um... And he's made a few mm -hmm. for the characters in, in Arcane, and there's a couple of moments in Arcane that I think are a bit question marky, and he's made videos for those. You'd be like, oh, this this is this because this is this, 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 and it means this for the character, and it's like, oh, that's that's kind of neat. And okay. I liked a few of them. I was like, these these are all, these, these are cool, and I agree. Well, and then someone, right, okay. someone very cruelly was like, hey, want to watch a video about Arcane? That, about its bad characterization? And I was like, oh. I mean, okay, fine. Let's get some opinions. And it was from that guy. I was like, "What in the world?" He's um, he is a he is a writer, I believe, and he is exploring arcane as a way of I don't know expressing and learning about. He's writing a and... so he, Do you know what he's Maybe written? The way to do it. Or... Oh no, 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 no. I just it's just something that it's I know he's books, right. Uh, probably, I, I, I can't say, but um. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of what what other preamble would be necessary other than just going... Well, this. um, I know that Mola discovered this video while I was streaming, like, a week ago, and <laughs> he couldn't me. help but provide a lot of comments <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. on that while we were having an unrelated discussion. He'd just keep chiming in with new observations, so... Well, from my yeah. POV, it was the reverse. <laughs> my well, POV, sure. Jedi are wrong. I guess that's true. I think the Jedi were on point, Rags. What do you mean? Don't have attachments. <laughs> Makes you evil. <laughs> also, <laughs> respect your uh, tutors as though they were your your. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so the this shouldn't like it, it made me angry. So I can't wait to see what it does to you lot. Uh, the uh, yeah, it made you angry. Uh, yeah, a little yeah, bit. It did actually make him angry because he kept chiming in with angry responses. I left that part out because I was wondering if he wanted to give that away. Um, <laughs> well, well I, I suppose people are going to be curious why we're tackling it, and it's like that is going to be the reason. Um, I I assume Marcus is fine. Well, yes. Yeah, so the character on the on, as as shown by the thumbnail, it is Marcus. Um, I wonder if we should give a little thing before starting this up. It's just like, what do you think mm -hmm. of Marcus? It's like, well, I mean, 
Rags, why don't you, why don't you, because since you couldn't quite make it for that last bit of the of the previous fap, you can open with this, right? What, what, what's, what's the deal with Marcus? Why do you hate him? What's the deal with Marcus, and why do I hate him? I don't actually hate him. Uh, Marcus is a very, Marcus comes across in Arcane is probably one of the most realistic sort of characters. Uh, in the sense that he seems like a character that a lot of people could become and a lot of people could find themselves being either unwittingly or otherwise. He is torn between his desire to protect his family, to try and do the right thing, to try and live up to the um, to to the the lofty example of people he respects and unfortunately that leads him to compromise often on his values for more pragmatic purposes and he hates himself for it he is not a he's not a cheerful villain sort he is not evil for evil sake he's not he is he's definitely torn on a lot of things he's caught between a lot of different directions and um i i really like the way that he's written out uh he doesn't get too much Screen time compared to a lot of the major characters, but what we get of him shows a very conflicted man who mm -hmm. ends up doing a lot of bad things for potentially noble goals or at least understandable ones. But he's uh, he's being pulled a lot of different ways. So Marcus is uh, one of my favorite written characters in the series, and I think you would be pretty hard pressed to try and explain or convince people that. He was uh, he was a low tier character in terms of Arcane's grading scale. Yeah, um, it was there was an interesting amount of appreciation for him when I think a lot of people might just miss a lot of his story, or they, at least they could. And uh, you know, you talk about stresses as well. He's arguably he might even see himself this way as the um, the biggest reason why there is an all out war between Zorn and Piltover is like a careful balancing act uh, in sorts, but also with the uh, the deals he makes with Silco, um, arguably for peace, but also like if Jinx goes too far, then something has to be done. But how much power does he actually hold with being able to push anything like that? Uh, lots, lots of lots of stresses. I find him to be quite interesting uh, to think mm -hmm. about, especially the choice to wipe him out um, in episode seven is uh, a lot to think about. Um, Anything else you want to add about him before we check out a different perspective? Um, nothing that hasn't already been said. Um, initially, I thought he was just going to be another uh, fucking Joffrey, where he's all like, ha 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 hate me, hate me, I'm dead now, aren't you happy? But it, uh, he, he turned out to be quite a bit more complex than that. Um, a lot of people had just said, like, oh, the only reason he's complex is because, like, Oh, he he's he's got a little girl. Aw, and the, but it's like okay, but the thing of it is, in order to be a parent and actually like want to be a parent, you actually have to have some good in you, right? Because you know, otherwise, you know, you'll you're just selfish and everything. But while he does have a side of him that is selfish, like he is at least you know willing to do some things for others. He just doesn't know how to go about it in the best way possible in a way that you know he knows best. So I don't want to get too much in on it because again, I'm just going to repeat what a lot of other people said, but I would say he, he, he was slightly more redeemable in the sense that he, he wasn't like pure ass evil, which was kind of nice. Yeah. Um, the last thing I'd just add quickly is I think it's something I said last time where I find him really interesting as a character who is full of all of this anger and rage at not being able to be a better person in the situation he's in. And I think that's really interesting because I don't, I don't think I see that kind of character very often in media. And how often do we f see them, like there's a goal and they're just, it's just cut off. Like the story just doesn't have that closure. Mm. It's just, it just dies, that, that thread. And um, how much it represents a lot of his goals in life and stuff. We talked about that in prior episodes. And so um, I think with that, we can, it's so funny because it's straight away. You guys ready for this? Mm -hmm. Straight away. All right. Well, I'm just going to enjoy the, the fireworks, I suppose. 
Let's do it. There's nothing interesting about this character. There's nothing nuanced about this character. There's nothing likable about this character. And the character's arc goes nowhere, and then he dies. Mm. <laughs> I disagree so with all four of those things. So he starts off with four horrifically incorrect we, things asserted boldly in the first seven pull seconds. Back a, a second so that I can see we probably all, so shouldn't. I, I I'll play the next few seconds just hey, to wait. get the full context and then is, we can pull it back. He, is he doing a thing <sighs> where this is the criticisms levied to him? Well, let me. I'll just play the rest. Now that's what I thought when I first started looking into this character. But what I realized is that okay. good character, bad character, wrong discussion to have when it comes to Marcus. His character's. Uh. Is it, how I'm is not, that how is that not the only discussion? When it comes to a character, anything. whether or not they're a good or bad character isn't the discussion to have. It's like, what else are we going to be talking about? Feels like I mean, weird thing I, to say. I guess we could talk about other to... things if you wanted, but why can't we talk about this, especially in a character-heavy show? It seems to be whether or not a character is good or bad is is a pretty also pretty the title thing says how a great about. show uses a bad character so we are talking about whether he's bad right <laughs> the, the only well, no I because he really... said it's done it's over he's bad but yeah how is he used Wait, and, so and, and does he mean bad in terms of a bad person or badly written badly written assuming badly written in this regard the descriptions of underdeveloped or no undeveloped he is well, i was gonna say if we roll him roll him back to nothing likable about this character no. and the character okay so two so the uninteresting and unlikable are vague terms that don't tell me anything well, um, and, and all i have to say is i like him and i'm interested in him so. and i thought he was yeah so whenever you're thinking about talking about storytelling avoid interesting and likable because and these are vague terms and boring. These are vague terms that are difficult to define. And if somebody just disagrees with you and says, "Well, I found him interesting," you kind of have nothing that you can counter there. Whereas if you say like unnuanced, there is more that you can identify to latch onto to support your position. Yes, yeah, I, I figure you can. That, that's your springy tip of the day. Don't use the term uninteresting or unlikable. It's not helpful. Yeah, no, I completely agree. If you're trying to translate ideas across to people who disagree with you, because. When you say yeah. nuance, everyone's going to be thinking like, oh, does he mean like there's more dimensions to the character? Yeah. There are multiple things that drive them. That's probably what. And, you know, you can figure that out. You can definitely get a definition and generate a sort of standard for the character to fulfill and agree on it and then see if they fulfill it and decide on the on the pieces from the actual show. Yeah. But likable, like, I don't yeah. know, man. What are like you going to say? Yeah, it's, it's, it's wrong. At the very <laughs> least, if you're going to use that, like, I think you just have to provide the references and the reasoning behind it. That's but the like, only thing that can be interacted with, because the term is empty in that sense. It's Well, it's bizarre to me, because, like, I know Rags liked him a lot, genuinely, when watching the show, and so someone telling me, like, nah, he's unlikable, I just feel like, I don't, it doesn't, that doesn't, that's not compelling at all, because it's just not it, true. Yeah. Exactly. You have to tell me why. And, and even that, though, references. We gotta get even then, I don't more. know. That like, if I said, what if well, Rags, he is unlikable because he, you know, causes damage to a lot of good people. He's 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 spineless. He's blah blah. blah. I, I figured Vader. you'd be like, okay, you're you're telling me things about him that you don't like. I guess. Well then, well then, well we use that, and you say, all right, so you don't like Silco too. Silco is unlikable in the same way. Is it just? Is this? Are you just using this as a replacement for heroes and villains? Is that all you're using this word to mean? You could definitely get some conversations out of it, because I think unlikable is a mistake here, but undeveloped is a really interesting one. Fringy, I think you made a video about this. A Vumble video. Really, char character development is, is yeah, not every character needs to develop. Some characters Thank can be you. static, and it's okay. Sometimes yeah. it's better for them to be static based on their role in the story. Yeah, so, and, I mean, of citing course, that what about as an you? issue is, uh, hmm. It's not an issue for a character to not be developed. If they are underdeveloped, it's like, hmm, so I guess you could pull that there, were there was meant to be more to them, and it just kind of didn't hit the mark, but undeveloped is like, well, there are a lot of characters who are undeveloped in stories because the purpose that they serve is not to change. Well, imagine I said Emperor Palpatine in the OT is uninteresting, unnuanced, unlikable, and undeveloped. He's uninteresting because he's just, oh, I'm evil, I'm going to take over, he's and then dies. He's unnuanced, un because obviously. he's just evil. Yeah. He's unlikable because he's a bad guy, and he's undeveloped because he doesn't change. It's like, you could say all of these things. Yeah, and I, th I um, like Palpatine. He's a really good place to go a lot of the time because he is a very simplistic and static character. Um, 
Yeah. But he serves his role very well, so... Yeah, exactly. Darth now Vader's what? role is to be more complicated and to change. That's his purpose in the story. Yeah, from, like, the writer's perspective, and and it just means that sh you should have access to all kinds of options, but... Hey, he said yeah. that this was what he thought. Let us see Until what he Until he realized that it didn't even matter that he was bad. I don't even know, because I, 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 uh, I can't okay. remember how this goes. <laughs> Arc okay. goes nowhere and then he dies. Now, that's what I thought when I first started looking into this character, but what I realized is that good character, bad character, wrong discussion to have when it comes to Marcus. His characterization is flawed. Yeah, fine, true. But if that's where you think the conversation. No. How? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree. You haven't even, I, you haven't I, even established I, that. I'm just, just sitting here, like, waiting for the thing. Yeah, I'm sure you like will. It seems the, yeah. the progress of the video is probably going to be explaining why he's a bad character and then how he's used really well. I think that's the idea the video is going to go for, so we'll at least get our references. Okay. Which will be fun. ...ends with this character, you're missing a lot about what this character is all about. Because let me tell you, no other show is handling its flaws this way. This is crazy, it's a bad character, but they... Handling, handling its flaws this way? What do you that's, mean by that? That sounds like the show, like they were aware in the writing room while making that the show that Marcus was a bad character, but instead of fixing it, they decided <laughs> yeah. to like rebuild around him. Which it I morph don't the show see around that, him. I don't that's think that's odd. how it goes. I don't think. Which is, usually... How would that be the case? If you identify that the character's badly written, you're like, well, yeah. they just exist as they are. I can't change them. <laughs> it's not like I'm the like, writer. When the writer determines that there is a flaw, and they believe there to be a flaw. Usually, they will start going about fixing it. Not, yeah. not whatever this is supposed to mean. Well, yeah, because it, it is a confusing way to look at it. Because he seems to, it's like he's one of the in the writers' room with them. Like, yeah, you guys did an amazing job with such like a flawed character, and by that I mean a badly written one that you guys made. <laughs> it's like, wait, <laughs> what? It almost feels and then like, he's like wait, you guys to... didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did. They're yeah, we like, well, we got a bad character. How are we going to fix this? Well, uh, maybe we can put well, some drywall on it and uh, we could paint over it and put it in the back so no one notices and don't give him a lot of screen time. Yeah, that's a good fix. This isn't worth harping on too much, but the writers in the writing room aren't aware that they've put out a bad character usually. They will probably think it's a good character until yeah. the audience picks it up and goes, this is shit. And then they're like, oh. I wasn't they might disagree, and they might eat what the audience says and think it's valid, or they might not. Who knows? They get so much utility out of him, it's just as impressive as their good character work. So, starting point, Marcus, uninteresting, a nuance. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, wow. Un okay. Uh, okay. I, I, oh, okay. I got turned into a meme. Oh, that's okay, memes. good. They're that's a meme. Good. They're memes. Healthy, understandable. Unhealthy. Undertale, undulate, unisex. Thank goodness. I'm um, like an <laughs> isex. He ran out of und words, I think. Which is like like a vow of chastity is un isex. So all right, I'm gonna hit that play button now. Undeveloped. <laughs> this is uncharacteristic of Arcane. No other character who gets this amount of screen time fails in any of these categories, let alone all of them. So he does still think uh -oh. this is true then. Okay. Then why? I'm getting mixed signals here. I really am. Because he's saying he fails in all of these categories, which are just the. You I'm know, desperate for him to expand on this. <laughs> like, please, man, the depth. Uninteresting, un nuanced, unlikable, like, and undeveloped. It's like, oh, jeez. Unlike all the, they're just, they're just so vague. This is the character analysis. Give me the well, he, call he, the Marcus he, analysis. He's still on his intro. I'm sure of it. I Literally, just forty fucking seconds in. It's fun. <laughs> uh, also, I guess on the subject of likable, I, I feel like it can get a little bit complicated because. When we talk about liking a character, mm -hmm. I feel like we're generally not referring to whether we would like them as a person if we, if we met them, you know? Like, I mm. like Palpatine, but I wouldn't like Palpatine if he existed and oh, was real. He was in my living room, um, yeah. No, yeah, I, but I, I like him as a character. I agree with that, but like that, that's the other thing that gets super complicated. I can like Palpatine just for his performance, the actor, I mean. I could be like, his performance mm. is so good. I'd be like, well, so what do you like about him like meaningfully as a person? I'd be like, oh, fuck all, but I just really like the, the voice and the, the presence he has. You know, I could say that, but... So likability can come from so many different places. This is why it's such a difficult thing to be definitive about. Like, I think mm -hmm. in media, the attribution of, like, the... Like, you have the quality of being likable, I don't think that really works in media the way it could work in real life, because 
because of that manifold man. If you're looking to refer to likability in a character as the traits they have that are traits one would enjoy in a friend in real life or something, I just be like, wow, that is limited. That's like, not, not even it feels real. Like nobody does that. Of, nobody does that. No, nobody they does don't. that. <laughs> they definitely don't. To show you what I mean, you look at any character, and let's take interesting. What do I mean by that? Well, our slum brawler okay. character is a small teenage girl. Our slum boss is a pacifist and a really. Oh, we, okay. So oh, okay, so is that what if what, interesting? what if our brawler character? wasn't small and they were just big and normal? Could they not be interesting? Oh god, this is so we've just opened an enormous can of worms. Interesting yeah. means slum brawler means. character equals slim t obviously pointing out there's a level of juxtaposition with the characterization, therefore interesting. I like, feel like mm. that there's gotta be more to it than that. Oh, there's so many things to say about this. <laughs> like, well, I feel, well, wouldn't wouldn't the main thing be you haven't told me how well written she is? All you've done is just give me a description. It's almost like character pitches. Versus, yeah, like I don't know anything about her based on this. So is she interesting? I don't know who she is. Like how how do we define? Because you know, like Din Djarin, he's pretty interesting in pitch, but he's terrible That's a concept. Yeah. But he's he's just a nothing. Oh, I thought here. you meant the tone of his voice when you said pitch, and I was like, no, not really. It's kind of <laughs> mon monotonous, but uh, true. <laughs> but yeah, if someone said like, you know, a veteran bounty hunter who lived through the war, like his childhood was being, you know, fucking obliterated by warfare and the by the CIS, you're like, oh shit. He has a hatred of droids, but at the same time needs to work around and with them to conduct his business, and uh, he gets caught up in. Luke Skywalker's shit. You'd be like, okay, that sounds real fucking interesting. And look how yeah! it turned out. Also, hi, Jay. Hello. You decided to show up. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. Sorry, I was busy doing your mum. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, well, should we? <laughs> should we? Should we just play that opening for Jay? Okay. We'll we'll, come, we'll, we'll scroll me? back what to this part. To are you? It's a double dip, and this is not. Is it? Is it on? Is it on zero for you? It is on zero. Mm -hmm. All right. I think interesting I, about I this. I was character. just saying the words. I heard you. You showed me this already. The opening of this video. Did I? I think. When you were like testing. I was it ranting for, about it. Were you in the call when I was doing that? <laughs> yeah. Were, were you were so, you were ranting yeah. about this? And I was in the call, and you showed me the beginning of the video. Oh. I don't. I, I don't remember it 100% if you want to show me again. I will, I'm going to do that right now. There's nothing interesting about this character, there's nothing nuanced about this character, there's nothing likable about this character, and the character's arc goes nowhere and then he dies. Now Man. <laughs> so even if that were true, what would be the problem with that? It's just like, he is a side character. You could ha totally have like an uninteresting character who's just there to be a plot device and then dies when he's no longer needed for the story. That's not bad writing. Yeah, we oftentimes decide, I guess, on how significant a character is by screen time. Um, obviously, plot impact is really important as well, but the idea of, like, there's probably some... You know, like, Caitlyn's mum, for example. Someone said, like, what was her arc? it would be like, well, I mean... Yeah, I remember, I remember the, uh, the animation that played Creations did of um, the... I, I don't know if, if any of you guys remember this. It was the... The guy who pulled the lever on the Death Star, he was a bad character. You didn't get anything <laughs> oh, on him. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, we were trying to come up with this I've whole backstory. Searched, I've just Googled plagued and was, <laughs> was hoping to get the... I don't know oh, yeah, that's a little bit. Plagued. Only word. And you didn't get the result? That's fucked up. YouTube's just it's not All Alright, well, so we, we just got to this point. Uh... What I mean, you look at any character, and let's take interesting, what do I mean by that? Well, our slum brawler character is a small teenage girl. Our slum boss is a pacifist and a really good dad. Our hardest working character is physically deteriorating before- Our hardest working character, so uh... Or our eyes. Our smartest characters are really ignorant and dumb. These are all uh, unexpected- uh, so, what? So, uh, what? I've got problems uh, with all of this. God, I, God damn. Uh, I, I- You're- the way that you're characterizing them uses different traits of their- uh, I- cause, Small teenage <laughs> girl. Like... For she's not that small, um, and she's only a teenage she's girl a... for of the for first a period episodes. of time until I would she, argue, uh, you know, relatively, yeah. relatively, she's absolutely not small. Like, like that's the whole point. Is she's yeah. built up. Um, she, she's pretty 
built. But like she's still lean, but if you say in like in a broad sense, like she's she's a teenage girl though, and then she's supposed to be the brawler. It's like how interesting is that? I for me, I'm like, well, I'm, I, that's an idea. I I have to you see what told happens me who next. She is. I don't know who she is. is like, All you've done is given you told me, me what she of, is, not who she like, is. Like imagine saying, exactly. you know, a lot of people seem to think Silco is one of the best characters. When let's look at his description. Uh, he's just crime lord. Oh. I feel like that misses a lot of the nuance of that <laughs> character. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it, together. Ooh. what's what's the incredible juxtaposition with him? Maybe maybe he's gonna have him in the list. I don't know, but like, it's, it, it, I don't know. It's just like, I don't think this is how you define interesting. This is a very strange way of going about it. Yeah, this yeah. is like pre writing one hundred and one, like idea of like what to make a ideas of how to make an interesting character. It's like it's, when you go, what like, a bounty hunter with a lightsaber. What about that? Yeah, exactly that. This is it's just like, a high concept. Not even high. It feels like <laughs> is it, it's not even interesting in concept no, alone. It's not. You're right, it's just concept. <laughs> You're it's right, just it's just like... Concept. It's tri-concept. Boba Fett but rides just, a rancor. What about so, that? What if, no. what if there was like Sonic, but he was like black and edgy? Ah, uh, yeah, like a <laughs> bantha. <laughs> like a bantha. <laughs> Oh, dude, they need like a Shadow the Hedgehog bad though, with a little red He's strip. He's gonna probably show up in the like a hedgehog. Minutes. It'd be great. It's it, this is like um like I don't want to be too mean out the bat. This is like a fucking. This reminds me of like Do when it. I was eleven okay. and I went to movies with my friends and they would come out saying like, oh, what if there was like Batman but he was evil and he was evil Batman? That would be so interesting. <laughs> it's like that's the same level of commentary. I feel you were friends with Zack Snyder when you were eleven. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a 30 yeah. year old who's like, oh my god, <laughs> Superman. But Listen, like, Jay, I've got like, so many nice. ideas. No one's listening to me. I guess the thing and is, then you told them no one should listen to you. I feel like you could make these kind of descriptions of bad characters as well if you just reach, you know? Well, like a lot of them, they like. You Kylo Sorry. Ren, villain, confused. <laughs> like, confused. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah that's, that's, exactly. That's interesting. Timba, That's really his arms wide. Like Boba Fett, he's a crime lord, but he's trying to be a good he's person. Not a Isn't crime that interesting? Lord. Yeah, like a crime lord oh, who's no, it's not, all who's not evil. You see, like all of the shitty characters we've had lately, like they kind of satisfy this, don't they? It's just a lord. Because Loki, he's like anything. the god of mischief, but he really cares about like the downtrodden and, and innocent mm -hmm. people dying. No. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> How interesting, as opposed to when he was a, just a straight bad guy. That wasn't interesting. But that's the, the funny thing you say, straight bad guys. Like there were there was there was pieces of him, right? Like it is all. There were pieces. And you guys, like, yeah. they can guys. You clearly weren't paying attention. He is confirmed to be a bisexual guy. Is that? Do you Ooh, can't be evil when you bisexual? Now he's interesting. Oh, that's the that's the interesting part, yeah. But anyway, like so, this is probably the I least. Can, as a bisexual person, I can confirm it is not possible to be evil. That's pretty cool. Well, it it so, makes me think of like... I don't know, I forgot, I forgot what I was going, going to say. Oh no! Shame, maybe it'll you come guys with... missed out on my thought. Damn. Oh, that's DVD okay. Right you now, could so. just conjure more to replace it. Uh, oh. But they wouldn't be the same thought, would they? That's alright, maybe they'll be even better. I just want to oh. push him to the He's second one. Our slum boss she is says, a pacifist. Slum boss slum character boss. is pacifist. So the funny thing about this is... I don't think it was like, I don't even think that's much of a juxtaposition to be the boss of Zorn and to be pacifistic. It's like, well, also he's not a pacifist. Dad. He's also not a pacifist. That's true. Uh, he's more. Yeah, he has gauntlets. He will pacifist across your face. If I you will fuck up. He exactly. Yeah. To. He even threatens that was a really people good with pun them. Rags. Thank you. That was actually pretty good. I like that pacifist. Uh, so th I think that it's important to highlight the fact that he's a peacekeeper, not a pacifist. He wants people to not fight, but he will fuck you up if he has to. Yeah. Well, like he threatens not on, like, the a... guys in his in, in uh, the the one drop or not the one drop the last drop mm -hmm. for not honoring the deal. It's like honor the deal or I'll fucking punch you in the face. Which is very pacifistic, I would say. That's the exact mm -hmm. quote. <laughs> I, I remember my thought. It was a great thought. Um, I'm just oh, I just want to with the um the uh, brawler character is actually like a teenage girl and she's like small. It's like okay, so. Are we are we supposed to take the implication from that that if Vi no. was just like um, some like twenty five year old like six foot five dude that she wouldn't be an interesting character anymore? Yeah, that's not what interesting is. 
If they yeah. were a straight white man, yes, they would not be. If, if you wanted it to redefine like his talk of his talk of interesting seems to be limited to concept alone. Like Yeah, which is this strange. Is, this is this is like hooks If you could at even best. call this concept, it's Yeah, it's, like that's it's what I mean. So this, low hook at best. This is, you know, oh, what um, if well, so this this video has a very good like to dislike ratio because when you said that, my immediate thought was damn Damn, I'm trying to stop saying my immediate thought. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I really am. Slow thoughts for um, My first thought, there we go. That's a little bit different. My first thought was, I've actually, I definitely seen conversations about characters be this shallow. I, I've definitely seen this. There's like, so many, um, like, because you, you know if he was here. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, it just it just reminds me of like when I've watched videos that are giving advice on writing characters. Sometimes it will be this simple. And it will be responded to positively, but if it, but we're missing so much nuance, well, do you, you think know, or we're missing the core. It's the kind of thing where everybody who agrees with this video is doesn't actually. They just haven't really tooled through it. Because I think, yes, I think as uh, fast as it, he's giving info, seems, I can believe it. Yeah, it's 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 something that seems like agreeable at first. Like, yeah, that is an interesting juxtaposition, and I remember from that like writing class or something that like. I got told that that was good. Hmm, yeah, like that's, but it, you know, it's it's with a lot of things. When you slow it down and allow each point to sit, and you start to think about any way that you could like counter that point, you know, it starts to become more apparent that we're not really we're not really talking about anything here. You know, I think that, yeah, this is the the Force Awakens of video essays, and there are a lot of Force Awakens of video. What do you essays. mean by that? You watch it and you're like, haha, yes, that was good. Yeah, the Force, you didn't think I was about, about to say, I was about to yeah. say, The Force Awakens is actually a really great example because yeah, it's a film a that, while, like, for instance, when you're watching it, you may not think, wait, this, this, this planet absorbed the full mass of a star. How is that even possible at all? Or, like, wait, you tell me. Why wait, is Han Solo they, like this? Yeah, it, but you're not given enough time to think. That's like, how J.J. Abrams <laughs> makes stories is like they move so fast that you're not given any time to really think about how stupid what uh, is happening is. Um, but then if you rewatch it again, knowing where everything's going, it probably becomes more apparent, like the problems. I guess it just feels the same here. These are things that might seem at first really agreeable. Like, oh, this is a point. But then once you slow <laughs> it down and start thinking about examples to the contrary, it, it doesn't really hold up anymore. So but I guess a, what I'm saying I hate is, TFA I'm not surprised. Ten minutes in, it's like, yeah, it did work on everybody. We all say it works on it everybody. Did, it worked. Well, yeah, I mean, this video isn't working people. on everybody, is it? No. Well, this video is working on clearly a, a lot of people because it's got a really good like to dislike ratio. I guess is what I mean. I'm not surprised that this that a video like this would get responded to well. I think that this video's dislike to dislike ratio matches what the like to dislike ratio of the Force Awakens would probably have been on pe with people <laughs> coming out of the cinema. Probably, yeah. Um, if you were in this call right now, he said, he's, he's given us a pretty obvious definition of interesting, which is just like, there's a juxtaposition in the characterization at the premise, and so I'd be like, oh, like Marcus, where you've got this, like, almost spineless but very arrogant character whose mentor is one of the most, like, principled and uh, peacekeepy types in all of Piltover. That's quite an interesting juxtaposition, isn't it? And he'd be like, no? No, wait. No? More so than that. <laughs> um, the, 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 just, the juxtaposition is even more interesting with that uh, than that with him, I think, because he's like, he's, he's, he is spineless, but he's really motivated to try and do the right thing. He just doesn't have the guts to do it. Like, uh, there's, but... there's, there's a lot of juxtaposition to him. And so all the goal would be for me, if he was in school, just to, to point out that his definition is going to be unsatisfying to himself, which I think is true. I... I really find it hard to believe that he's only ever used the term interesting or uninteresting regarding the premise of a character. And that's it. And a really good dad. Our hardest working character is physically deteriorating before- So... It's interesting this because he weird. works hard and he's almost dead. God, imagine someone summing Go up why on. Victor's interesting with that. He works hard and he's almost dead. <laughs> I just... <laughs> You've told me so little. Is that even a juxtaposition? Like, the character who works really hard is almost dead. It's like... No, there's no juxtaposition here. I feel like they're not related, really. They're just two things. Couldn't you have put almost dead on the end of any of these? Yeah, and yeah. like, what about... What if he was just almost dead? 
Yeah, what yeah. if he's just a coal miner? He's, he's dying because he's got black lung. Of, I mean, it's yeah, like a lot that, of these characters are almost dead many happen. times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is like he's a he's a slum boss, but he's almost dead. That's interesting. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> he's a you're a slum brawler, but you're almost dead. Like, uh, what? Sorry, is almost dead just an interesting? Like almost dead. Almost dead. The free. Like you can just slap it on anything else, and it makes it more interesting. Also, yeah, someone just pointed out. I guess this describes uh, Walter White. The yeah, same Yeah, there you go. Well, that was why he was interesting. That was why he was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Poor eyes. Our smartest characters are really ignorant and dumb. Yeah, you're just wrong. Like, that. <laughs> that's <laughs> correct. Yeah, that's uh, what, ignorant. What do you think he's referring maybe. to here? Well, so it would be the same thing as ignorance of uh, Zorn. And then I guess yeah. Jace's general like lack of knowledge on ignorance a lot of topics, but that's not even fair. Is, um, not fair. Yeah, like his everyone's ignorant of being something. from the Undercity. Is that the scene that he's playing right now on the it's bridge just... where he's like, "I'm from the Undercity." Well, so this no, this is a very bad example. Yeah, this, so this is, is Jace reacting to um, a bunch of people who have been killed. Like, what does this have to do with him? His ignorance. Like, are you saying he's ignorant of death or something? I don't even know what. I like, think the, he's the, just the... using that clip because it's like the least. Uh, well, so it's. It's, it's like it's like the least appealing shot of Jace, and he because he's puking off a bridge. So like, ha ha! Look how dumb he is so, he's puking. He's ignorant of horrific violence, which like everyone is. So, I, I guess um, it might be worth noting. We keep saying ignorant. He said dumb. Like I, I, oh, I, I thought that's what he said. Wait, where do we go? He, 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 he said ignorant. He and said ignorant. Yeah, I could have sworn we got ignorant from him. reading before our eyes. Oh, our okay, smartest then, characters dumb. are really ignorant and dumb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dumb. So he also called them dumb. Ignorant, like dumb. ignorant yeah. and dumb. Yeah. Dumb, by the way, dumb, dumb ain't oh, going like, to Jason Heimerdinger. That ain't happening. No. You can just throw that one out the window. It's fine. Ignorant is the one that maybe has some legs, but doesn't really. But everyone's ignorant of something. Yeah. Every. Thank you. You literally took the words from my mouth, and I'm. Salty, they're rags. mine. They're rags, mine. Rags give them to me. You and, and yank the Fucking words give them to me. Fair, so I'm gonna, I'm point this out. Rags like actually said game. that initially, so you know he's already yep. said that. He's he's he's. I definitely like, so I reclaimed to, my words. Yeah, you tried to. Steal I saw it, my yeah. words in your them. mouth. I'm, I saw them in there. I I was I saw them. I was like, nope. Rags was sitting there in that chair with his little bag of words, and Jay ran in and tried to yank them out. Oh, it's a big bag. It's a big. Oh no, it's my. These are my words. You're trying to wrongfully claim It's a little bag, work. Rags, but it's like a clown bag where it just keeps everything comes out. Oh, of it. it's like bag. a bag of holding. <laughs> yeah, like a clown bag. bag. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the only best, best, best faith interpretation is that he was ignorant of the damage that could come from Zorn, and this scene is him realizing it. Is that the angle? Maybe. But again, at the same time, that I, I think, don't think that's a fair. That's not the kind of ignorance we usually give example of when talking about best ignorant faith characters. Interpretation. The best faith interpretation would be that he is ignorant of other stuff and that this is just a random clip that was chosen for like other aesthetic reasons. Okay. Like, I think the best thing, I think, yeah, the best thing to say that uh, Jace is ignorant of is like the scene where he says about like people from the Undercity directly to Victor, yeah. who's from the Undercity. I think I could say that's an ignorant fun. moment, but like, yeah, all characters are ignorant of something. Well,. I don't even, like, the whole, you know, smart characters are ignorant on certain topics. It's like, that could be something that you start with for criticism. You might be like, why is it that this person is this intelligent according to the, the you know, the content, and yet they're unaware of blah, 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 blah. You know, like, it, it could be relevant. I was just trying to think of an example, but, like, um, you know, like how Boba Fett is considered ruthless and intelligent, but he has, like, no idea how Tatooine works, but wants to be the crime lord of it. He's, like, a big juxtaposition on his own, but, like, for bad reasons... You know, someone could be like, no, that's interesting. You'd be like, is it? I don't know. And what does interesting, interesting even mean at stupid. this point? What if, you know, what if your interesting character was like, he's he's a hyper-intelligent scientist, but he fucking regularly shoots himself in the foot for the fun of it. That's interesting. I mean, I kind of <laughs> want to hear about that character, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, he's defined... It seems to be de de defining interests is is just from baseline traits that seem contradictory. That's 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 all we got. But not even sometimes the dead one is just making me laugh every time I think about it. It's like smart character, also almost dead. Fucking <laughs> dead. 
These are all unexpected things that draw us deeper into the character and make us want to know more, make us want to see how they react to different situations. Marcus, when he's introduced, he's all right. We're gonna have to. Uh, he's you, going fast. I'm gonna have to listen to that again. You are yeah. you are not speaking clear enough to warrant that kind of speed, verbal velocity. All right. Oh, nice. Let's chillax. Okay. Um. Yeah, because there's a lot. There's technically like three things you could respond to with what he just said there. Like his addition to interesting. If you if you listen to this, this is like his qualifier for those things. Well, unexpected things that draw us deeper into the character and makes more unexpected things that draw deeper into the character. So what's wrong with expected things that draw deeper into the character? If anything, a good character would react in a way that you would re uh, you would expect based on the traits we've been presented and what we've come to understand about how they behave. Example. There's a place for being unexpected. About that situation in the I have a perfect example from, from Theo back in episode four, where he commented on the he nature of the two four? inventions from Jace and Victor. Two elements, well, two things that we would expect because they're just inventions, but the way they look are indicative of a deeper part of, of their characters. Is that not interesting because we expect that? That we, we expect that they've I made things? So. Again, he seems to just be talking in concept rather than like anything deeper than that, so I don't know what you're supposed to really do with all of this. Because in, like, ideas so fast, are really cheap. You know? Yeah, he's just rushing by and talking in really high concept, like wishy-washy terms. Like, Ideas are really cheap. I don't know that any of this is very helpful to anyone. But yeah. again, we're fifty-seven seconds in. Oh, no. Hopefully, this uh, hopefully this isn't a stuck with uh, strategy. It doesn't work for long. Just ask Movie Bob. We need to slow him down. Hey, Movie Bob has actually here. got a, a successful career that's been going for ages. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, like that's oh, that's a good. fact. Is, is that what it was? That what it was? Okay, my bad. <laughs> like movie Bob, movie Bob, movie Bob makes three grand a month on Patreon, and he's been doing that for a very long time. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. 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 Just a, just ask movie Bob. I think he'd tell you he's doing very well and knows what he's doing. Oh, okay. And he'd he's have got, evidence to back dude, that it up. That man. Can marinate his chicken in Mountain Dew. He's got. He's living a high life. That's true. He did say that. No, Damn did it. Maybe we'll have to <laughs> well, he it. did. He did do that. He's posted pictures yeah, of it. We've that. showed them before. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> we're gonna. He's so successful. We're gonna need to. Uh, we're gonna need to get an episode of Cribs with him. I'm sure that'll be interesting. Oh hell yeah! Mountain Dew chicken movie Bob. Google Images don't <laughs> fail me now. Does it come it up won't. for Google Images? Does it actually? Ah, oh, there we go. And there's the tweet too. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I, just, I guess I didn't know you didn't know about this, Jay. Uh, welcome. Welcome, Jay. <laughs> welcome. Marinated three days was this, a, this was a joke, right? Like, he thought nope. that this was funny. He's done this so, several times. Know. Why? He's done it several times? Yeah, he's, really committed. he's really committed to the bit. Apparently, My favorite part is that it couldn't just be, it couldn't be like Pepsi or Coke or Sprite. It had to be Mountain Dew. It had to be a meme, meme, fucking Reddit usage. That guy, yeah. Idiously scorched it looks. Jesus Christ. That does not look appealing at all. Like, how do you, how do you make that food and go, oh, I'm going to post a picture of this so everyone can see what a bad job I did. Look at these beautiful lemons. <laughs> oh no, the lemon! Feel sorry for the ingredients. <laughs> Don't you? I, I feel sorry for the died, Oh, a chicken. Sorry, chicken died for this. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken looking down at it from heaven, like that was yeah. not worth it. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Yeah, Bob is uh, you know, quite the lad. I don't think he is. This sounds it. like the kind of meal you'd make on accident, but you just stick through it. You're like, oh, I spilled all of my Mountain what? Dew inside <laughs> of the inside of the pan that had the chicken. Well, well I, mean, I feel uh, like this, there's a better meme here. Like, what if he had people over while he was cooking it, and he really wanted to do Mountain Dew, but he knew it was socially unacceptable, so he just got a big old bottle of Mountain Dew, started drinking. Oh, damn, damn! Is he holding he the lied? bowl over the chicken? And it like he he went through it. with the Mountain Dew marination, but he didn't tell damn, them that's what damn, it was. Damn. He tried like, to act like it was ah yes, this is a Corinthian spice blend um, with, from da 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 da, da that my grandmother said back in. Yeah, that's a. Uh, uh. I call it the flaming Homer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I, the I, flame I, and bob. It's the flame and bob. That's what it is. <laughs> the flame and bob. Just as a a part two <laughs> for each of that, like he, you know, they're basically forced to it at that point because they're all really hungry and stuff. And he starts, he just like digs right in. He's like, "Oh my god, this is great, isn't it? What are the odds that this would be so good? This is such a great combination." They're just like, "Hmm." <laughs> 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 Really see, most people, see, hang on. The thing is, most people, when I see that they prepared a whole chicken, I would assume that they were they were preparing it for some other people. But with Movie Bob, I'm not sure based on his comments about normal amounts of food. <laughs> he could have eaten that whole thing himself. I'm sure. Like, we I'm we, sure we have can. evidence that that's how he acts. <laughs> These are all unexpected things that draw us deeper into the characters. It makes us want to know more. Makes us want to see how they react to different situations. Makes us want to know more. And makes us want to see how they react to different situations. Which is That's not just... possible with uninteresting characters, I guess. Exactly. Hey, you want to see how this character reacts to being kicked in the face? Yeah. They say, ow. <laughs> they go, oh. They say, ow. But Oof. nuanced. We talk about character but writing nuanced. instead of, like, interesting character hooks that aren't even, like, well, that unique. And the conversation, the conversation is focused too much on like the viewer at this point in terms of like what yeah. they want to see more of, where they want to see. Is like, well, that's down to fuck them. The viewer. Like that, yeah. Fuck the viewer. Honestly, <laughs> fuck the viewer. Because if we define everything that way, it's just gonna get really confusing. Because it's it's so baffling. Because I watch this show with people who are like, can't wait to see where Marcus ends up next. Can't wait to see how he deals with blah blah blah. Ooh, I like Marcus. Like, I'm sorry. You can't have that perspective because he's not interesting. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. When, when it's all about the viewer and all the viewers that we are aware of have really enjoyed Marcus uh, seeing his late journey. Which is why this isn't compelling just yet, but we're only a minute in, which I feel like is the equivalent of four minutes in another person's video with how fast he's talking, but that's fine. Fine. <laughs> Marcus, when he's introduced, he's a corrupt cop. He's mean, he's prejudiced, he's weak-willed. I've seen this character a hundred times, you give me the first- He's not introduced as a corrupt he's... cop in episode one, though, is he? He's just a yeah, normal he's cop. Yeah, not, he's not corrupt, he's just a bit angsty. Yeah, he's not yeah, corrupt. He, also, yeah, I don't think- Have you he's seen intro this He's not really introduced- he's introduced as like a side think... guy next to, uh, yeah. what's- Grayson. Grayson took the- Yeah, she's got him under her wing, one. seemingly because of the it... fact that he is volatile. I feel like if we are being as shallow as possible in terms of our interpretation of this character, yeah, yeah. I guess we have seen corrupt, prejudiced, angry cops before. But I feel oh, like that misses a lot of the nuance. Yeah, I'm like, you know, in 2022, a strong fucking <laughs> brawler girl with shaved hair on one side. That's never seen that before. Was, That's not an archetype. I was about to say, I didn't even catch that. Did he say that this is someone we've seen before? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we've seen all of this before. before. Let's be honest. Every ideas, every yeah. idea has been done. All of them. Every, yep. Well, he's, <laughs> his argument yep. is going to be that this idea is done a lot. To which I would say, okay, there are still other ideas in there that that, that have been done a lot. I like a book, think... like his one for Heimerdinger character, like was that if, if we if we steal man, what he said about Heimerdinger was that he's book smart but like ignorant on other things. Which yeah, I'm pretty sure that was been done to death. I feel like that may have been done before. Yeah, I think I that might like be actually the typical like art for a book smart yeah. character is for them to learn that actually they're not street smart. Fucking like Cause... Lisa Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Simpson, Lisa yeah, that... Simpson was the blueprint. I don't think we have seen this before is the thing, though, for me, because usually the corrupt and prejudiced cop would be in the position of, like, absolute power rather than being underneath someone that doesn't line up with their viewpoints. True. In fact, Marcus is fairly unique in that I regard. Yeah. Would honestly make he's several powerless. arguments for why he's pretty damn unique. I uh, wonder him if him being powerless might be relevant to the character in a wider Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, right That's he's a why he's introduced this way. Cop. He's mean, he's prejudiced, he's weak-willed. I've seen this character a hundred times, you give me the first item on his character checklist, and I can predict the rest for you. And what is no, you can't. No, you, you literally no, you can't. can't. You already pointed out how well, you actually would... Can't. Well, I, th <laughs> like... well, I think what he's, in, in order to steal me, and I think he's just talking about the corrupt cop archetype that uh, has been seen before. I feel like there are a lot of different corrupt cop archetypes. the forest for the trees, I think. Also, like, I, I style, think how... you've, you've put Marcus in the corrupt cop filing cabinet before Which, actually looking well, at the character. Well, there's cabin. there's lots of different types of the corrupt cop archetype because so, sometimes you have them as the straight villain, sometimes they have a turn to good because it's like some aspect of their life got screwed up. You've got like the jaded cop who's like more reckless. It's like, well, are they corrupt? It's like, I guess they're using their power in means that aren't exactly right. Like corrupt cop archetype 
has a lot of subcategories. I, so you couldn't tell me doesn't... anything about it. It's kind of one of the no, I don't I feel right like now. every single one has because it comes down to who the character is and what their journey is or lack thereof. Oh god, because like this, the way that he, he's doing this is so, so frustrating. So I just think you can do it with literally anything at all, any character. Mm -hmm. Like this, this is the first scene we have with Vibe. We're like, ah, oh, the plucky young girl who's still kind of butch and you know, she, no nonsense. She'll fuck with you, and if you if you try and fuck with her, that sort of thing, huh? Okay, seen this before. And we're like, what? Well, because we got Echo on screen. Ah, uh, Echo, the young revolutionary who's a bit of a hothead and is also somewhat biased against the people up top for reasons that are unfair. That's I've seen that before. Be that. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that a million times before. You tell him that he's a hothead leader revolutionary, then yeah, I can predict his entire arc. Imagine watching this with someone who's like, this Grace in character, man, she's so archetypal. And you're like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, she's, yeah. oh, she's, ooh, she's been on the force cop. for a while. She's seasoned. Yep. She's seen it all. She's, she's she's reasonable. She'll know what to do. It's like, yeah. eh, okay. What? Kim, did you know that she was <laughs> going to get She's killed? reasonable, said my <laughs> fucking mean voice. She's reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> Oh look, Mr. Reasonable over here. <laughs> um, and yeah, he would have had Marcus for what, like, 15 seconds? And he's like, ah, oh, I've got your number, mate. It's like, chill out. Did yeah. you really? All yet. Did you really? This feels, yeah. Wait, it feels bad face to me again, because it feels like he's gone straight into the filing cabinet with all the other corrupt cops without actually well, looking at the character and how he's presented, even in his first few interactions. So, it might be too early to say this, but we'll have to wait and see. But I am getting the impression that this is a, that he views stories through a lot of the broad nebulous writing advice archetypes and terminology and things like that, rather than case by case. And we hate that here. I get, I get that impression, but <laughs> I don't know that we've seen enough yet for me to say that for sure. So I suppose we should just press on. I Very think well. we've seen enough. Wow, Jay. <laughs> no, no, I'll give him. I'll give him more. Yeah. You've seen enough. End the video. Turn it off. <laughs> it's done. Fuck you. Who's there to set this guy apart? What makes me interested in him? Give us a unique quirk, an activity, even just an aesthetic, anything. But no, we just get plain old Marcus. Even Marcus. just an aesthetic. What, what? Plain old Marcus. He has a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> He's an Aussie. I guess. Well, maybe yeah, sign his eyebrows. Come on, voice. man. He's in a position that's unusual for his broad archetype. He's got more of a chip on his shoulder than his archetype usually might, if we want to use wishy-washy terms. Like what? Well, yeah, cause, I was just I mean, joking. Like, I don't even... He's, he's mired with regret. Um, yeah. And there are different types of corrupt cop archetypes where the guy is so jaded that he has no regrets anymore. And it's like, why? So, how could... Yeah, I guess I... You haven't told me anything about him yet. Um, at least not meaningfully. I'm not excited oh, about... Oh, wait, we're going to find out what nuance means. I was about to Hold say, on. I'm not looking forward <laughs> to his discussion on nuanced. That's going to be a... <sighs> it's going to be a web of synonyms. So he's, he's nuanced. What does that mean? It means he's multifaceted. He's, what does multifaceted mean? Multidimensional. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means he has well, multiple approaches see, to many see. things. What does Un what does he mean by that? So to go back to our slum brawler, he could have just had this character be good at punching things. But no, this is a character who only knows how to solve any problem by punching. And that makes no, him a big strength. Wrong. Oh, so that's oh, wrong. Um, wait, you're wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. Episode two, my friend. Oh, no, <laughs> he's that as an example. He's gonna show the clip. No. He's gonna fucking... No. Also, no, no, this is not the clip to prove that. Shit, <laughs> 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 dude. We're so unhappy seeing this. The only solution is punching. Punching, when every approach she's had with powder up to this point has been peace, calm, and encouragement. This is her at her like lowest point, and you're like, see, she only solves problems by punching them. Like, what the oh, fuck? Oh yes, because because that was what Vi's concern was. The problem that I'm solving. <laughs> That's not <laughs> yeah, this is what what this will solve it. Day Don't powder, we'll get him next the time. Whack! Show because you want a visual that goes with your wrong idea of how the show is. <laughs> ah, couldn't she have at least showed the clip of her also, kicking Savika in the face one more time? Wait, also, also, sorry, is this not indicative of a lack of nuance? She is a brawler who only solves her problems by punching. It's I like, guess wait a minute. we'll have to hear we about couldn't... for that one, but that does seem kind of sus. Oh, she's prob he's probably <laughs> going to say like there's an arc to be had. But the thing is, I'm confused because she experiences a large portion of that arc in the second episode. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... Well, this is still pretty Let's archetypical that, like, character only knows, like... Brawler only knows how to solve problems by punching them. Even like even the wrong interpretation is no, still pretty archetypical. She's, 
She, she's pretty small, though, so that's really interesting. That's really interesting, yeah. <laughs> and she's a girl. And, like, how many brawlers hey. shave part of their hair off, you know? Most. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Jay. <laughs> 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 Someone in chat said, no, he's saying she should have punched Jinx here. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That, just, no, that was the right move. Oh, man, I did not. That's not what I, I want to hear about. I was not that image to be on the screen after that line. I like Vi enough that that annoys me a lot. Like, being like, yeah, her yeah. character summed up yeah. is a person who just punches everything to solve her problems. Like, oh. No, stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. But no, this is a character who only knows how to solve any problem by punching. And that makes it a big wow. strength and a big weakness. The punching thing is connected with her family relationships, which is connected to the- Wait, you can't reference Vanda when he's the person who taught her you shouldn't <laughs> punch everything! What the <laughs> fuck? Vanda was the best Then you can't use the clip where he's he at literally called him lowest point. Well, he called Vander a pacifist. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> That's true, he did! <laughs> so is he a pacifist, or is he- Teaching Vi to solve every problem you, with her fists. You can't argue she learned to punch everything from him. He's an indirect pacifist. Uh, yeah, you, he doesn't not punch allowed. everyone, but he tells yeah. everyone to punch for him. You, you are not allowed <laughs> to simultaneously argue both positions. You have to pick one. Pick one. <laughs> I'm trying to steal. I'm trying desperately to find a way to steal Menace, and think all I can come Harrison up with is won. maybe, maybe he's saying that Vandy didn't used to be a pacifist and then taught Vi and then, like, but that that's work. something you really want to clarify in your video if that's yeah. stand. Well, if, if so, he should have shown the clip, the episode one, the bridge. Um, but, yeah. That's probably the only point of reference that you have. But even at that point, you have to ref- you cannot ignore the fact that he teaches her explicitly that you shouldn't be fucking punching everything. Mm-hmm. Also- And she takes the like, lesson, she absorbs it. Something- Remember Something how he that explicitly he gestures to her bloodied fist and says this only causes more problems yes. directly to her. Yeah. That was, uh, you know. Did you say something there, Fringy? Was... Uh, damn. Let's just press on. Very well. <laughs> you sure you want to? It's been pretty painful. I don't know. <laughs> The culture yeah, that surrounds no, her and the political situation that this character contends with throughout her whole arc is connected to her stubbornness. It parallels her romantic attractions. It's used to express unique things and unique. Okay, I'm lost. What the fuck? Parallels her romantic attractions. Yeah, we're just I'm machine. Machine. I'm I'm in. In. How did we get here? To the culture that surrounds. <laughs> no wait, I'm gonna go back even further. Yeah, back further. Back further. I feel like we're gonna need to slow this guy down. We it's, might. He, he's really trying to get away with a lot character who only knows how to solve any problem by punching, and that makes it a big strength and a big weakness. The punching thing is connected with her family relationships, which is connected to the culture that surrounds her, and the political situation that this character contends with throughout her whole arc. It's connected to her stubbornness, it parallels her romantic attractions, it's used to express right, unique- Wait, par it I'm sorry, I'm what, what, How does I'm it parallel her romantic attraction that she punches things? Is she I'm just lesbian is he, right now. Is he talking about violence. the fact I that she's he, like aggressive with Caitlyn? I well, think it might be um, more specific that she's attracted to Caitlyn specifically. I don't know though. That's the best what, thing what I can do. Like I'm just confused. confused. But I mean, Caitlyn doesn't solve all her problems with punching. Neither so, does like, Vanda, uh, Fringy. Neither does Vi. Neither, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> and neither does Vi. She doesn't do that. Oh, neither so does Victor. Know. That's a good point. That's true. Maybe he will one day though. Dying mm. fist. Dying fist. Dying fist. If I can't live, no one can. <laughs> um, parallels her romantic relationships. Or relationship. The the solving all problems with punching parallels the romantic. I really, I'm, I'm struggling. This feels really awkward because he's totally wrong that this is who Vi is. So it's like all of these examples that you're pulling. It's like, but I don't agree with your fundamental thesis. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> figure out what it even means because it's said so quickly and yeah. so broadly. Yeah. So wrongly. <laughs> Things and unique yeah, situations. Yeah. Marcus, unique so I skipped things a... and uni... No, sorry, we got a... Unique things and unique situations? What does that mean? Really punching so punching the pull in that in that room. That was the unique thing. Unique things. I, unique I you... things. You've told me oh, so yikes. little, man. <laughs> I know you probably think you don't have much time to spend on this because, you know, it's it's preliminary to Marcus, but you, you can make the time. And oh, we can go longer than 10 seconds. Yeah, this is fundamental to the whole thing, so, like, just do it. Tell me everything I need to know to understand where the fuck you're coming from, because I'm so lost right now. 
around her and the political situation that this character contends with throughout her whole arc. It's connected to her stubbornness. It parallels her romantic attractions. It's used to express unique things in unique situations. You know what? I would even go as far as saying Vi may have a level of stubbornness for sure, but like she literally gives up the um like she she go she encourages and sorts out the 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 piltover discussion in the council, and she gives up Jinx's yeah. name. Like these are not things she would do if she was strictly stubborn. I think she should have punched the council into believing her. She's she doesn't even. Um, <laughs> Just she's imagining the, that already. She gives herself <laughs> up in episode two. So it's like that is there's so much more to her than stubborn. Like, come on. Yeah. Poor Vi. She's getting shafted. Attractions. I mean, she's often used... do you think he might be confusing just her being upset a lot with her stubbornness? Or, or maybe I, I don't even know. Um she's no. driven. Is that is that maybe the confusion or something? But you're it right, could she gets be. upset a lot. It could be. Buy sucks. Racism in chat. You suck. Get, get rid of it. Used to express unique things in unique situations. Marcus, so I skipped over the one interesting thing we eventually do see about him. He's a single dad. <laughs> That's what? one the one the, the <laughs> one interesting the one interesting thing about Marcus <sighs> is that he's a single dad. I'm this video is amazing. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed. <laughs> Just enjoying it as like he's a single dad in opposition to him himself being multiple dads. <laughs> oh. He is both the father and the father. It just, what a bizarre what thing is... that's just been said. I don't know. Like, you know, there is one thing that's interesting about him. He's a single dad. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, is it necessarily? I don't know. <laughs> you know is that that's any really more interesting? interesting. What if he was crazy. not a single dad? If he was with a wife? What is that less interesting? Is it because. Yes. Oh, how, and how do you definitely. define this? Is it because there's less. Conflict. The less struggling? wives, the more I, like, the less I, wives, the more interesting. It's basically two, mathematical equation. There are two possibilities for this video right now. One that he's just going to leave that up in the air and not explain why that's interesting, or one where he's going to now explain where him being a single dad is why that's more interesting than him being like married. And both of those things feel so bizarre to me that I can't picture either. That's what I mean, man. Like even if someone said I prefer a single dad character as a, a more interesting form of drama because you know there's going to be more struggle there it's going to be harder it's like not necessarily it depends on how you write them mm -hmm. the emphasis of the character him being a single dad could be way less stressful than him being married to a woman that he doesn't love or something with a, with a kid you oh, know like, and also fathers, think of the, oh, think of the variation within the single dad did his wife die did they split up like, you know, and, and how, if, if so, she is still alive, what is the nature of their relationship? There's like more to be, but none of that would be deriving just from the fact that he's a single dad. That would be based on his relationships with other people. Yeah, the, the well, drama well, and the character could come from other parts of his life because it doesn't yep. have to all be condensed. To what one if his single... family life is yeah. just super duper stable? Is that less interesting necessarily? I guess that so. it's mainly his Even professional right now. Life? I would say so, everything that makes Marcus interesting has nothing to do with his having a family. His having a family is just relevant to it. So, like, um, uh, Silco is um, a single dad, not in like the traditional sense, but like you know, he's a single man about him. raising a child. But like, I don't think that any of the interesting things about his parenting style with Jinx come from the fact that it's just him. Like, if he had a, a wife who was there too or whatever, right? I think you'd still find everything interesting about his uh, everything that you can find interesting about his parenting style I think would still be there I suppose it's up to the writer at that point right well yeah mm -hmm. but like so let's say, let's say things. we've got let's say, let's say fucking Silco and Savika are actually like an item and whatever and right Savika takes a fucking we're doing that little rewrite but everything else is the same then I feel like we've still got all the same interesting elements of Silco. Nothing has changed about him. That's that makes him less interesting. I don't necessarily. Well, I think the point should be that you wouldn't have to change anything. Not everything could still run as interestingly as it has. Obviously, if you did make that change, you could make it so that the dynamic between Silco and Savika is different, and maybe even Savika feels some level of motherhood over over Jinx, thus making him. Um, their relationship more strange. You could do that. This is this is the problem with this whole video. All the things he describes, oh. I'm just sitting here like, so these are all just concepts. We haven't even gotten into what they yeah. are. 
I think the only character that would make more interesting is Savika, who would have to like have her, uh, well, potentially make more interesting. Um, who would have to have her like resentment of what Jinx does on missions? Um, would then be like, I guess tw- I'm looking for the word. I'm, I'm looking for the word. I can't find it. That would be a conflict for her with her like perceived duty of like care to Jinx. That would be an element of her character to then explore. We got um. That would be, I think, the most significant change. I think you'd have to see far fewer changes to Silco. That was that was the main point. Mentioning Silco, and someone in chat just said it about Vander. It's like, yeah, we got a, we got a couple single dads in this. Who uh, oh, does yeah. that make them more interesting? They weren't mentioned in their little interesting character package. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll have to hear them out. True. We'll see, but being a single dad is not uh, the is not an antonym to being a corrupt cop. You see, it's just not. It's not <laughs> that would not be so that funny if he was like, really. he's a corrupt cop, but he's a single dad. You're like, wait, wait name one single <laughs> dad that isn't a corrupt cop. Honestly, the, that that would fit in. That the way you said that that kind of fits into the video that we've already yeah. seen. Yeah, and it would be really funny. I'd like to see it. Fine, that's interesting. That's unique. He has a daughter, and she's his big. So that's unique. It's like <laughs> no. He's the only one. He's the only fucking one. Every single day. Here's a novel idea. Not- what if we had an unmarried father? That would be like. I don't think anyone's that's ever done never that happened. before. That's never happened. Well, no one would what do a that. Concept. It's ridiculous. That's I've unique. seen a million wow. times before the corrupt cop. I have not seen a million times before the widowed man. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> not, that's not very common. How does this, you know? how does this work? Like, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I guess it's unique if it's a Disney movie and the father is not dead, but, you know. How do you write this and like think that's okay? <laughs> surely, like, after a moment's thought, you just go, hold on a minute. Just yeah, like, I picture him right. watching the watching show it. when they show this, and he's like, "Whoa, a daughter! There's like no woman. Whoa! <laughs> like, what? What's happening? What? Are, like, does he produce fire budding, or does he just and then like, tap? and he goes to the scene where you know, Marcus throws down the money, and you know, one of the coins lands on the blood. He's like, "Yeah, seen it. Corrupt cop, seen it before. Mm. Don't waste my time." So odd. He's a single dad. Fine, that's interesting, that's unique. He has a daughter, and she's his big weakness. Now for the nuance aspect, why does he care so much about his daughter? Well... <laughs> why does he care so much about his daughter? Do I need a... Do we need a reason? Do we need a reason for this? I have... That's just funny as a title of a subject. Why does he care about his daughter? You're like... <laughs> like... <laughs> What? I don't know. <laughs> what? 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 Feels what? like feels like a line spoken by like an alien trying to understand humans. This, why this small human, human why do you care offering? about her? Well, she's my small daughter. human. Why do okay. you cry? Well, it's because he's a dad, and that's what dads do. That's where it ends. Just generic, generic dadness. Dad generic dadness. <laughs> Generic dad, oh, no. a man who is willing to do all what the do things that he does meaning? for the sake of his daughter. I yes, don't need a deeper point. meaning. You know what? I think that this is ex- this is acceptable as an explanation. What do you mean <laughs> deeper free. meaning? Well, because it's pretty generic, generic to just care about your daughter. Pretty... <laughs> what? Man <laughs> cares about his daughter. Cliche. Cares well, about okay. his daughter. Cliche. Um, I guess you're right. That is pretty cliche. How many macaroni drawings have you done? Only one? Psh, I don't know. <laughs> Game on Fuck you. Off. Fucking generic dad. <laughs> and like, this whole, there is no deeper meaning. It's like, so if we agree with him, that it would be defined as a deeper meaning to know why he, like, uh, to give an example, this is, you know, she died in a, it wouldn't make sense with the picture, right? But if we just rewrite it so that she died in childbirth. And so this represents their love. Also, you know, going for something like that. It, it, I don't. I don't know that that somehow makes Marcus a better character. Um, I don't know that we need an addition. Like the idea that it's not enough that he simply loves a daughter that he has. It's like that's not enough. It's like, oh, this is such a bonkers way of looking at characters. How long is she even on screen for? Is it a grand total of like twenty seconds? Yeah, not long. But no, we need. This is the. I really do find this frustrating. You might see the, pictures of her more than her. What the EFAB audience should have noticed about the way we do shit here is when we have a character like Boba Fett on screen for a million years and we know fuck all about why he does anything he does or his values, that's a big problem. When you have someone who pops on for a split second, maybe to a degree, like Boba Fett did in the OT, uh, we don't need to know all the deeper values. We just know he's a bounty hunter and he's doing a job for Vader and this is what his power level is. Like. Because that's how much he showed up for 
Turns out, when you're like focal point, focal point for characters is like you expect to learn more about people who fill up the entire screen the most. I don't know why we need to know what his motivation for caring about his daughter is when they represent so little screen time and uh, that fills a slot of understanding what's happening with him. <laughs> that would be interesting, you see. Oh, well, at that so point, ready... I want to know what she cares about. What are her values? Yeah. I was so ready to give credit to him for, like, actually defining how he's using a term, and then we got this, because he didn't actually really define it in any way that is at all defensible. Hmm. We get no more than that. It's a really unnuanced motivation. Do they have some kind of... Sp it's unnuanced it's, motivation. It's his okay. kid, man! <laughs> unnuanced? Is it what bad to have want? an unnuanced? You know, if I'm just like, I'm gonna eat this because I'm hungry. He's like, that's very unnuanced. That's very wow, that's really, <laughs> well, I mean, that's really trite, well, I mean, Mola. Jesus, not very nuanced of you, Mola. I guess it's unnuanced for like a hero to want to save people, but is that a problem? Hey, I I value human life and I want to protect it as best I can. It's like, well, that's yeah, pretty that's unnuanced, true. my dude. Tilko wants Why to want sovereignty. That's pretty generic. Yeah, you yeah. want sovereignty for the people he uses around? Wow, okay. Why does he even seen want that it? Before. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I would be saying see that before this whole stream, but that's fine. Are uh, you eating because you're hungry or eating because you're dying? Hmm? Oh, that would be much more interesting, yeah. Nuanced motivation. Do they have some kind of special relationship? Do we see him love and care for her in unique ways? It's his no, kid! We... I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Care and love for her in unique ways. Now I'm curious what his examples would be. Like, is he talking about how they bonded in very... The show isn't about them. What are you doing? What do you want? <laughs> the guy who pressed the lever on the Death Star was a bad character. He was just a generic <laughs> yeah. lever pusher. Yeah. Did he want to push the lever? Nothing Did he have a special relationship that. with the lever? Seen it a million times. She's like, oh, he's doing it because it's, it's his job. Okay, well, I've seen I've that seen before. I've seen that before, yeah. He's like every other stormtrooper here. Cool. Kind of special relationship? Do we see him love and care for her in unique ways? No, we just get the <laughs> tell my daughter dies unique scene. Ways. We... Oh my god, you're <laughs> not my daughter. <laughs> not, not, not. Oh, Did we forget my. the part where he was where Soko was using her as leverage against him? Do we also and miss then, the and part then it where works. the Fucking fact that he yawn. doesn't even get to finish his last words is important for his character and you know the meaning of his arc? I guess. Yeah. You also haven't identified why he's bad. All you've done is tell me why you don't think he's like great. You haven't actually. <laughs> you haven't identified any problems with him. Only a lack of depth. I think we're, Please, supposed, I I think we're probably I, supposed to think that's the problem. I think well, I have identified that this man is a monitor to watcher of arcane. He had it on the oh, other yeah. monitor and he was doing. Yeah. Something. Oh no. Yeah. Well, yeah. He Looks heard like a loud not... noise with the explosions and he turned his head. He's like, oh, he's dead, okay. Yeah. I think, as much as I, um, I, I can understand why I you'd say think... that, uh, Theo, I think Fringy's already nailed it earlier on. It's He's tangled up in writing rules to the point where he's made himself like convinced that Marx is badly written for things that Marx has done. Like, there's, nothing, there's no problem that we've yet found. He believes these to be problems, though. How? But that, I mean, we're, we're watching like, it in real time. I don't know. Yeah. You have to think about it for I like two no seconds and you realize it's indefensible. I want to say I don't think he's a monitor to watcher of Arcane. He has 19 videos on it. Yeah, I think he's obsessed with Arcane in a, in a big way. Um, this is the thing. I've you seen stuff from him surprised. where I've been like, these, this, he has interesting takes on other stuff. This is a major miss, though. Um, what very, are some of his hmm. takes that you like, Wombo? Um... Oh, he! I saw a video where he talks about how Silco's eye thing, the the uh, it's very quick it's YouTube short, but he basically says that um it's it's a, it's a form of trust he has as a connection with Jinx, and that that is used against him when she's at a low point with trusting him, and that it's a, it's a great way for the show to translate to us the dynamic of their relationship and how it's sort of oscillating at that point. I, I remember thinking to myself like that, that, that's that's an that's interesting good. idea. It's fair. Um, I like that. And that having her do it shows a, a big level of trust he has for her, um, which I think we talked about as well. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fair. There's, you know, there's other stuff, but this one's, this one's not great, this video. Not great. <coughs> Dies without finishing his sentence. Seen that before. <laughs> You've seen a billion times. I've seen literally said seen a billion times. Oh, God. 
stop. No, we just get the tell my daughter dies scene that we've seen a billion times. Is his daughter herself interesting? Um, Maybe that changes up things a little. No, we get nothing. Oh, I did the meme. I just said, like, oh, we need to know her values. <laughs> She's not in the show for more than, like, fucking 20 seconds, like I said. This is insane. This well, man right looks now like... He's, like he's searching for the interesting part, right? And he's just clarifying, though, the, the daughter isn't the interesting part. I, I have no, I have no problem with this as being a thing that he says to support his wrong argument, but the argument is the problem. Because, like, this is a thing that I would say if I was, like, saying, oh, well, what's the interesting part of this supposed to be? Is his daughter? No, right? That... Is it her herself? Yeah, but... No. If the argument was constructed from faulty components, it was worth pointing out. And if you're saying it's an accurate component, I guess I'm saying the contextualization of the accurate component is my problem. That, yes, yes. she doesn't have development. It's like, of course she doesn't. What do you mean? Why are you even pointing that out? It's like, I guess I think we know what he means, it's just wrong. There are several people throughout, well, there's many people throughout all of Arcane that don't have development. It's like, if I pick a random person, like I said, Caitlyn's mum, everything can be said about her, but like, why isn't it being said about, well, presumably it's not in another video, but like, wh why wasn't Caitlyn's mum given a big arc? Why wasn't she more characterized in terms of her relationship with her uh, husband and her daughter? And you're just like, I don't know, man, because she's, the stories, we don't have infinite time. Not everybody gets all of the development. We get what we need to understand the story. It's just expensive enough as it is. Yeah, what Fucking... does each episode of Arcane cost to make? Uh, well, there were no official numbers, but like speculation said, ten million per episode. Mm. That's money. I can Thanks already imagine this show is expensive. It's beautiful. Coming to so. a YouTube channel near you, the problem of techno union, man. According <laughs> to this guy, <laughs> <laughs> really, this wasn't, well, you will admit, Theo, wasn't much nuance there. He was certainly not nuanced. Mm either. And likability, every character in Arcane has moments that are just cool, badass, impressive, admirable, funny. Mar oh no. Cool, what? badass, <sighs> admirable, and admirable and funny. I'm getting annoyed. I don't like oh, it. Oh no, can, this can, is very can, bad. So you've just made <laughs> it so that your definition of likability requires one of those five traits, and there are so if, many characters yeah. that do not fulfill those traits that are fucking famously liked. There are many characters liked. who don't have badass epic moments. There are oh, many people no. who aren't funny. There are many people who, like, I don't. These are man. <laughs> I feel like there's got to be more to it this, than that. This feels like a not even writing 101. Like this is before that. It's like likability is not. It's like what is likability class? And then all the children go when someone's really cool. No, when someone's really flirty. No, it's all just something badass. Like oh, <laughs> oh ultra no. lord. Because this explains directly why he doesn't find Marcus likable in any way. Like, of course, because Marcus, he's, he's like a representation of how human beings aren't always funny, badass, and super principled. Yeah. And do it. I can't believe he showed a visual of Vi jumping off the pole with her fucking Atlas gauntlets and crushing it. Like, yeah, Marcus never did that. <laughs> like, that was true. Yeah, fuck Marcus. That's what it means to be likable. Have you ever done that? No, I guess I'm, I'm not cool like yeah, Shut up. Oh, I'm very disappointed to hear that. That makes me sad. We get nothing from her either. And likability, every character in Arcane has moments that are just cool, badass, impressive, admirable, funny. Marcus has none of that. He's mean to everyone. He's weak. And mean, he's to everyone. Not mean to everyone. Mm -hmm. He's not mean to he everyone. He's not we mean just, to everyone. We, we just we just talked about a, a character who he's not mean to. And it's also, funny. I like how you have a scene of him like being being mean to Silco. Like, <laughs> being mean to Silco. Stop not being her. mean to everyone. <laughs> Poor Silco. That's what the fucking guy who puts a hand on his shoulder said. Dude, come on. I like as Stop well. Uh, some people in chat think can catch it on. It's just like he's mean. Oh no! <laughs> what a tragic well, we character that. trait. What the fuck Hit are we character. doing? <laughs> God, can you guys think of a single character who's mean to anybody who's also liked? I can't. Impossible. I can think of, like, it five. really is impossible. In my head. It's like, name everybody in the show. How about that? Everyone's yeah. fucking mean to each other at some... Like, why? Why? Of, like, those characters are all badass more than... They all do badass things. Malicious. Like, Vi is mean to someone what, by, by kneeing them in the face. Whereas that's mean. Marcus, he's just like, yeah, you're bad. And that's it. <laughs> I think it's the whole section of like, he loves his daughter, treats her really well, but we just, we just don't know why. Anyway, he's mean to everyone.
But obviously, he's this not going to be mean prick. to his daughter. He would say that. It's like, so maybe don't use the word everyone. Uh, that's probably because it, it. You know what it tells you if a character is mean to everyone except one person. That's 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 interesting. That's. But why that's isn't he mean isn't to his daughter? I'm not convinced he shouldn't be. You know who else is mean? <laughs> Silco. Silco is mean. He's Silco bad. is mean to everyone. Why I don't like him. Nah, but he's not mean to Jinx, so you do like him. Oh, no. Funny, Marcus has none of that. He's mean to everyone, he's weak, and he accomplishes nothing, so there's nothing to be impressed by or to admire. I don't think, oh. just, I don't think okay, just so saying he he's does, weak really does it justice. So he is using likability in terms of... I, I don't want to use the... It's not moral, like... Admirability? Yeah, admirability in some sort of sense. Nothing to... Yeah, he pretty much just said that there's no... There's nothing he achieves that you can admire, I think is what he just said as well. Which He, he has no qualities that we would perceive as positives in the real world, therefore mm -hmm. he is an unlikable character. That's a crock of shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, what about uh, hiding and saving Vi? Yeah, I guess, we're just I guess we that. forgot about that. Do we but consider like, that something achieved or not? I would consider that something he achieved. Mm -hmm. It's not a great achievement, given what he does with it, but it's he did something. And considering it still leads to something bad in the end. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, I don't know. There's, there's a conversation to be had there, I guess is what I'm saying. But uh, I shouldn't even have mentioned that, because the fact is, a character who doesn't achieve anything, quote-unquote, is not that doesn't make them unlikable. This is, this is a very strange metric. I'd, I'd imagine a lot of people would find that really compelling. I mean, like... Homer Simpson in a lot of episodes. I mean, that's my mission right now is to compare every arcane character to one Simpsons character. <laughs> nice. Like, hey, we already did the flaming Marcus Homer, is right? Homer. A lot of the um, a lot of the endearing stuff about Homer is that he doesn't succeed and achieve. Yeah. And like I said, with undeveloped, his arc just kind of goes nowhere. Oh, Jesus. All right. Fine. We're, we're done with this explanation what? of those traits already. By the way. A real man. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So this is not to say that people can't connect with this character. They can and they do. Marcus has fans, but to quote Jeff Winger. For the same reason, I can pick up this pencil, tell you its name is Steve, and go like this. All right, we crossed the line. I... Yeah. Oh, no. fuck off, man. So that's he's a lot just, of lines. He's just said, Rags, this is directed <laughs> specifically at you, okay? You only and cared you know. about Marcus because he had a name. <laughs> you know... Nailed it. And can I, I just want, I want to make this clear, he's explicitly telling people they felt a thing because of this reason and nothing else. Like, because yeah, I happen like, to this love this clip. Now. I love this clip. It's a great, great clip. Because yeah. he's, Winger is right in this scene. I call a pencil Steve and I break it, it makes you feel bad. It's like, yeah, yeah, because just, just uh, personifying anything, I guess. But that is not why we care about Marcus. Imagine Marcus. personifying a human. No. <laughs> I can't watch this <laughs> and honestly bad. believe this guy consumed the show, like, in good faith. He's made it's 19 videos not. on it. I know. So, but look at this one. This is the only evidence <laughs> I have to go by. And it's just, like, incredibly wrong and surface level. Hey, look, uh, I feel like somebody the possibility that he just dramatically missed with this one video. <laughs> like, it's, it's... How do you miss this half well, while actually watching the show? What I think I, it's because his, his his idea of character analysis and writing is really kind of warped in a sense that it kind of needs to follow a flowchart almost. It's strange. It's, it's almost unnuanced, if you yeah. will. What I'll it's say just, is it, his POV has easily going to lead him to some really great observations, I imagine, but it's completely fucked him on this one. Um... This comes across as, like, having no fucking clue what you're talking about, which is weird, because, like I said, I've got that additional context, so I know that he can, um, but, like, this this is just, he's just falling down a fucking rabbit hole at this point. <laughs> he's no more meaningful than a pencil with a name. Because, like, uh, he almost had it, by the way. This little bit before, where he's like, there are people who are fans of Marcus, and you know, I'm not saying that you can't connect with them. It's like, ah, oh, sweet. We've acknowledged the fact that that's a possibility. So really, it contextualizes the beginning of the video is specifically just his POV. And then he says the, the he uses the winger clip, but it's like, ah. Uh, Do you only connect with them because he has a name? 
So this is not to say that people can't connect with this character. They can and they do. Marcus has fans, but to quote Jeff Winger. For the same reason, I can pick up this pencil, tell you its name is Steve, like an and insult. go like this. Oh. And part of you. Well, yeah, I mean, so this, this is the uh. funny thing. I think most people would be like, we on EFAP are way crueler and abrasive and blah, blah, blah. While videos like this, you know, they don't, they don't hurt anyone's feelings. They just express an opinion. It's like, I don't think you realize when you're being insulted. <laughs> like, you've just been pretty dramatically you insulted. Haven't, you haven't heard the mean word, but the mean sentiment is there. Oh, yeah. If you dies just a little bit on the inside. The character is just overall underdeveloped. He's the worst character in Arkane's main cast from a writing perspective. And like I said, I'm not making this video to dunk on Arkane or on Marcus. This is about you showing you what great writers can do. Yeah, how are you not? That's... How are you not? Yeah. That's what this is. Those are complete what do you say what he is. says the video is? <laughs> All right. Just compared them to a pencil with a name. So just I don't know, dude. completely wrong. So what is that? Steve was nuanced and badass. Yeah, was Steve the pencil when he fucking used the Atlas Cordless in that scene? It was fucking great. Uh, if Steve had put on the Atlas Cordless, then he would have been a good character. <laughs> It seemed, by the way, that he summarized this section by saying he is just underdeveloped. Oh, like, that was the was, main um, issue. Was Steve the pencil, did, yeah. was he a single dad? Because then he would have been interesting. So are we done with the Marcus no, analysis? What would have made... Dying single no, no, no. dad. What, what would have made Steve interesting is if he was a pencil, but he was actually an eraser. Oh yeah, that would have been interesting. <laughs> and crazy. he was almost Dude, dead. A, okay, no, pitch. a corrupt eraser. Pitch. He's a pencil, and he's almost dying. Oh my Ooh. god. No, he's oh, almost he's, out, he's almost out of lead. He's almost out of lead. There's not much more pencil left. He goes around saying, you know, he's oh, more he's I don't more, have as much lead as I used he's, to. He's, he's more eraser than pencil now. Oh my <laughs> god. god. Now, he's more now, eraser now. than pencil now. <laughs> so that's such a juxtaposition. Again. Nice one, Ringy. Are we yeah. done? With I, you know what? Analysis? I'm actually super interested in that story. Oh, uh, I don't know funny? where this video is going now because this is well past what I saw when I was ranting. I think I only like got like 30 seconds in on Friggy's stream and I was just getting angry. <laughs> yeah. No, because I, I, I remember you why. saying, I remember you referencing the daughter part. However far that so was you in got there. that far in. It, it sounds like he's getting ready to move on and that's what's worrying but, me. But there's still like another 12 minutes of this. Well, to be fair, the title, so he's established he's a bad character, now it's time to show us how a great show uses him, which is, this is going to get so All cringy right. probably, but hey. Oh no, mm -hmm. we're about to get into a lot of themes here. Oh, All underdeveloped. Geez. He's the worst character in Arkane's main cast from a writing perspective. And like I said, I'm not making this video to dunk on Arkane or on Marcus. This is about showing you yeah, what you are, great you writers are can do. You absolutely dunking on Marcus, I'm sorry. You are, how could this not well, be? Well, it's not you... the point of the video. Yeah, the point is to show how a great show uses a shitty character I'm dunking on. I, th that just, I don't know, that feels like... Yes, you are. You are. You are dunking on Marcus. You're saying that he's bad. To dunk on Arkane because... or on Mar Marcus. This is about yeah. showing you what great writers can do, even with really weak, underdeveloped characters. I, I find that it, it, the way that he says that is so bizarre. They wrote him like it, yeah. it wasn't like they were handed a character who they they had to find a way to like. He's almost yeah. treating Marcus like he's a real person who exists, which is not, is that not indicative of oh. good writing? No, we're treating, it more, we're treating it more, we're treating it more like, you know, like, let's say the writers of Arcane were handed season two of Book of Boba Fett, and it was their job to, well, let's to just turn him into something interesting. Electro in No Way Home. It's like, John Waltz was yeah. handed Electro, it's like, do something with him. It's like, fuck's sake. Damn um, <laughs> like, how do I use this retarded character from other things? It's like, yeah. Um, well, we don't need to develop him because it's not his story. What? This is the funny thing. Um, more was done for Electro than I think anyone thought was definitively necessary, and and it could be better and everything. I'm just saying, like that is the scenario. It feels like he's describing when he says that. But they made him. They made Marcus. That it it almost feels like he's saying it like they'd agree. Like he says, like oh, you did a great job with that horrible character you made, and they'd just be like, what are you, what, what? It's a very very strange way of putting it. Because they do so much with this character, they do more than most stories do with their main characters. If you're a writer and you're watching this and you have that one character that's just not working, this is gonna help. See, and now we're getting confused because oh, he's damn. like, they did more with him than a lot of main characters. And you're like, wait, so is this not in the category of how well written he is? And it's like, no, this is a different category. You're like, oh. I just, I have nothing to, like, latch onto with where he's going with this, so I just need to hear it help you. It's going to give you lots of ideas of what to do. Okay, I'm going to introduce use number one, and the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to describe Marcus, I'm going to list things about him, and I want you to think of the opposite of each item I list, and see if you can find the pattern I'm highlighting, okay? Let's Ready? So, Marcus this is, is a bully. He wants war. He hates the... Wants war? You gotta give me time. Does he want what? war? No, he doesn't. 
He's a, no. he's a bully. No. Well, he does in like the first two episodes, right? So, he's, because um, he's in the first two episodes. Well, in the he first few episodes, he he doesn't want war, and he's so hell bent on finding somebody. He wants to arrest someone for the explosion in Piltover. I don't think he wants war. Yeah, yeah he if he wanted to... war, he wouldn't want that at all. Yeah, I just His got that he was. Like... I don't. This is this is what I was gonna say. Maybe I was missing something, but I didn't get the sense he wanted war. That's not quite. Me neither. That's that's an incorrect read of the character. I would say. Um, hates the Undercity, that's fine with me, yeah. He's got he's got the bigotry, at least in the first three episodes. I think he mellows out a little bit as time goes on. Yeah. I like see your phrasing, he's, he's the got the bigotry. Got the bigotry. And I'm highlighting, okay? Ready? So, Marcus is a bully as well. Um, That's fine, I think. That's fine. He likes throwing his weight around, yeah, he's got a chip he... on his shoulder about it, yeah. Yeah. The bully. Yeah. Okay. He wants war. He hates the Undercity. He's bigoted wait, because... Wait, wait, we're not playing the game, though. We've got to think about the opposite of each thing. Oh, uh, a bully, a, bully a, wants, a, a yeah, paragon, a paladin. Yeah, pa yeah. Wants um, war, wants peace, I guess. Doesn't yeah, want that's, war. Th that one's pretty simple. Um, the, yeah. <laughs> what was the third one again? What was the third one? He's just shotgunning these things out. I don't have the the under city. City. Loves the Undercity. That would be the opposite there. Oh, yeah, what? that's right. Are we, are we just describing... Oh, hang on, are we supposed to be describing... a? Because I'm assuming this is going to try to lead us to another character and we're describing like who yeah. is a foil for or whatever. So who's like... Who loves the Undercity, who is um, a wants paladin peace. and wants peace? Vander, I guess? I swear to God, Vander, Vander so far... Buys into the Piltover narrative. Uh, doesn't buy into the Piltover doesn't. narrative. Yeah. Vander. <laughs> well, is there a Piltover narrative about Zorn? Is that clear? Well, that would just be like the prejudiced view, right? Of against the Undercity. So if it was like three yeah. and four, are kind of similar. Yeah. Buys into the Piltover narrative about just... Undercity people. He doesn't trust them. Yeah. Well, he doesn't so trust you've Undercity just people. Three, three things that are the same that he hates. Yeah, the this Undercity. is all. This is all part he of. Yeah. Likes kind of over and I think there's an clump together. There's an irony there as well that like he trusts Silco and it fucks him over. So yeah, yeah. I guess it depends on where in the timeline we're talking. This is a problem with a character that isn't strictly static, as you've already said he is. Uh, I don't know where you're judging him from exactly. Yeah. All of the clips mm -hmm. we've seen have been from like Act One, Marcus. Yeah. He does trust one of them, but at a time when the Undercity oh. is a pretty trustworthy place, he chooses the one wrong person to. What? what how does that? Pretty how's your point? The wrong one. So the it opposite really of this isn't. would be to trust the one right Undercity person? Yeah, like the idea that he's like, he doesn't one. trust anybody, except when he does, and it's the wrong one. You're like, what? <laughs> well, he, fuck him then. It feels like he said that like it bolsters the uh, point five, but I don't think it does. I don't think we yeah. were shown that Zorn was a trustworthy place in Act 1. No. It was explicitly not, but Vanda was keeping it together, and things were quiet. Yeah, and to be fair, things were still pretty, um, you know, like, there's this bitterness down there, a lot of it. Yeah. This resentment, but nobody's willing to, you know, well, get I, out there with a fucking gun yet. I guess I'm amused as well, because, like, when we see him in episode four, he's constructed, like, this whole history with Silco based on what seems to be trust. Like, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, and it's breached when, uh, when... Jinx is counter to the firelight. All that shit happens. Because that's not Silco's plan. Silco doesn't want that to happen. It seems to me that they do have a pretty long-form trusting relationship with the leader of the Undercity. This seems to fuck with point five quite a bit, actually. The trust. And lastly, he locks up Vi. He has this one moment of humanness, uncharacteristic of someone from his background, that changes everything. Uncharacteristic hang on, hang on. of the, from his background. The opposite of locked up... Wait a what minute. What is the opposite of locked up Vi? Wait a minute. Caitlyn is his opposite. Is Caitlin, yeah. Are we saying that? Oh, no. Is he, yeah, he's going to be Caitlyn. Caitlyn. Also, that's Does pretty arbitrary. Everyone... Like The opposite of locking yeah. up Vi. Because <laughs> we have a problem. Vi. Because that's Unlocking up Vi. It's, it, it, that doesn't really jive with some of the other characteristics, though, if he's going for Caitlyn. Well, sure. let's have a look. Uh, let's go back. Caitlyn so. kind of does believe in the, un, in the Piltover yeah. narrative. Yeah, Caitlyn absolutely well, believes. So not right Caitlin, away. Is, is, is Caitlyn the opposite of a bully? It's like, I guess? I don't know if I'd say the opposite of a it's, bully. It feels kind of weird to say she's, that, she's a bit. She's a bit paragony. She can be pushy as well, though. I, 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 yeah. I guess this is just my general she's problem. With, yeah, that's the problem. It's like referring... To a character is definitively that? one weird thing. It's just like eh. he but wants war. Got? So does Caitlyn want peace? Yes, she does. That's 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 chill, I guess. But I don't believe Marcus wanted war. So this is a weird comparison. Yeah. He hates the under.
So she loves well, the Undercity. We don't even know he's making this gonna comparison have to yet. Press She's, X to doubt on that one. Yeah, she doesn't trust the Undercity very much. In fact, so much so that she needed a guide. Well, and she she has lots of prejudices about it. Part of her arc yeah. is discovering yeah. that they were unfounded to some degree. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So, yeah, I don't think that's going to apply. City. Uh, he's bigoted because he... Buys into the pill tone. So she does. That's the problem. She does. This, yes, one. Does. So this doesn't lip. Completely because buys into the pill tone. This is, a, this is such really a weird curious. take on prejudice as well, because you, you grow up in these environments, so you believe certain things. By the way, it could, it could be that it's not Caitlyn. Um. Yeah, we, we, we just have to it's, see where he's... It could be, be that he's not know, man, into another he... character. We don't know where he's going with this. The whole... 100% it's Caitlyn. I think when you... So when the first person oh, yeah. to say capturing by, also oh, releasing by, I was like, oh, so it's Caitlyn. Like, because that... Yeah, it he kind of showed yeah. his hand yeah, in that last what one. What is the opposite of capturing by? <laughs> <laughs> I, so I take issue with that because he said like one moment of humanness. Does he? Does, does he, he mean, think everyone from Piltover is like a horrible monster? I have, uh, I have. Well, we'll listen to that one again now because there was another thing I wanted to say about about well. Undercity people. He doesn't um, trust them. So, Caitlyn do explicitly doesn't trust Vi uh, when she meets her. Explicitly. So, rip on that point too. Well, he does trust one of them, but at a time when the Undercity is a pretty trustworthy place, he chooses the one. I, I hate that qualification. It's so stupid. Undercity is a pretty trustworthy place. Well, I guess it's Caitlin would trust the one right person in the Undercity. That's why the, That's why these are so clunky, oh, because he's no. trying to flip them. <laughs> Even though, if you remember, Caitlin trusts Echo as well, so rip. Mm -hmm. One wrong person to trust. And lastly, he locks up Vi. He has this one moment of humanness, uncharacteristic of someone from... Yes, yeah, I, I, I knew something I hated about that. One moment of humanness. Like, Marcus is all human. Uncharacteristic of one someone moment. of his station. One I moment think of humanity, I think, would be the word. Is it well. humanness? Of humanness. I don't think I don't think you can go up to someone and be like, you know, you, you've got a lot of humanness about you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's his weird, not mine. I guess there was no humanness to when he was sad at the funeral for all of the nope. dead in force. I guess there was, was no humanness from, when yeah. he looked resentfully at his face no, in the that's mirror not and a word. slammed the sheriffs. There was no humanness in that he cares about his daughter. No either, humanness when he looked at the, the drawing his daughter made for him. All of that shit yeah. is so unrelatable because I've seen it before. No, no yeah. humanity in him trying to muster up the will to do to shoot Caitlyn. I don't know. Right. It's important that our characters are humanness. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, and no. have humanness. <laughs> the big I sure humanness. do, and like that humanness. We think about what we say. Yeah, human, <laughs> humanness. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <laughs> humanness, humanicity. From his background that changes everything. Reverse all these. Who am I describing? Uh, a oh, character is... with a lot. Why? Wait. Wait, what? Uh, so, so the opposite of a bully is lots full of, of love. love. I don't think those two things are opposites. Um, <laughs> and also, yeah. So that, but yeah, also we've you, already... Yeah, we, we, it is Caitlyn. <laughs> we it's, fucking it's fell, right we fell face first onto the floor without comparison straight away. Like, yeah. a bully. Otherwise, opposite. No, to, I love, to be full of love. Also, they I'm have just a, enjoying, I'm they just have... enjoying that the opposite of locking someone up is going to be used as an actual point in this. <laughs> but he did the opposite. She did the opposite of locking her up. She let her out. Like, it's hey. symbolic, Jay. It's symbolic of the foil. That's part of the point. Romantic subplot. Um, and, you, and to be fair, she pulls a gun on this guy when she first sees him, by the way. Yeah, she and she really holds it on him for a oh, while. Yeah. She doesn't, he's already mm -hmm. talking. She doesn't hesitate in terms of like, oh shit, I didn't mean to do this. She's like, no, I'm keeping this gun on you because I don't trust you. You know, Kate, famous for trusting everyone in the Undercity, which I'm guessing is yeah. going to be one of his points. I really hope it is. A lot of love who wants peace. <laughs> a lot of characters. This is the problem. A lot of characters want peace. Very few want war. So I don't Once know. Once again, yeah. that's Vander. Who loves the Undercity. Mm. No, she she does not. No, she does she love the not. Undercity. Oh, in this very fucking scene that he's bringing up, the first thing she asks Jace is, were you scared? What does that fucking tell you about her view of the Undercity? So she loves it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, this is three she for three. She doesn't the narrative. Yes, she does. Three for three. We're, we're out. Who of. doesn't buy? And yeah, she definitely. That's part of the problem to for Vi to her. Yeah, she Vi does. is annoyed that Caitlyn knows so little about uh, Zorn. So Man. wrong Just again. Find to the pull over yeah. narrative about Undercity people who trust them. And no, no, she no. 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 <laughs> Can we get a picture of her aiming the rifle one more time, please? Oh uh, no, that's so wrong. 
Ripperoo. I don't know, five of five. Can we get? Can we get at least one? At the time when the inner city is a pretty untrustworthy place, she trusts the one right person. That's all times. So she, tru she yeah, trusts. She trusts. She trusts everybody. Also trusts the she one trusts right one. But she trusts the one right person. You can't say. The Point five and six kind of fuck with each other, don't they? Man, we are we are just falling off a cliff here, aren't we? <laughs> Daisy, as you might say, into the cringe dimension. It makes the decision <laughs> the in a moment of humanness uncharacteristic of a. Can you get one right, which will be releasing Vi? That I'll just forgot. <laughs> He's forgotten the word humanity. He has forgotten the word humanity. He said humanness. humanness. Yeah, he said humanness again. Oh no. Oh no. From from the to free Vi, which changes everything. Yep, there it is. Captain <laughs> people after me. <sighs> you freed Vi while Marcus imprisoned her. You guys are foils. <laughs> that was like the one right thing of this. And it was the one we thought was cringe. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's very funny. It's a very funny thing to try and make as a point. You did the Ooh. opposite of capture someone. <laughs> well, you really force fed this one. Wow. Alright, that was awful. What's next? <laughs> Marcus is the anti- No. <laughs> like, no. This oh, is the, Marcus is the anti caitlin <laughs> I don't Ow. think the main character arcs have anything to do with each other. Uh, yeah. He's Except, obviously, his, his role character. is her superior. There's very little that connects them. Uh, I'm trying to think of a scene where they meet. I don't think we on see the them airship? meet. We see them meet on one single time. Yeah, we, we, we see them meet on the bridge. Yeah, no, oh, Airship. sorry. I thought you meant when they first meet, like narratively. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, I'm we, just trying to think of like important scenes between them. Is like my episode point. four and this one. Uh, on the well, sorry, yeah. episode four and the bridge one. They, I think that's the two times they see each other, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yep. Yeah, because he forces her onto graveyard duty and or the grave ship. Yeah, and okay. if you remember when he pulls ship. the gun on her, she is fucking baffled. She has no clue what the fuck's happening because she's got no real understanding of what the hell's going on on his end, and he neither for her. Like, he has no idea what his story is. They're very, um, very much not in each other's lives. Which isn't necessary to become opposites, right, in terms of, like, narratively, but I just... Mm. The arguments were horrible just now, like, for understanding how they're opposites. What? The subject matter of what their character arcs and the themes of their arcs is, are dealing with have very little to do with each other. Caitlin, I guess, mirrors Marcus a bit, but that would be Caitlin in uh, Act 2 onwards mirroring Marcus in Act 1, but even then not really at all, because the subject matter is still different, the positioning of the characters is different. Yeah. So I, I don't know. They both wear blue uniforms. There you go. You did it. Well, you might be under it something. Like no, a that's a similarity, uniform. not a difference, you fool. Yeah, you just... <laughs> Theo, you ah, fucked similar... up. No, it's a similarity. So, of Vi, no, Vi wears beauty. red, so she's a foil to Marcus, because red is the opposite uh, of blue. Jane, it's, a, it's a difference of similarity. Think about this, right? Think about this, right? Marcus has a moustache. Violet has the opposite of a moustache. No moustache. <laughs> oh, that's true. The opposite of something is not itself. So, yeah, that's true. Nice. Right? Actually, no, the, the opposite of a moustache would be like some kind of anti-moustache. Like it's not, fire? Just the like, absence of would something? Would it just be ha I make this hair in all the places he doesn't yeah. have hair? Wanna... And then no I hair just want to make this clear. Have <laughs> hair on every other part of the body. <laughs> I just want to make it clear. We're being very silly. So, right. What? I just want to... I want to clarify this, because this is something that people get wrong a lot, right? The opposite of something is the antithesis of it, which is not just not having that thing. Well, any, zero anything isn't the opposite that isn't of, that thing is the opposite of it. Zero, so. is, zero is not the opposite of one, minus one is. Just, that's something to remember. And the opposite of zero mm. is zero, because zero is, is nothing, and therefore... Mm. Would you say the opposite of itself? Would you, now, I, I had this conversation with Mola last night. Would you say that the opposite of love is hate and not indifference? Yes. Would you? Yes. Do you think that the opposite of an intense emotional response is another intense emotional response or the lack of it? Yes. Why? No, the, um, the, um, yeah, because um, opposite describes something of equal, but opposite... Oh, oh fuck. Equal <laughs> value. Um, <laughs> that. Equal you value going friend. the other direction. Not Hold on. something of a different value. The opposite is situated on the other or further side when seen from a specified or implicit viewpoint. Well, so that's what I um, said to you, was that I think it just matters on how you're, how you're creating your scale, because 
-hmm. I could put zero is indifference, and then on one side is love, on the other side is hate, and that's arbitrary in a sense. You'd be like, well, why did you decide yeah. that? And he's like, well, that's just the one I'm working with. And I do think that's the most commonly understood one. I, it seems to be that people yeah, typically mean, use that that so, way. Yeah, I guess well, we can get yeah. into... Um, the definitions are two things. They are either just someone's opinion of how a word that should be used that is not more important than anyone else's, or they are a description of how the word is commonly used, and that one's an objective fact. But yeah, definitions are funky. But the point is, Marcus is the anti-Caitlin. I, yeah. Even though we didn't get there at all. Not true, but <laughs> Asian. You know, we really had to force this. There's really, a lot of. Really hard. I do like if you reverse engineer this video, right? There's going to be a grand point built on many, like, major points built on many sub points. And we're just like, we start all the sub points and none of them work. So it's like, oh God, where are yeah. we going? Have they had a right point? And it's the only right piece of evidence in this video so far that the opposite of locking someone up is letting them out. <laughs> I, think I guess so. so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seems to be. It feels to me like this comparison was born from him seeing that they're both in forces and going, oh, that one's good and that one's bad. That's crazy. And then one of them wow. loves war and one of them Pretty hates calm. it. And you're like, what do you mean? What, what are Wait, you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Caitlin. No. Use number one of weak underdeveloped characters. Oh, use one of weak undeveloped characters as a foil for better character. What? Oh, I hate this. I hate it. Oh. I hate it. Surely foils have ah. got to play off each other. They foil. have two units together. I Being a foil it. is already I like at all. what I would define as like important to their character in terms of, not necessarily, because that's almost a meta argument, but what I mean is like, if they're a foil, that means they must have traits that reflect yes. another character that you can talk yeah, about. They aren't cool, Mahler. Oh, I didn't punch somebody how, in the face. How, how cool are they? That's actually, I'm really glad he said that in a sense, because there's so much more to character really than whether or not they're fucking cool or awesome or funny. It's funny. Like, no, there isn't. Yeah. Shut up. For instance, I am cool and awesome and funny, but I am a character for other reasons as well. Yeah. Whatever those might it's so be. It's so weird that everyone's silent there, like they. Because they, <laughs> you know. uh, everyone's afraid to disagree with me. <laughs> That's oh, part of my character is my intimidation. I'm like Silco. Well, see, but that's why you're a bad character because you only work as a foil rags, and that's just not good. Like, you've got you've got other traits mm. but besides being smart and funny rags, like your giant cock. Yeah, there you go. Giant cock. I am. Um, that's what's the opposite of having a giant cock. That's that's your foil. A tiny no vagina. Cock. A tiny vagina. You have a tiny <laughs> vagina. You I can accept only the tiniest of penises. I have a feeling That's this section is going to be hyper cringe because he's going to start labeling all the ways that Marcus is like good in the narrative while having us agree that that means he's a bad character overall. You know, like, every one of these examples he's going to bring up are probably going to be things we may even agree with, and then we'll be like, so he's a good character, and he'll be like, and see, he's a bad character. Yeah. It's going to be a really weird experience. I can see that happening. Like I said, already, this one, for me, would be in my, my repertoire for describing how he's a good character, but apparently it's evidence that he's not. I don't understand a... how this works in terms of how do you arrive at this view of a character when you say, like, because this is writing advice, right? This seems to be where he's yeah. going with this. Like, yeah, this is how you can use I... your weak, underdeveloped characters. Like, wait, what? If I can I pause you, you just... just say it was writing advice? Well, so if I could pause you both just for a sec, Thunders just let us know in chat. He has a chapter in this video, we've not reached it yet, called Fixing Marcus. This is definitely oh, an advice I'm gonna video. Oh, I'm going to be so mad. I'm going to be so <laughs> mad. I can. He's going to fix him so for you, upset. Theo. I'm so upset. I'm going to be Theo, so... It's okay. It's no. okay. Why are you upset? Yeah. He's going to fix okay. character. <laughs> I'm going to be so unhappy. <laughs> Correct. He's a foil to a better, more developed, more likable character. And... Ugh. I hate the fact that he's just said it's true that Marcus is less likable than Caitlyn. When I know people I like, like Marcus more than, more than Caitlyn, I like <laughs> I like him more than Caitlyn. I I yeah, find him I, more compelling Marcus, than Caitlyn. I, I can yeah, say that. High I like, in terms am I about to accept? I like. Am like, I the only person here who likes Caitlyn more than Marcus? Probably, yes. maybe. I don't know. Uh, probably, yeah. Um, You're only saying nice that because he's Asian. But I'm Asian. not interested by her. I, I hadn't like... noticed. I don't see the world through that lens, Rags. Well, the joke was they're both I... Asian. Oh, yeah. I hadn't noticed for either of them. I just, <laughs> I don't see color. I am... Um, You're colorblind? I am the opposite of racist. Don't worry, Fringy. I'm You'll the be opposite able to say of racist. I'm not racist. Who's Fringy? I don't know who I like more. Um, I think, uh, I think that Marcus is more complex than Caitlyn, though. Yeah. <laughs>
I like I said, my easy answer is just that I I think I would have liked to have explored if if I could get more screen time of one of them, it's probably going to be Marcus because I'm almost like, what would he decide to do in all of the stressful environments? Um, right. Yeah. Or we know exactly what Caitlyn would. would do it pretty much every turn. Which isn't a problem. Uh, I, I just... No, it's, it's totally fine. Oh, no, yeah. like a, a part, an earlier part of this video was the point that that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. Marcus is a very necessary foil because we are only surprised by this scene because we've seen these scenes. We're not surprised no. By it. No, you could literally have said no, we're only surprised by that because she pulled a fucking gun on him seconds ago. You don't have yeah. to reference this. I'm sorry. Are we at the point now where it's like, you know, you you kind of should be hugging those in the in the other city and not treating them with some level of distrust? It's like, that's like a bigotry or something. It's like, you do go, he, Vi's entry that's into this bigotry. city, she gets like, mugged. Immediately. Like, why are you saying this? Like, it's some weird perspective to have that Kate because he's not showing that clip, which is starting to annoy me now. Because it's like, Caitlyn did not treat that man with love the second she met him, and nor should she, necessarily. It's a fucking creepy dude right next to you, you have no idea what's going on, it's a dangerous place. No, you yeah. should hug him. That's nice. Like, maybe, it's like, maybe don't pull your gun out right away, but also maybe don't be like, Hey, do you want to come to my house? <laughs> <laughs> Just like... Oh, Zorn you... is run by fucking crime lords and gangs, dude. Come on. It's a nice little human moment when she hugs him because of the fact that he's helped to potentially save a life. And, yes. like, it doesn't need to be, ah, we like it because of the contrast with the scenes of Marcus being cruel to the Undercity people. Like, that never even crossed my mind. It also comes to me as sort of an expression of, man, I've forgotten about you people from Caitlyn. Yeah. Like, an expression of appreciation for people, like, especially way down at the bottom there, you know, in the place that was specifically referenced as, you know, the place that the Piltover people don't like to think about. Hmm. What makes Caitlyn's love and trust mean so much to us is Marcus's hate and distrust. No, no. you don't need Marcus's... I don't need to see. I don't need yeah. to see the opposite of something to know what the thing itself is. In Act Two, Marcus has nothing to do with like, and everything Marcus is doing has nothing to do with his opinions on Zornite. I don't think he so, even really um, expresses. I think that's why I said he mellowed out because I can't even remember him like repeating lines of how much Zorn people are horrible and gross and disgusting and horrible. Doesn't, and should be prison. He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't talk about it at all. I'd say he's moved on now because his worries are about balancing the corruptness of his like position. Yeah. So it can be valuable to have like um, to set some like if we say if we got like a load of enforcer characters and they were all like fucking. Yeah, fucking fuck Zorn, and they like pull out a gun. Their first fucking instinct, like Caitlyn does, um, <laughs> like you know, all of the all of the enforcers are like that, right? We get loads of them, and they're characterized. And then we get to Caitlyn, and she does exactly the same thing. And no, but we pretend that she does a different thing. Caitlyn, you know, of course, that's gonna right away say, say something to the audience, and it's gonna almost be immediate characterization for her in that. She's not gone the same way as everyone else, so I wonder what's different about her. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can achieve something like that by setting up a status quo and that, then um, then moving away from it, but I, or subverting it. But I don't think that Marcus on his own does that. I've just, I think it would I'm, just be an argument based on all the other enforcers. Seen Arcane quite a few times. This is the first I've ever been exposed to the idea that I've appreciated Caitlyn's actions through having seen Marcus's approach first. That's just... I treated them as different people. And to be fair, I never looked at the enforcers as, like, all the same people. All the same, yeah. I mean, um, that's that's literally the... That's, like, it's what causes the problems yep. in the show. And he's doing it unironically. Yeah, he's like, Caitlyn is given value by They're showing all the same. that she's different to... My, yeah, I, I, I don't agree. It's what makes her relationship seem impossible to us. It's what makes her love and curiosity about the Undercity seem so uncharacteristic. If this wasn't set up... In no, that's completely normal to be curious about the other city right next to yours. I, The idea that she's invested in sorting it out as a result of seeing what's going on there, again, comes across as a much more normal progression. This is maybe why... Caitlyn wasn't scoring very high with the uh, the audience. Is that Iraq is super un easy to understand, very very straightforward. Mm. She's a good person doing good things, and her mind has changed because she had a few misconceptions, and she's that's why I like her because she's simple and easy to world. understand for my little dumb brain.
she's exposed to realities of the world that were deliberately kept from her. Yeah, this is what I mean. I don't think there's there's a lack of interest or even nuance there. I just uh, I don't know why we're treating this like it's only meaningful when you know what Marcus's actions are. It's like no, she stands on her own. And shown through Marcus, it would have just been told to us, which, as we all know, is not ideal storytelling. And I go a step what? further with this. Oh, would have just. Been, what are yeah, we doing? What is all this now? What? What? Yeah, I'm gonna roll him back. Seems so <laughs> uncharacteristic. If this wasn't set up and shown through Marcus, it would have just been. So Marcus could be gone, and Caitlin would still be as meaningful as she is in terms of her it's... story. Absolutely. I don't you understand can appreciate how you things can for what they that. are. How is it actually possible to think it would, like, okay, if Marcus is gone, then it has to just be told to us. That's not true at all, because it isn't told to us with Caitlin. Like, as in, in a show-don't-tell sort of sense. This is one of them, like, when you don't know about anybody else's POVs when reviewing a thing, you can just say stuff without realizing at all that... Because, like, this constant framing of Caitlin through Marcus, like, is alien to me. I'm just like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, a... Uh, yeah, what are you doing? They have nothing to do here? with each other. I just accept, obviously, the, the occupation side of things, but yeah. that's about it's it. It's so fucking superficial. Seems so uncharacteristic. If this wasn't set up and shown through Marcus, it would have just been told to us, which, as we all know, is not ideal storytelling. And I go. Would have just been told to us. What does he mean by that? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think he means without Marcus, uh, like. Because he's referring to show don't tell or whatever. Yeah. Um. And so if Marcus wasn't there, then Caitlin's attitudes towards Zorn would have just been told, I guess, through dialogue. But that's not true because it's not told through dialogue as the show is right now. And I'm assuming we don't need to have this conversation. But show don't tell is. I'm starting to become very much not a fan of that statement. I don't. I don't like it. I don't um, like it at oh, all. It's one of those ones that's become understood by well. That's become uh, NPCs have got a hold of it. Basically, it, it's it's right. It's up something there that you can repeat. Over it. Substance. Well, you imagine yeah. someone said, "I hated Silco's last lines because you're supposed to show that he loves Jinx, not have him fucking essentially say it. You need to show that he thinks of her as perfect, not have him say it." You're like, okay. <laughs> a lot of the ways that you show things is by having characters tell other things. Yes, that's why. I've, I I think at first it's like a whole arc. It's like I was like, that's a great saying, and then I was like, ooh, that's a saying that is pretty good, but like this part is missing. And I'm all the way up to now, like we should stop saying it. It's like it's not helping. Yeah, it Find a different Rude. saying. <laughs> Go a step further, but... discourse, and take all of Go its other saying uh, phrases right. with it. Mm. This is like what I talked about with the Jinx Silco video, the your perfect line and that whole decision from Silco is because his love of Jinx is wrapped up in this idea of Jinx as embodying Zon. She is the sh embodying, Jinx embodying ah! Zon. I uh, I the interpretation I would have gone with is he sees himself in her, not Zon. Yeah. He has immense yeah. personal investment in her because he was trying to give her the support that he wanted from the people around him. Because I, I don't think we've ever even... That's not even a thought that we've actually addressed. Embodying he... Zon? How... That uh, never I, occurred I, I to me. Need, I'd need to know exactly what he means by that. I guess in terms of just, you know... No, I can't... I can't get anything out of it. It's... I feel like... Oh, no. We don't know what's that like, one, do is we? Is it just as <laughs> surface level as she is oh. an inventor and she lives in the Undercity? I don't even... I honestly... Don't even want to speculate what his reasoning might yeah, be at I'm this gonna, point. Yeah, I'm not to Maybe be it's scared. because of how she's so kind and trusting. Uh oh, <laughs> Jinx is so just, just she's so zornish, you know. Zorn. <laughs> Strength in the chaos, the desperate, beaten down low life forged in the fires of injustice and betrayal into a monster stronger than anything I rich, advanced, that polished really topside good. has. Feels like he's describing Silco, not Zorn. <laughs> yeah ever seen that's Zon personified that's jinx i yeah i don't i'm glad we don't have to watch that video too holy shit uh, yeah fine. jesus christ marcus is piltover personified no, i disagree <laughs> piltover per what no, is piltover isn't. personified and marcus. are you about to say something marcus. <laughs> tell us, bigoted? I'm just, he is just gonna say marcus is bigoted and he's gonna leave it at that Oh god, this is not fun because of all the Piltover characters representing a very nuanced Piltover that have many different perspectives about yeah. all of it. How could you- mm, alright.
it's the whole point is that you can't just lump everybody from a place into one archetype or or, or one kind of person. But it He's sounds good, doesn't it? it, Rex? It sounds good. He represents yes, Piltover, him it does. and Jinx represents Zorn. Jesus Christ, I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> I would say he and Heimerdinger make up the duo of Piltover personified. Oh, now it's Heimerdinger too. Okay. What? Heimerdinger. I don't even. Hi, Heimerdinger. How do you square that oh, away? Heimerdinger, Heimerdinger and Piltover Marcus are Piltover and personified. Intelligent? How? Well, Why couldn't I say Jason them. Victor are Piltover personified? Yeah, well, I feel like you could make a argument for literally with. fucking anybody. I could have said Jason Victor are Piltover and Zorn. Like, I could make the argument. <sighs> Come on, how are you doing this? That's why, that's why Jace likes Victor, because Victor represents Piltover. <laughs> yes, and, and that's why uh, Victor likes Jace, because Zorn, big fan of Piltover. Mostly. I would say he and Heimerdinger make up the duo of Piltover personified. Marcus is haughty, duo he's corrupt, Piltover he's hypocritical, he projects all... Marcus is not haughty. I, I was gonna say, uh, remind me the definition of haughty, because it's not fitting with what I remember it to mean. I haven't actually checked it in a I while. I think it means, uh, it means proud, I think, or better than you, high on your horse. Yeah, arrogantly superior and disdainful. So, uh, maybe in he, the first few episodes, Maybe in the first yes. three, but he's really not maintaining that as time goes on. The impression I get from him over the, t the gap is that he's developed his corruption with Silco to the point where his character for the next six is someone who's very, like, carefully trying to navigate this minefield. He's no longer like, I'm better than you, Zornites. That really doesn't come up. Yeah, he doesn't care about that anymore. It's funny because the more we he's talk about it, the more I'm like, maybe he isn't like... static, actually. <laughs> like... Yeah, he, he undergoes very significant changes from Act, one's, Act 1 to Acts 2 and 3. Yeah. Well, I guess just Act 2 and Episode 7. <laughs> he does go like... through a significant change. Well, holding that fucking bloodied coin is pretty much the show being like, this changed him. This this, mm -hmm. this gave him thinkies. He Cat visits coin. Grayson's grave. He gives eulogies for dead enforcers. It's he's, uh. he's not walking into the last drop ranting about how they're all criminals and he's gonna get them all. Yeah. Different guy. All of the actual vices of Piltover onto the Undercity, this being the most egregious example. You people down here are all the same. But see, the Marcus you just showed in that other clip and this one, I just don't think they're the same person. They're not. Yeah, I don't think they're the this same. This Marcus I has think... a very visible chip on his shoulder about, like, Zorn and what it's about and yeah, his position. Relative... death and all that. Yeah. And he hasn't undergone some serious ass loss yet to make him rethink himself. Mistaking arrogance for bravery. You think you're standing up for something? But we all know that- I'm just gonna pause for the sake of good old copytism. Yeah, gotta be careful. You never know with these. It's just like, actually I'm the one standing up. There is a crime behind Are you every standing coin up? that passes through this place. Yeah, I think that was the idea with that line, yeah. But mm -hmm. most importantly, he's weak. I think that's his outstanding trait that determines how he I deals with- I think that is not fair at all to Marcus. I, I mean, uh, I would describe him as, like, you know, himself being pretty emotionally weak. In if the you're sense choosing, that, like, it's probably one think word. I don't to call him weak. <laughs> yeah, using one word is, you know, a bit of an issue, but, like, I wouldn't say that's an unfair characterization of him. Not in terms of, like, he's a weak character in the I'm, sense, like, you know. I swear I've heard some people on the panel describe him as weak. I've called him spineless. I've called him weak. Yeah. I've, done, I've, I've done it but, before, so. Dare I try and explain my difference here is that if um, without spine meaning he's committed to two positions at once almost instead of choosing one uh, I don't know that that this is difficult to try and spread out like spineless but not weak it's like he's dealing with very very difficult situations um, but at the same time he's not got a strong principle to adhere to He's got a couple of them that are all over the place. He's not, for example, if he was to like choose to shoot Silco or his daughter, it's like that'd be easy for him. But his daughter being threatened as uh, compared to the whole cities of people different, or you know, uh, Caitlin, like daughter or Caitlin, it's like that's <laughs> you got to shoot Caitlin, otherwise your daughter might be. It's like, ugh. you know, and that's the noise he makes. It just goes, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh. It's it's tough. It, it, it's tough to be specific, but like the problem is, I think it's the connotations of weak. Uh, it makes us 
assume a lot of things that might not necessarily be true. And I think that's just a matter of him not... Instead of using that way to maybe just resort to describing him. He's had plenty of time, but... uh, We're at five minutes right now. I'm kind of surprised. Nice. What's the opposite of five minutes? I guess it's any other amount of time that isn't five minutes. Yeah. Math is hard. But most importantly, he's weak. I think that's his outstanding trait that determines how he deals with every challenge as the fight throws at him. Trait. He fails at... That's a weird way to put it. Out it all right. Yeah. Ending. Everything he tries. He fails to find the criminals in Act 1. He fails to arrest Van... What? Fails to find the criminals in Act 1. No, I mean... That's not weakness. Also, that I mean, doesn't... you're searching an entire... He does find them. Of... Yeah. He literally, That's another problem with that argument. He, he he fucking finds and chases them, but he can't keep up. Like, also, like, let's pretend for a second that didn't happen. It wouldn't matter. He's searching an entire city, like a, mm -hmm. for a day or two. He's like he failed. He's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna, with the way he's arguing, if you're gonna use any term, weak isn't the one. I think ineffective or impotent is what I would go with. Which is in general how I would describe Marcus, yeah. and I think it's a bit more apt than weak, because weak comes with baggage that you don't want. Yeah, I agree, man. Marcus didn't hesitate to shoot Echo, he ain't spineless. So, like I said, the, he's, it, he's definitive on um, certain aspects. I don't think he cared about Echo at all. Um, yeah. But he cares about Caitlyn and what she represents, so it was harder for him to make that decision. It's, uh, a lot of stuff he has trouble with. This is the thing. I would even consider revising spineless. I just, uh, it's just an, it was an easier go to. I, I don't know yeah. if I'd call spineless at a fucking breakdown video talking about his character. It would, I'd have to go through and figure out exactly how I would define it. But that's why I think it's hard to categorize because Marcus is faced with like very difficult decisions. Like we went over this in some of the previous streams where for a lot of Marcus's time in the show, making the right choice and doing the right thing means his daughter dies and he dies as well, potentially. Which is yeah. easy for someone to criticize in leisure and safety, but... Yeah, yeah I, I can't well, stand it, uh, calling a person weak for acting like that, because... Yeah, this is the thing that I think we were trying to highlight several times. I think Rags, you opened with it on the stream. It's like, he's actually more representative of the average person than pretty much anybody in this show. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would have his responses to a lot of these situations. It's fucking hard. Yeah. You may not have been in deep, like, off the bat, but, like, people would be trying to make their best without doing what they know to be overall the best thing that's going to cost them greatly. They're going to try and make ends meet with what they have to work with. Everything he tries. He fails to find the criminals in Act 1. He fails to arrest Vander. He fails in his deal with... So fails to arrest, fails to arrest Vander. Vander. That wasn't his thing. He I wasn't the uh, officer in charge of that. Well, I, I and mean, it wasn't necessarily failure. It was... He didn't want Vander also. Yeah, he wanted... Well, they were expecting to get Vi. Um, yeah. I don't know, it's so weird to categorize these as failures as opposed to, like, events. I mean, it's like, it's him not getting what he wants, because his desired outcome of this obviously did not entail Silco showing of... up Deckard and killing everyone. Yeah, like, I would argue that the failure here, if we're going to do that, is, is Grayson died. This is, like, majorly the problem of this, because if, if Vanda's stolen by Silco, I, I think he would just be confused. Like, you just be like, oh, what the fuck are we doing? But having those enforcers die, along with Benzo, I suppose, uh, that was the, like, the huge, like, what the fuck was this? There's, there's deaths, and he didn't get the proverbial pan pound of flesh he still needed. Like, there is no arrest still because of this. Yeah. Soko, which, by the way, he doesn't even seek out, it just falls into his lap. Later, he fails to blow up Soko, he fails to shoot Caitlyn, he Fails to, fails fails to, to blow, up, blow up Silco. That's an interesting... Do it. Bro, come on, man. <laughs> fails to blow up Silco. Fails to, dis to kill himself like, with a grenade. Have... Decides, not to, decides not to kill himself. This is what I, that's it. That's the key. He keeps referring to these as failures as opposed to, like, Marcus is thinking about a thing and then makes a decision. Um, The, the choice not to pull that pin. Like, I don't know why we've called that a... F I... You know if he pulled it, he could have said he failed to stay alive. I'm just like I'm just like, I'm just like imagining right a, a situation where he's friends with Marcus and Marcus comes out of like that meeting with Silco and says you know there was a moment in there where like I considered pulling the pin on the grenade I was holding and then he just turns to him and says wow he failed <laughs> failure you fucking it, failure it's like you failed 
I can see what the guys are doing here, right? Pussy. He's he's talking about all of the things that Marcus has not accomplished and you know whatnot, all of the things he has been ineffective at. But you don't have to con- like he's going for the repetition of failure, but in doing so, he's having to twist events to you know fit the I guess script when you could have just rewritten this to more accurately account for events while still making the same point. Yeah, and and again, just so like he could have just shown the shot on again. Echo and been like he failed to allow Echo to live. Or something. You should be like, okay, these, this is weird. This is just a weird... He decided not to pull that pin. I don't think we should call that a failure of killing Silco and himself. Yeah, This guy yeah. failed to not make a video. Because you can you can <laughs> twist that into something that has something to do with the wider going like thing Marcus is dealing with being, you know, impotence and the inability to do what he believes is right and what he thinks is necessary and all that. You know he, what? he can't be the hero he wants to be. I'm not, I'm actually surprised he didn't reference that go and say he failed to kill him because of the fucking the you know the bullet uh, mm-hmm. the bulletproof vest thing whatever it was uh, I just I'm, I could totally see him adding to that being like see he wanted to kill Echo and he failed to do so it was like shut up he does nothing when Grayson is killed he does nothing when he does nothing when Gra- did you see the giant <laughs> Hulk monster. <laughs> yeah, what is what did you want him to do? What would Caitlyn have done? <laughs> he what does what Caitlin I would have done. done. I would have been like, thank God I'm not dead. Holy shit. I think he's surprised to be alive. Pretty, I think he's I terrified. I pretty powerless in that situation, I gotta tell you. Mm-hmm. Silco threatens his daughter. The only thing he success. Wait, did he say he does nothing when Silco yeah, threatens he, his daughter? Yeah, he did nothing when the mob boss threatened his daughter. How, like, how's yeah, this what possible? Not true. He does he's nothing when Grayson is killed. Yeah. He does nothing That's... when Silco threatens his daughter. Okay, so what he does is he frames the firelights, because this is a message from Silco that your daughter's about to die if you don't follow through with the plan that we set up. That is an action he is taking to try and save his daughter's life. Because obviously, if... What are you expecting? That he, like, kills them all in this room? It's like, as if there wouldn't be any contingencies to worry about what Silco had set up, you know? I don't like this. Like, this is this is part of it. We're, we're veering very far away now from being able to understand Marcus. We're practically treating him as though, like, yeah, I would have done stuff in all these scenarios. Like, would you? Would, would you? you? John Wick it's, e- guys. it's really easy for you to say that right now. But man, ooh, if you were there, I don't think you'd have done a damn thing. Nope. nope. The only thing he successfully accomplishes is saving Vi. And forgetting how uncharacteristic that is, it doesn't. It's not what? uncharacteristic. Why, why is it uncharacteristic? What? This is the video all about you, Marcus. Tell me why that's uncharacteristic of him. Yeah, no. I think it says I don't think it has anything to do with Marcus from this guy's perspective. It's just because he's an enforcer. And that's just not the thing that they do, according to him. Because they're all the same. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess Caitlin. <laughs> she's the one that would be allowed to do this. Maybe I guess, those, I don't know. I guess those nameless enforcers that sprinted into the burning building to, you know, Fuck go off. after the- Yeah, it was uncharacteristic of enforcers as well. I, I would love to know what his thing is for this, but we're not getting anything, apparently. Or even just the fucking enforcers right at the start. Someone just blew up a building. Let's try and catch the people who are running away now. I don't know. I actually liked I, how well-informed this moment was, specifically because it pulls Vi away from Powder. I wanted it to be well-justified. Yeah. When I thought about it, it's like, Marcus is he- he just got Grayson killed. He is trying to prevent someone else from dying. That's his goal here. Mm-hmm. Tell me why that's uncharacteristic of him. He doesn't even yeah, really go as planned. She ends up basically being a liability for him, if anything. I think Marcus epitomizes yeah. passive evil, as opposed to a character like Sokol. Passive evil. So how does that... Passive evil? So, should we just list all of the actions Marcus takes that have drastic effects on the plot, or...? Passive evil. Maybe the passivity doesn't have to do with actions themselves, but the way that the evilness is, it's more That's... on the evilness, not the actions? Uh... Evil in that he does not prevent the bad thing. He doesn't actively seek out to stop the bad things going on in the world and allows them to take place around him. I don't know. Well, I would just go as far as saying he makes an actively evil choice when he makes a deal with Silco. Yep. Like, that that's fucked. And then to use that corruption to allow all kinds of, like, uh, passing and selling of the worst drug known to fucking man. Like, that's also pretty evil. And all for money, and for a rise in his career. It's like, these are all pretty active evil choices as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, who's active evil. Combine that with Heimerdinger, Ivory Tower evil, apathetic evil. Ivory I, I, Tower I, evil? 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Ooh. I'm sorry. Are these actual writing terms? Because I have not heard of them. Ivory Tower Evil. I haven't heard of them, but that gives me a fairly clear picture what? of what he's going on about in what? that, it's you like... know, evil that is ignorant of the wrong, like, yeah, evil in the sense of ignorant of all of the wrongdoing going on around them. I think Heimerdinger is just ignorant of, like, how bad it is in, um... He just doesn't know. Dude, I would yeah, argue Heimerdinger morally is possibly top tier, like, of all the characters. This is a guy who possibly, clearly yeah. cares about, like, life intrinsically. He is simply unaware of a lot of things. Yeah. Which is, like, the Once point that was made at the beginning of the video. One of the, he, the, one of the words put next to him was ignorant. Well, is that what Ivory Tower evil Damn means? Dumb. I guess it's time to are evil now. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's such a weird way to define If he was like, Ivory Tower evil just means that evil comes from you as a result of your ignorance. I'd just be like, so what? Humans, I guess. Yeah, how, how perfect do I have to be? And how all everything do I need to be? That's Piltover. Well-intentioned, wants to be a hero, but so weak or so ignorant, it's useless. Worse than useless, it's self-destructive. Now, what's the point of doing something like this in a single character? Showing themes at different levels of scale, big- I don't see why these are points for why he's well-characterized. I just don't understand yeah. this. Big picture and small picture is what makes a story feel rich. It's what makes a setting feel- Surely, yo, what? surely what he's describing here is a good character. Like, I don't- No, it's uh, well, a bad guess character is used exciting. well. He failed to establish I'm, like, I'm still he's bad, like, so I'm left like spinning in the void. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I'm still not convinced by any of his arguments that he's a bad character. Like, to, like even if they're all true, right? Even if we accept everything he said is true, it's like he's just described a character that, like he personally doesn't vibe with. That's it. Feel rich. You have an overall plotline that explores a theme, and then maybe you have a character relationship that explores that same theme differently because it's on a smaller scale, and then maybe you have a single character who embodies that. Theme. So these are actually uh, if. You if you want to talk about like how the the ring addiction all that stuff and then Boromir is like in the form of a person what it is like yeah these would be things I would reference for why Boromir is well written not why Boromir is well used Th this whole well used versus well written thing is very well strange used. to me I don't know how you even draw that juxtaposition like how can a character's like well fulfill their role in a story while not being a good character like I said, because, I wonder if he thinks Palpatine is a bad character. I don't know. Because the only judge I have is that a, for a character is, you know, the role they play in the story. I don't know what other standard I can really justifiably hold them to. I guess so, how well characterized they are and how well you understand them would be my main, my main, character, uh, my main uh, standard for a good character. Uh, how consistent they are according to their own traits and how well characterized they are. And I think you could probably still have a... Um, I think you totally could have a poorly characterized, completely like, com yeah, completely just shallow uh, character who represents what like enforces, you know, who represents enforces in a way that like we're supposed to believe is what most of them are like. A sort of that could be done. Enforcer, but you wouldn't call them bad, right? Well, no, you could totally call them like. A, a, a caricature who exists to let you know, like, this is people's perception of enforcers, right? It's like, he's, like, let's say he's called, like, Dil Dylan, okay? That's his name. He's a massive, like, enforce, uh, enforcer caricature in all of the ways that uh, this guy is describing. Um, and he basically just exists in the story to let people, so that, um, like, people can, people from Zorn can look at him and be like, yeah, that's, that's an enforcer right there. And everyone can act like he's really normal, and that's what they're used to. He himself might be like a character that we would all describe as bad and shallow, and maybe even inconsistent. But um, he fill he fulfills that role in the story. He's a he's a plot device who works for the function that he's there to fulfill. But I don't think that's a good way of accomplishing that. Purpose. And I would question how he's this person being used well for the story at that point if they're inconsistent. Sure, yeah, that's a good point. Still in the massive. Theme Dylan or the object or like Dylan could exist, but I don't think Dylan's other way of going about constructing an understanding <laughs> of societal perceptions. I love how we might have accidentally just coined a character archetype as a <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> well, yeah, because uh, if if Dylan. that Dylan did exist, we, we I could see us saying like, yeah, I guess he's a good representation of how the Zornites see enforcers, but he's so cartoonish and he doesn't seem to represent any of the other enforcers. So it seems like pretty lucky that they all happen to use that one as their like. POV of the Enforcer, or something. Like, there would probably be a lot of elements that we think doesn't mesh uh, with the overall 
Meanwhile, when you get something like Marcus, I can understand why the Zornites would have a particular opinion of Enforcers while also giving him a lot of nuance. Nuance that apparently isn't there. <laughs> Action or decision. That's use two of- Oh, okay. Use two of weak, underdeveloped characters. Embody an element of theme or setting. Oh, How can you oh, embody please. things without being a- Please! <laughs> Feels like you'd Theme end up being games. a developed character if you embody. I'm getting really tired of having to say this. <laughs> Themes come from the writing. They are metatextual. They come from the stuff that has been put on the page or put on the screen. They can't. They don't just appear out of nowhere. When they do, that's usually bad. When something Unless... being directly communicated to you and it isn't properly represented in the work, so something can't be considered to be representative of the theme while being poorly written in terms of that theme. Yeah, if, if a theme is poorly written, then that means essentially it doesn't exist. It's the Last yeah. Jedi thing. The you can't say that the theme is, is... Well, yeah, if... Contradictory. It does, it's, it's there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's said, you know? Oh, I, oh, yeah, I guess so, yeah. He said one character says it, but the, you know, the things are... Mm. What we see is different. If you remove that line from Yoda, um, it's going to be much more difficult to... Well, I guess you might have not have difficulty discovering because you can see what they were trying to do. But if you go strictly like a robot from what happens, you can't dig out the theme they well, wanted you to. In many ways, um, the existence of The Last Jedi itself contradicts its own theme because it fails to communicate its own theme, which, according to it, would be the greatest teacher. And then they made The Last Jedi. <laughs> not The Last Jedi. Then they made fucking Rise of Skywalker. I well, fucked my joke. Did it. We maybe not, Jay. I failed, therefore because I will learn. It's failure to, uh, I guess give that message off is, is what was helpful in understanding how to do it. Uh, in a sense, maybe? You could say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Last Jedi is so meta that it failed on purpose to teach us all a lesson <laughs> about failure. Nice one, Ryan. What a genius he was the whole time. If only we'd listened. If only we'd listened. Well, I mean, we that's basically what a parody is, isn't it, at that point? We're describing something that fails, fails on purpose to teach us about failure. That would be a parody. Like that channel, um, is it bad writing advice? Something like that? Oh, I really uh, like uh, terrible, uh, terrible writing well, advice. That's a great I channel. Like that channel. I do like that channel because the really great thing that that guy does is find a way to use something that is broadly considered to be like a bad trope and then try and pull something out of it of like, well, you could do this. Well, this is an option. Think about a way that you can turn it on its head or play with people's expectations. Yeah, yeah. terrible writing mm. advice offers um, very, very good, good writing channel. advice. He's mm. like, yeah. if you're actually stuck on an inspiration for, for a story, I would recommend watching some of his videos because um, you you might end up going, oh yeah, that trope is like often used really poorly, but I what think, if uh, I did this with it? Like I've found I've, myself in that situation a lot. Yeah, mm. I've had ideas yeah. spring from exactly there. I think the video that is sort of emblematic of the value of that channel is is actually not one of the just standard terrible writing advice ones, but where he talks about, I can't remember if it was a specific trope or in general, but the idea that whatever has been identified as a trope, there's an opportunity there. Just think about it. And I think well, the, the example he used was the precocious pickpocket, the guy who walks through the market, um, fish out of water, and then some kid bumps into him. Is like, oh, sorry, and then he checks his wallet and it's gone. The, the inversions would be he actually notices that his wallet has been stolen because he knows a lot more than these people assume, or uh, the person steals the wallet, reveals that he stole the wallet as an attempt to try and get a job from this person. You know, all of the options that you have to, because like a trope is not because you know real life's a little bit more complicated than just. Black, you know, this is how it must be. And we saw that in this video. You know, oh, corrupt cop. I mean, we've seen that a million times before. It's like, I mean, if we're going to be as vague yeah. as possible, yeah. A lot of these things I don't like. They talk alternatively, would there be. Sorry, that's why I don't like a lot of these things because they talk in terms of concept and act like a lot of the variables mm. that go into making a particular trope aren't, you know, mutable. Which simultaneously explains why he has this perspective because he's looking at it without looking at the variables. Functional fixedness. Yeah. Like, we got this lame, angry, uh, you know, overbearing, bigoted cop guy who's corrupted. You know, like, oh yeah, but w let's, let's make him interesting. Let's fix him. What if, like, he commits to some real bad corruption, and then he, like, takes a double, like, he rethinks it all. It's something that's really shocking to him. But then he doubles down on it, it's just that that's constantly in the back of his mind, and uh, 
you know, he's a character that you expect maybe will come through in the end, have some big win, right? That's like almost archetype two. You're like, what if he doesn't? What if his story is cut short before he can make that decision because he spent so much of his life uh, trying to straddle this line or something? And you're just sitting there trying to think of all these ideas, and he's just sitting there like, you're still on archetype one, sorry. Grub cop. Mm. Oh. I thought we'd moved on. Stop okay. talking well, about writing this way. I, well, I I now, yeah, definitely believe that this this whole video is just mired in um the the writing rules that some people just accept as being like like ah uh, it just That's yeah awesome. it's 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 compromised something yeah, acceptance of like, rules without knowing why they're rules or even well, if they should be rules in the first place the not questioning them. A lot of, I've said it a million times, a lot of the writing rules can be useful in terms of guiding you, but you need like a fundamental that you're working from. Otherwise, you end up in a situation like this where you have a bunch of rules that are not actually linking together, or it almost feels like you're viewing the story through these rules rather than trying to separate those rules out and take each uh, component bit by bit and not trying to frame them through some like metrics that you've been told throughout your life of like, well, a good character is when they have these traits, or a good character is one that goes on an arc, or a good, you know, or, uh, I well, if they fall into this archetype, yeah. Like, people have automatically agreed that, like, passive characters that are static are bad. It's like, who said Which that? Which is just, well, the first question is why. Tell me why. Um... I don't know what you could appeal to that would be, like, a, a thing that there people would don't be like examples that. to people the don't contrary like that. of. That's something people don't like. And then they come up with like uh, yeah. a couple of examples of characters people don't like who have those traits, and you're just sitting there like, I could do this with any trait. Yeah, exactly. This is, mm-hmm, yeah. So, uh, flimsy. Um, unfortunate. About characters, a bad character can still be used to explore a theme like, or to so, enrich a so set. even here, like, use to of weak, underdeveloped characters. So, if they're underdeveloped, they're not weak. Right, because you put these two words. Yeah, here. wait a minute. Do you mean weak as in weak like the trait in... of the character? Yeah. Does he mean weak written or weak is a character trait? As a Cause... person, yeah. It seems because originally he was using weak as a character trait, but now I can't tell whether or not he's using it weak as in writing or character trait now. Because yeah, weak as a as a writing thing could mean like he's hollow or he's just un. I don't know. I don't actually know. I don't. I don't know where. I think when he lumps the two together, that's what it comes off as. Yeah. Take the word weak out here, because you just got done with a section talking about weakness in a completely different sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I was just thinking, by the way, you know, like the whole, um, the, there's a bit of advice they typically give of like, don't break the rules before, like, you, you, only, you can only break the rules once you understand them or something like that. Yeah. You should be like, you should probably just understand the rules in general for anything. Just make sure you know why a rule exists. Uh, yeah. Well. Because, it, yeah. you know, like, your protagonist being a, a, an active engagement in the story. It's like, you don't have to do that. It's a good rule of thumb, though. It, just, it makes it feel more engaging for a lot of people a lot of the time. That's the... My what? rule book for writing would be so lame, because I would just have non-committal words everywhere. I'd just be like, <laughs> yeah. you gotta, you gotta kind of do this sometimes. Sometimes. Well, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Like, we could all just have, like... I'm sure that for all of us, the idea of a story where you've just got, like, some guy and his, his, his thoughts as, like, major world events happen, like, outside his window... That could be really interesting to read. Well, the example everyone yeah. goes to is Big Lebowski. It's like one of the most popular passive protagonist movies ever. He's um he's just a guy who's like I think the first time we see him, he's just like in the supermarket in his like dressing gown and slippers buying milk, and is the most normal person. I say normal. I don't. I'm not saying that that's what everyone gets <laughs> up to. Not that normal. But um, mundane. Yeah, mundane. That's that's a better word. He, uh, and you know, all of the plot happens to him as a result of his name getting mixed up with someone else's. He's just a normal, run of the mill, mundane person. Yeah, um, I recommend that movie. By the way, it's fucking funny. I always hear that Big Lebowski's super cool. It's uh, it's just a. I I fucking love that it exists because of the fact. What, what are the other examples we have for passive protagonists? There's more than that. I, I know that. Uh, there are def well. I mean, how do we, how do we, I always feel like video games are an interesting reference because what do we say about somebody like Master Chief who doesn't really have a perspective, but is he's very active in the story and that he does a His lot of perspectives things. perspectives are iron sights. But, yeah, <laughs> but nothing, like he doesn't oh, really have an opinion on it. He's almost a tool of someone else at that point, right? Well, 
you so and I. The reason why I like this as an example is because that was the that's the point, right? Is he doesn't really have any perspective. Um, but that's okay because other characters around him have a perspective. However, you as the player are active in the story because you're the person who does all of the important things that he does. But like he you know, like he doesn't change because of it. Um, he's incredibly static. Mm. But does that make him bad? Yes. I don't see how you could say that it's bad. All you could say is that it's not I don't even think you could say that that's not good, you know? Like I I don't know that it's that um it's, fine? it's that yeah. it's fine. Um it serves the purpose that it needs to. And then you have other characters who are more dynamic like the arbiter. Um you know, what do we do with like Link? He doesn't have like he's a blank slate completely, but that doesn't well, mean we're he's going to say Are we going to say that um Blank slate characters are good characters, or they just like serve a different purpose I in the think, story. I, think a, I, I, I don't know how I could say that they're bad, um, unless I was shown something that is contradictory to what they believe in. Like People if, if characterized Link goes Bella from and Twilight as a blank slate character. Yeah, but I, I, I guess you know, surely bad means that something is dysfunctional rather than it's all functioning, but at a very base level. Well, can we say that um, they're not good either, then? They simply are... Well, I never said that they were good, I just said they're not bad. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, um, like, even if we describe how awesome passive protagonists can be, it's still, that trait alone is just neutral. It's like, they're passive. It's like, yeah, you know, like... That, whether, whether, that chair well, in the room being sat on, that's a group, that's, uh, that is just, that's it's serving its purpose. I think all I'd say is that you can have a character for whom change is unnecessary, and you put it in there because you think that's what you're supposed to do. And the change is unnatural and forced, yep. and doesn't align with what happens in the story. You have made that character worse in an attempt to make them better because you thought that better meant change. Well, because rather everyone than tells you to do it. Everybody tells you that your character has to change, and they're wrong. They're just wrong. Yeah. Like it's probably it's probably better if your character changes generally, not but it's not necessary. It's just it's just I, something I said, that lots of people. <laughs> It, yeah, I think I, it's I don't. generally gonna help you out to have it's, your character going. It's just going a lot of things. It's just one thing that a lot of people find engaging to see as a character they learning appealing, and changing. Yeah, for sure, it's but, it's nothing more than that. It's and, just and something yet, that a lot of people like and they find rewarding. And yet, the entire structure of sitcoms for the longest time was nothing changes, and that's what you like. Everything goes back to normal at the end, and you're happy. And that was a format that appeals to people, and it still does because, like, that's what. Network, that's what a lot of shows on network television if we're not thinking about like the you know hbo like amc like those types of shows you know ncis that... those characters are incredibly static they barely change well, but that's what and and people like those shows a lot law and order the characters don't often change if you take something like batwoman the show will claim there's arcs oh, going all the time one. but like you'll never yeah, feel it it'll always just be told to you, you it's never like feel those arcs. you know we as a team didn't used to trust each other but from now on we will after this hardship we've been through or something yeah. like that you're like and, what <laughs> and and that would be yeah i i think that law and order a show with characters who are static and don't change is more valuable than batwoman a show that tries to make its characters change but they just the changes of, they refuse of, like, really stupid they're really stupid change. Well, like they, look at something just comes out of nowhere that causes a radical change in the way that a person behaves. Look you what could they've done argue, to Alice, like trying to recontextualize mm -hmm. it all the time to be a good person while making her kill everybody all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly trying to, yeah, like find a way to keep her changing and being reinvented. And, you know, there's a conversation to be had about the fact that change in people doesn't happen quickly. A lot of the time, like change is something that happens gradually, um, you know, barring like some massive earth shattering like event in your life that uh, that prompts change. Um, the the pace at which people change should inf and and like why that would happen probably ought to influence your decision on whether or not a character in the story that you're telling should change and how radically. Um, and yeah, when you think about change in a character, you try and think about how it relates to theme or specifically the plot and what kind of circumstances the plot would bring out in someone. Simply throwing a change in there without considering all of the other aspects at play is probably going to yield really bad results. Um, it's why you need to think about each decision that you're making for your story 
in terms of changes or what role they have, how much time you're going to allocate to one character as opposed to another. You know, um, uh, Poe in, in TLJ, we would argue from a character POV, he made the right decisions with all the information he had, yet he concludes he did not by the end. And that's his arc. And if someone said, we'll see, but that matches the theme, it may be contradictory for his character. I'd be like, no, 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 it doesn't match the theme because of the fact that he's learned from not making a mistake when the theme is to learn from making mistakes. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I guess that's like this is hitting, a, I guess, the most fundamental writing advice you can give, which is to act with intentionality in terms of what you're doing. Like, be aware of what you're trying to do and structure around that, which is very tautologous, but like, it's the closest agree, thing to fundamental writing well, yeah. advice you can give. But like, you need to be aware of what you're actually going for and how the rules or like principles of writing play with that. Because it may be exactly the point that your protagonist isn't active. Alrighty. What's use three, I wonder? Setting. They can be personification of something else external to them that's important and compelling, even if they're not compelling as a character. Okay, third thing I want to talk about is his death. Also very weird, very sudden. It seems like he might be developing. He has very that moment weird. with a grenade. And then bridge scene, death. Oh. So Marcus's death parallels oh, that one to... Oh, that death then? I... What? So he's saying it's, it's weird and... It looked, he just said like it looked like he was going to develop and then he doesn't. <laughs> I don't even like just committing to that action, not an aspect of... Why, why does he need to develop there? It's so strange to think like, about. If, if you don't blow yourself up, your character doesn't develop. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the implication. Uh, okay. that had he blown himself up, he would have been talking about how Marcus developed. Um... I don't know. I just want to. What is the rest of this point going to be? Two earlier scenes. One is Grayson's death, the open eyed, lifeless stare. This, unfortunately, I think is meant to be the resolution of his arc to some degree. His whole career is plagued by this foolish relationship he got caught in years ago. It's what cost him the one person he admired. And then he couldn't escape the same fate in the end meaningless death by one of Silco's monsters. I think that's the main takeaway we're supposed to have here, which isn't very interesting in my opinion. Not uh, uh, man. <laughs> just, you don't think that, that this scene is interesting? You had that's me for a insane. moment. Had me That's for a moment there. And then you said it wasn't interesting. And I that was, was your big interesting. mistake. I was, what did you is think is interesting. interesting? I was hoping for a double down to be like, and then consider blah blah blah, but then and to be like, it's good, but you know what you said it's not interesting. It's like, what? This is the thing I about like wonder... how I never want to do this in my videos. If I like highlighted everything they're doing with Ray at the beginning of Force Awakens, for example, where it's like, you know, they and they show her look at the food after establishing how little food she has, and then looking at BB eight but also having an affinity for droids and res respecting the fact that they're actually individuals. All that's done in looks. But if I had said, like, yeah, they do all of that, that's not interesting, though. Like, <laughs> you, just, that, you, you wonder, like, what, yeah. what value is there for the viewer at that point? Because you, you've told them what the thing is that's happening there and why it can be meaningful. But to tell them on top of that, just, I personally don't find it meaningful. It's like, okay. Yeah. But Don't instead, with that. the problem with this video is that I think he's going further than that. Because uh, he implied earlier the only reason you'd be interested in Marcus is because he has a name. <laughs> uh. Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah. Not what I want to focus on. Here's what I want to focus on. So Marcus is a single father. And he seems like a fine father. He provides for little Marcus. He guides her to be a better Marcus than he ever was. Hopefully more developed too. And yeah, the relationship... Shut up. How do you know that? I'm sorry. How do you know he does either of those things? I didn't even hear... The words are all clamming together. I didn't even know. Like, I'm yeah, surprised he's you guys. He's talking too fast and he doesn't speak clearly. Yeah, so Marcus is working together. Marcus is a parent. Like, I'm genuine. I don't want to slow him down. Please don't make me. The single father. And he seems like a fine <laughs> father. He provides for little Marcus. He guides her to be a better Marcus than he ever was. Hopefully. He guides her to be a better Marcus than he ever was. I don't, I don't, ever I don't think he do ever actually tried things. to do that. I don't that. think we really see much I think of the we don't see parenting. Enough. Also, she may well just be too young for that stage of her life to be, you know, really yeah. thinking about. He seems like, to be hiding everything from her. Yeah, listen, kid, don't make deals with crime lords in the Undercity, because they could come back to bite <laughs> yeah. you if you're ever in like, I know, that I know that was what you were going to do, but I got to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Trust me. It ain't worth it. It see, ain't worth it. See more, more developed, too. As the video goes on, he, he has just pigeonholed himself into writing rules because he sees, like, corrupt person or like jaded person with single fa like single father with a daughter and he just goes ah then the focus of this character will be on the daughter and the relationship with them 
So why? Because that's the only way to rationalize why the fuck he would be focusing on this. Yeah, the relationship not well explored, not very nuanced, but he is a parent. Now listen to this. It's such a bizarre sentence. It's not very well explored, but he oh, is yeah. a parent. You're like, uh... A apparently he is a parent. Okay. Oh. And uh, oh. he, he, was trying, he was trying to also ask, so why does he care? So it's like, what, now he doesn't have to ask that question anymore? Because he's a parent? This. Gonna have to wibbly wobbly posy woozy because, uh, mm -hmm. you know how it works with these sorts of things. Oh, but up, up, da, 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 da. How did Arcane start? Fucking glorious prologue, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, with Arcane Season 2, I'm gonna be excited even just to see the opening scene, because it's gonna set the stage, you're gonna wonder what it's all gonna mean by the time you get to the end of it, because like, I believe that's what kind of story they wanna tell. I like those ones. Yeah. Wait, did someone slow it down? Someone wasn't slowed me. it down. Wasn't me, I didn't touch nothing. I didn't touch nothing. Wasn't me. Thanks, uh, Metal. <laughs> Is that him? Unless that was the video maker. No, that was. Meow, 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 meow. It's Lonald. Oh my god, I don't know. Like I said, I don't want to risk it at all, so I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, yeah. Same bridge, same song, same meaningless yeah, war that okay. resulted in nothing positive, just more dead parents and more orphans. Is that the focus? Okay. All right. Yeah, it, this seems like we're sidestepping to a different thing. I'm like, I'm like, thumbs up, but don't bring it back to the parents. Fucking orphans. Children. So, so that's that's why I put because I was like, what has this got to do with Marcus? Like, I uh, meaningless like, death, I guess. Is, is he making a comparison? You are technically I guess. Technically, right in the you know, yes, there is more orphaned children here, but and God, the connections he draws are very um, <laughs> like. It's a, it's a very strange way to take the scene in, especially with respect to everything being said about Marcus. Mm. Stop focusing on the fucking daughter! God damn it! Powder was the victim before, now she's the killer. Her arc has come full circle, but in a nightmarish uh, way. Her arc is not full circle. Oh, not she's done. still got a yeah. way to go. I'd say even by the end of the season, she's still got a way to fall. I think it's a, well, it's a fine observation. A parallel, not yeah, but fine observation, but not her whole arc. No. Yeah, the observation is totally fine. I think it's a parallel. I just don't think it's it's not the end of her arc. And she seems to realize this. It's why she's singing the song, and she's fine with it. Marcus's death is a crucial character moment, but for a different character. No, oh, it's, no, it's no, pretty no, crucial no. for him. It's, it's, it's crucial it's, for him. It's pretty yeah. important for him. I, yeah. I would imagine that he was he pretty upset about that. <laughs> he had lots of thoughts and feelings about that scenario. Yeah, yeah. I. But it's, he didn't get to fully Man, this sucks because now he's just he's drawn what meaning you can gain from Marcus's story as a whole, and he's putting it into Jinx instead. So it's like, hey, excuse me. Mm. No, he has this whole thing going there, and I don't know. Did he just miss it? I don't know because it, it felt like he was on track vaguely, and then he leapt off the tracks again. It's like, oh. And that's use number three. You can use a bad character to enrich a good character's arc. And I hate this fucking shit, I hate man. It. So I hate it. I hate if, it. If they're bad and they mm. prop up another person, what, is, what does that mean? Are they still bad, or does that mean that they actually have a purpose? How does this serve? work? Yeah, like, what does it mean to be bad if you're incredibly useful to a narrative? <laughs> if, if you're really useful and invaluable to a narrative and other characters, I feel like that's got to be indicative of... Like, bad yeah, remember, characters tend to taint other he, aspects of a story. He Why believes that so Marcus satisfies all three of these uses. I don't know if there's going to be more, but, like, how are you telling me that he's doing all of these things narratively, but he's crap? Like, what the fuck? And also that you're going to apparently come along with fixes for it, too? Oh, is God, that, we're not even in that, that part. Yeah, are we? What is there to fix before. if you're so useful? I guess I, we'll find out. It's going to be like... When we watched Nando say that the Joker's girlfriend should no. have been a real person. Oh, dude, he'll, he'll turn his daughter into a full-on <laughs> character. He'll give her a whole That's episode. That's gonna be it, yeah. yeah. He's gonna... I know, I know I mentioned this before, but it's really annoying me, this the, the entire framing of these three things, of, like, uses of a weak character. People don't write weak characters intentionally. 
Yes, yeah, so this is we useless advice, undeveloped. like because yeah. oh, nobody looks at their point? characters as undeveloped and useless or whatever. Like analysis yeah. is aimed towards the creator, right? It is to help, like it is aimed to the creator to understand creation better, to you know understand the creative process. But so what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? I don't go into any particular writing exercise knowing that I've got a weak, underdeveloped character who needs like because. If I know that, then I'm going to start like putting flesh on the bones, so to speak. I'm going to try and flesh out the character yeah. and make them more of a thing. Yeah. I'm, the the I'm implication here just... is that this is an accident. That it's like an accident that it all worked out, and the, that Marcus, as opposed to exactly the point. Well, here's an equivalent. It's like you lost all the wheels in your car, and instead of him helping you get the wheels back on, he's like, "Well, your car can now be a table or a chair." Like, yeah, well, make no, the no. make the best use you can out of that table. It doesn't. It's like, well, no, I, 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 mean, just wanna, I just want to fix I'm the a, car at this point. Like, I'm, why would I'm I? A car manufacturer. It's not, I want to. <laughs> but it's not something that it takes a resource to fix, other than your time. That's the thing, right? It's like you know, there are there are situations in the world where your car could like have the wheels fall off, and there's no more wheels. No, no, no. Oh yeah, but in this scenario, we have the wheels. He's just like, we don't need to fix. This, this, this is the problem with this. His advice isn't to fix a character; it's to use it and because. I'm assuming this this assumes that you've got your a bad character on your hands. What do you do with them? Well, you can make use of them in a good way. It's like, no, well, you fix the fucking bad character. Yeah. But this the problem is, really... is, a lot of what he's highlighting here are evidence of it not being a bad character. Instead, yeah. he's saying it's uses of it. It's so weird. We're like over halfway into the video, and all of these three uses are completely unintelligible to me. Like... I mean that was no hyperbole. I absolutely don't understand. Well, yeah. so if I said to you, bad characters can enrich good characters, you're just sitting there like, I don't know what to do with that. What? <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to say to that? What if you? What if in Wonder Woman 1984 they wrote um, all of the characters to be terrible on purpose just to make Max Lord look good by comparison? Oh. And was it? like. They fucking succeeded. That's, <laughs> yeah, good that's job. Said as if it's something good for the bad character. What? Because, but like a good character can enrich another good character. They often do. A good a character can prop up another good character. They often do. Like the fact that he's bad has nothing to do with this, and he's not bad. So, like, what? Things like What's parallels. Happening? You know, I add to this that the grenade <laughs> scene is doing something similar. One final act to make you the martyr you've. Gonna pause right there. Yeah, gotta be careful. Always fill the pause. Final act. <laughs> what is? Oh, so what you mean by martyr? You always saw your. Oh, sorry. There's no point to it now. Fuck. Okay, carry on. Self as. I don't think that's true. It's a weird line, and I don't think Marcus really. Oh, weird. No. So this is what? long. This, line. this is not long <laughs> after. Um, he's been at the funeral for a martyred Grayson. She died doing a job, like very well. It was, it was horrific, horrible, and he looks up to her. I think he would love to have that fate, to be a person that everyone respected and understood and did the right thing. Of course, yeah. he's thinking about that fate right now, but then he's probably also thinking about the fact that that means he's going he's gonna to die. It means that his daughter doesn't have a father. This is why, like, looking at this scene and being like, you failed. It's like, motherfucker, there's a lot going on here, okay? Someone else's life. <laughs> like you fail to blow <laughs> yourself up. <laughs> like, <laughs> what good are you? I feel like it's pretty explicit with the funeral scene. Take the scene this way. That um, the martyr thing applies to him. I think so. Yeah. And I'm not surprised that Silco is even aware of that. He probably fucking had someone at the funeral. Who knows? Keep an eye like on Marcus as well. He's in Grayson's shadow, and he knows it. Yeah, he that's... is not the person that Grayson was, and he knows it. That's a big part of who he is. All there. I don't know why he called it a weird line. What does Sokol mean by martyr you always saw yourself as? I don't think that's true. It's a weird line, and I don't think Marcus really sees himself that way. You're, the way you see the scene is he, he wants, wants to be that. He, he wants, wants to be that, yeah. He did watch, he probably did watch the show, Theo. <laughs> He's so <laughs> adamant that it's the second screen. He's so adamant. <laughs> There's no uh, way. We could be at the point of third screen, guys. I don't know. Third, <laughs> third screen. <laughs> third screen behind it's, Discord. It's Twitter was on the second yeah. screen. The, yeah, the, screen yeah. the worse the opinion, the like lower screen number it gets. <laughs> yeah, it was the third screen that's been turned up vertically. Yeah, what if it was, was none of the three screens? Viewing. It was on his phone on the desk while he was playing games. 
Oh, no. Marcus really sees himself that way. The way I see the scene is this mistake has plagued Marcus and the city as a whole for far too long, and Marcus wants to end it in any way he can. That's the just thing to do. He knows he's a crooked cop who never has done any good for the city. Sending both of them to help. I don't know. I, don't I, I don't know about that, no. I don't think he... He I, probably, probably has done plenty of good, but... Yeah, the impression I've gotten bad. at this point is that it actually maintains a level of peace between the two cities at this point, him being an arbiter of it to an extent. Yeah. That's um, probably why he's still in it. He's it's interesting to think about. He's kind of like the a negaverse version of Grayson. Because that was kind of point. her role. But she was doing yeah, it in a very do, um, yeah. paragonish way while he's doing it in a more underhanded way. Like I keep the peace by greasing the wheels and, you know, getting a bit of blood on the money, that sort of shit. Um Are you saying Marcus is the anti Grayson? Not even anti. Like I said, I, I don't know how I would put it. He's kind of fulfilling a similar role as he's her, an but, inverse. Uh, every of character her. is the opposite of every other character. <laughs> I think seeing what happened, he gained a little bit of perspective on what could happen when, you know, tensions get much higher if he like, you know, if war starts to be on the table. So he's like he, with that perspective, he's trying to fulfill Grayson's role, and with Silco as his Vanda, like, relatively speaking. But of course, Silco is a completely different character, and he doesn't have the strength that Grayson did. So it's a very different dynamic. He's probably still got plenty of good done, but it's not, like, he doesn't have the same leverage and the same ability to say no to Silco, because Silco has all the control. As someone just mentioned, Grayson had Vanda, he has Silco. Yeah, and, and the interesting dynamic there is Vanda was very invested in helping Grayson because he understood the value of it. Silco is interested in taking advantage of Marcus wherever he can. Mm -hmm. um, though at the same time, like I said when we were covering it, I wouldn't be surprised if Silco has given up henchmen here and there just to, you know, satisfy Piltover's anger because he understands the, the long-term benefits of it sort of thing. Yeah just thing to do he knows he's a crooked cop who never has done any good for the city yeah i, I just disagree with that characterization as well yeah i don't agree with it if he didn't if he never did any good for the city he wouldn't have been able to keep his job that corrupt ranks that corrupt oh wow sending both of them to hell is the right decision the just decision whoa both whoa. to hell oh, <laughs> oh calm down <laughs> holy shit <laughs> okay. holy shit we leaped we leaped really far away it's cut it's oh, suddenly oh, jesus uh, so if you'd ask Shut me, up, is it the correct thing to do to pull the grenade, the pin in that scene for Marcus? I'd be like, I don't know, dude. We're looking at a lot of variables here, okay? Like, this is <laughs> not a. <laughs> By the way, can we just have a look at that explosion? Uh... Both of them to hell is the right. So who knows how many people you kill by doing that? Well, you know, he's a, he doesn't, he doesn't have send them to hell too. It's hell party. To hell too. <laughs> why, why did you say it like that? Send them to hell. <laughs> send them to hell. Marcus can't even go to purgatory or something. He goes all the way down, man. Send them to hell. <laughs> they had their chest. <laughs> man, all right. So let's roll back, see what the overall point was. Oof, that lost me for a bit. It's done any good for the city. Sending both of them to hell is the right decision, <laughs> the just decision. But in the end, Marcus thinks about his daughter. She needs him, and he needs to be there. Wait, so was it the right decision? <laughs> what? Man, okay. It's the right decision, oh, God, but it's this, also not the right decision. This man challenges my, my everything. <laughs> <laughs> because of her, he can't go through with it. He can't sacrifice his daughter to do what's best for his city. Sound familiar? Nope. Yeah, can that, that sounds like someone who goes to fucking hell. No, no, so, so, I'm sorry, draw. sacrificing mm. your daughter is the just decision, right? This, we're not just talking about sacrificing himself, we're talking about yeah. a, letting a, a young girl die. Yeah, because well, theoretically speaking, that could be the result of killing Silco. There's no reason not to think that. And, or betraying him, just in general. But I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a little interested in the fact that he's like, he's basically decided as a reviewer here that that was the strict moral decision, you know, to, to have done that. Because he's Jesus, now comparing man. it <laughs> with them. Um, Send him to hell. hell. I, just, I just want to make sure you understand this. He's, he's drawing no, a, no, fucking hell. Send him to hell. He's, he's drawing moral a parallel, which I actually down think down. there's an interesting thing to comment on being the whole father-daughter stuff going on. But you know, like Silco's choice, give up Jinx, a fucking horrifying murdering war criminal monster and you get peace sovereignty and access to the hex gates basically the like what is the downside yeah. as silco even Give says compare that 
to blow yourself up and who knows how many other people <laughs> and leave your daughter send fatherless. Yourself, like, yeah, but, and send yourself to hell. Or leave and, your daughter like, orphaned. And re yeah. re uh, and reveal to everybody, more than likely, <laughs> like, what the fuck's going on. And you leave uh, Zorn without a leader, which Jace correctly points out of this scene. Just like, you do, yeah, this. It's amazing to me that he hasn't thought about any of uh, and he considers these, like, on the level. It's just like, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> The 100% correct choice is detonating <laughs> The moral choice was setting him straight to hell. <laughs> Send him straight to hell and he was it. <laughs> I guess it's moral to send people to hell now. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> like, whatever. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, we skipped like, that you one take, too. <laughs> you can take, you can take that position, though. but I'm going to leave you behind on that one, Just man. No consideration for the idea that, like, there is a path to redemption. Um, for Marcus, it <laughs> entails him being alive. Like, Which, nah, by the way, that door is closed on you, friend. How he frames that decision as that sort of thing, but he still goes to hell. <laughs> like, <it's... laughs> what, what a that's, difficult. That's what we call not redemption. Then exactly. Like yeah. if, if if Marcus were told like this is a redeeming act, he's like, oh cool. So it's still hell though. Yeah, still hell. You're like, okay. Oh so well, I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Yeah, I guess I won't kill myself. <laughs> I don't want to go to hell just yet. Try and get as much time on Earth as I can, since it seems like going to hell is inevitable. Even me blowing myself <laughs> up isn't good enough. God, what a <laughs> straight to hell! Why did straight he to say hell. that? He really <laughs> hates he Marcus. That? I can't, I can't stop laughing at it. It's just really <laughs> funny. <laughs> and he needs to be there for her, and because of her, he can't go through with it. He can't sacrifice his daughter to do what's best for his city. Sound familiar? <laughs> get me cheeks. And I'll give you your nation of Zorn. I think he couldn't sacrifice himself. I think I, I think that's yeah, he's afraid I, to die. Yeah. I don't think I, I don't, don't know why we're ignoring like, it. Yeah. Like yeah. people don't typically like, want to blow themselves up with a grenade, it's honestly. It's a really hard <laughs> well, decision people, maybe, to make. I mean, take your own life, <laughs> maybe you, even, but yeah. I mean, yeah. I I, I, I man, just really I'm just waiting for the day myself. <laughs> I just really like the idea that we say that so in this video, I say it's just like, huh, I hadn't considered that, actually. <laughs> he might want to live. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, wait a second, this changes everything! Is there anything so undoing as a daughter? This scene uses Marcus as a foreshadowing prop, showing Silco oh, using the very power that I would, no, <laughs> I, no, I would No, I would say that the more Stop pertinent it. aspect of it is that we're getting a lot of information on, like, what Marcus really wants to do. That he wants to what? do, he wants to be good and do good things. He's and done it again. He's he feels draining, like he really does not have the capacity to. He's draining pieces out for Marcus, and then we're sitting here like trying to correct the pieces and be like, no, what you're supposed to have gained is this. This is what it says about. It. And then he's like, also, what I just drained out isn't for Marcus; it's for Silco. You're like, no, it's for no, someone else. No, even what are you it doing? Stems like... from, it, it stems from Marcus. It is his. It is his content. It is his material. As a character. Yeah, if you want to draw a parallel about what choices you make in Sacrifice for your daughter, I think that's totally fine. Marcus, Silco, and Vanda are all, like, their daughters define a lot about what they make choices for. But the way he's going about this, so backwards. Yeah. In the end. And by the way, Silco does want to be a martyr. And I think that's why he accuses Marcus of wanting to be a martyr. Silco, Silco wants to be a does martyr. want to be a martyr? I never knew that. I, I no, I thought to be a Silco I wants to be, be okay. alive in the later Yeah, he wants to be alive. I don't think he wants to be yeah. a martyr. Yeah, considering that how he reacted to Savika almost killing him, he didn't seem too indifferent yeah, he... about that. Exactly. Yeah. I think I think I would be willing to say Silco could probably be willing to be a martyr for Zor. Uh if necessary. Well, oh, so yeah, wait, if we if, if we're saying offer. if the offer were on the table, because yeah, uh, he seems much more happy to give himself up to get Zorn's sovereignty to Jace, but if we're saying if there were a button Silco could push and it meant he dies but Zorn gets sovereignty and uh, shipping access and all that stuff, I think he'd be a little like, fuck, I can't see it for myself, yeah. but okay. I could see him doing that, but I yeah. don't think that's ever been his plan to die. No, you not know? at all. No, no, he wants to be in charge. People tend not to plan to die if they can avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We yeah, we mentioned this before with the Yeah, grenade. where do I <laughs> slot in the part where I die in this plan? I'm missing a trend. Ooh, right here. Like, perfect. Is well, that a theme of our game? Because that's two characters. Two characters who want to die. He doesn't die, die in it, so he's like, fuck. Um, the themes of not wanting to die. But I'm I'm interested in this one. What are the references for Silco's martyrdom? He's projecting. And it shows us that Silco sees the situation very differently than Marcus. For Marcus, this little girl would be losing her dad. Oh, wait, are we done with that already? Wait. 
I think we're done. <laughs> That's why he accuses Marcus of wanting to do murder. He's projecting. And it shows us that Sokos... Wow, that is it. Okay. <laughs> He's uh, I think our only oh. reference is his conversation with Jace. I can't think of a single other but one. But even, we don't actually, because had he had said she was acting on my orders and he goes, okay, give yourself up, then he'd be like, uh, he, you, know, you don't know what happens next in that conversation. Yeah. He could be like, you don't want me organizing the deal you're making with me. Like, he could easily have said that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sees the situation very differently than Marcus. For Marcus, this little girl would be losing her daddy, but his sacrifice would make the world she grows up in a better place. And that's why Silco absolutely would pull a pin if the roles were reversed. I don't I'm, know. I'm not no, no, I, draw in I don't know. If I'm not alive, then I cannot continue to enact my plan as I want to do it. And you know what? But also, Silco just, would find a way not... to kill him without dying. That would be Silco's goal. Yeah. yeah. Silco would just come back with a fucking gun. <laughs> But it's also like, you, you understand it's not as simple as him just blowing up this room and sending them both to hell. Like, that doesn't... There's too, like, there'd still be problems. It, no. You haven't solved anything. You, uh, you... Wrong. To some extent, what? No, that would solve everything for me. The blowing up the mob boss <laughs> solves all of the socio-political the issues yeah. of the Undersea. Just, you know, all of those other gangs, all the Ken Every Barons, problem is Silco's fault. They're all just gone. If we blow up Silco, there's no more Ken Barons. Simple as. This is the thing, like the 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 hyper hot take is like, does the will get better if Silco dies? Like, hmm, I can't be sure of that one <laughs> because of no. all of the, the resulting chaos. It's like, ugh. and it's cool because it. Jace points that out. In a few episodes, the rules are reversed, sort of, and it's an accident. But Silco is fine with it. He what? It's an accident, he's but he's fine with it. Oh. Yeah, very fine with that. Okay, it. we have stretched what it means to be a martyr. Specifically, doesn't want to die in that scene. I, he, he's fine. Yeah. I do. He's fine with it. As, <laughs> as you see his expression of just like, oh, nah, I don't. Know. He's fine. You just with imagine it. The, the chair turns over and he just kind of gives this shrug, like, yeah, eh. <laughs> eh. that's all right. He's, they, I would have preferred he, a grenade. Does, but, that's eh, his dialogue right. in this scene: is to say, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> I, you know what? If anything, this is preferable. You know. <laughs> Can you imagine? Don't, don't, don't cry. That's, that's, look, yeah. that's going to Goodell. Yeah. Can you imagine? It's like instead of "You're perfect," he says, "Don't cry. This is fine." This <laughs> is fine. No, <laughs> uh, he says, "Don't cry. I'm perfect." <laughs> I just cry. there's, there's a, a logic monster. here, okay, and it does make sense. Many characters who wish to be martyrs are mostly fine with death, even when it's an accident. This it, that lines up, you know. There's there's an element there. This is the only fucking reference I think he has, by the way. He hasn't even got the Jace one because that goes counter, probably to death because it's it's not even. I just I'm amazed that he's clearly trying to execute Vi so that he can remain the biggest influence in Jinx's life, and she, as a quick reaction to the gun sound being uh, chimed or whatever, shoots him. And like, I think we talked about this in, in, in the third stream, we were just like, this resignation on his face of, I'm dead, that's it. That's it. And he uses his last breaths to tell Jinx how much he fucking thinks she's been. He doesn't even come out, he's like, make sure you file that missile, or make sure Zorn gets sovereignty. It's, no, you're perfect. Yeah. Well, that shit has nothing to do with it. It is all about Jinx in that last few moments. The idea is he's like, quick, Jinx, record me dying so I can get my dying message out and everyone can see me as a martyr. Quick, 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 quick. Like, hey, what's up? It's your boy here, Silco, with the final video. <laughs> oh my god, look at this bullet in my heart. rip a -roo. Let's, so, like, let's right just... into the news. Let's just <laughs> jump right into it. But first, keeps! Oh no. But yeah, really first fucking I weird way. Skillshare. Really weird way to describe this scene, but infinitely funny. Absolutely would pull a pin if the roles were reversed. In a few episodes, the roles are reversed, sort of, and it's an accent, but Silco is fine with it. He gets to be the martyr like he always wanted. So Where'd you get what? that from? <laughs> yeah, that's not what happens in the scenes, like, at all. I feel like, like that's that what are we doing? There is well, nothing I'm, I'm even... actually starting to accept the second monitor theory now, even though 90 yeah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes, join me. Monitor theory. Join me. <laughs> He didn't watch it, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, maybe he stopped All watching every time a fucking... Every time a, no, a, Marcus, a Marcus scene, scene showed up. Yeah, he just... No, but that was a Silco scene. Okay. Uh... That wasn't. 
It's the ah, most important I can, scene, I can explain that. in the whole show. Whenever he's realized that Marcus is, is sort of supporting another character, those characters' scenes as well are ones he ignores. He's like, anybody... So he didn't watch, like, half the show? <laughs> all of it by this, by his fucking All arguments. the show on the I'm second right. monitor. He watched, no, he watched the Jericho scene. <laughs> no, Caitlin's in that. D okay, but no, it, it only it's only one degree. It'll only go to one degree. Yeah, the way that Jericho makes the food is exciting and cool, which makes yes. him a <laughs> likable character. But Caitlin's in the scene, and she reflects Marcus. And Marcus is I I, I don't know how deep what's it goes. Some, what's the funniest visual I could have for talking about someone who's fine with accidentally dying because they're a martyr? I'm mm. thinking like Ronald McDonald, but I don't know. Ronald <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Donald> McDonald. <laughs> I was going to be like, the, uh, hand the hand burglar is taken <laughs> over McDonald's and he's using it as a, like a front to, to launder money. And then Ronald McDonald is standing imagining... there with a grenade in his hand. The thing you've always wanted to be a martyr. <laughs> no, he's he standing there with a burger in his hand. <laughs> yeah. he, he's like, I've know, always he, wanted to be a McMartyr. He, he squeezes it and all the grease juice ignites and blows up the whole thing. <laughs> For some reason, I'm imagining Emperor Palpatine being thrown down a mine out. shaft with that. <laughs> you always wanted to be a martyr. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the statues of Ronald McDonald with like the bronze statues of him standing heroically with a hamburger in his hands <laughs> and chicken nuggets in the other. I'd Just... like them to maintain there's a pin in the hamburger as if it's a green. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never know what Ronald McDonald sacrificed for them. They never will. He's, he's got an entire vest of hot apple pies like it's a suicide vest. It really does feel almost as bizarre, though, as, as, as assessing Emperor Palpatine in the OT and concluding that he always wanted to die to yeah. become a martyr. You're like, where did you get this from? What's happening? That was going to be my suggestion well, when you mentioned it. I mean, when we see him again in The Rise of Skywalker, he seems pretty cool with it. I've yeah. died before. I have died yeah. before. <laughs> that's, that's literally JJ Abrams I've in the audience with you. I've been martyred before. <laughs> He's died before, well, guys. Of, Come on. There's a lot of JJ in the audience Somehow with you Palpatine with the Rise of Skywalker. Return. God, the yeah. fucking... Uh, <laughs> Somehow Palpatine The return. dead speak! <laughs> no, JJ all the writing... Any favors with that, did he? All the writing to do with Emperor Palpatine is fucking hilarious. It's, it's, it's my it's... favorite. I love it so much. <laughs> It's the clearest. It's, you know how we have never even given a shit. There's that meme in uh, Justice League where he has that board that says "I tried." Like the equivalent for JJ would be, "I didn't even try." Like I wasn't even. <laughs> I didn't bother. I knew there was no saying. I this. have tried before. <laughs> it goes real well. What do you do? Uh, but yeah. Okay. So there you go. Those were his three uses for weak, underdeveloped characters. This has been a ride. Garbage. Nice. Oof. So we have our three uses for this worst character in the series. Number one, Marcus is a necessary foil. The uh, actually, we did ask the, the 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 crew and the and the fab chat uh, who the worst character was, and it, it, they didn't vote Marcus. And that is a, as objective no, yeah. as you can get, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. no, Echo, right? No, Lowest was wrong. Echo for some reason. That was interesting. Poor Theo. I understand why it's <laughs> Echo, but still, re re for this worst character in the series. Number one, Marcus is a necessary foil, the anti-Kate. Can't be a foil without he's having not, characteristics, so fuck off. He's not the anti-Kate either, so, yeah. Number two, Marcus embodies part of our setting, enriching it. He embodies a setting element. That sounds kind of nuanced. in a, a setting without embodying a setting element? No, that's yeah. pretty, uh, that's, that's yeah, pretty lame. If he was a bad character, he would be doing that job badly. And also, like, isn't that a necessary part of characterization if you are successfully embodying the society yeah. and culture that you're brought up in? Where are the inherent contradictions in the character? Where are the breaches of his own principles? Will, we don't have those. All I'll say, I guess, is that that's usually how we decide if a character is failing or not, but for yeah. him, it's whether or not he was interested in them. Which is unfortunate, because there, be, there are going to be a lot of good characters that you categorize as bad, based on that. Yeah, I call it, it seems like a false positive system. And a lot of bad happen. characters that you yeah, may well you Not even a false positive, it's, just, it's literally just a point of, yeah, I didn't like this person. Anyway. Yeah. I, I guess, yeah, it's like false positive system, you're right.
he represents Piltover like Jinx represents Zahn. Three Marcus is a prop for parallels and foreshadowings. Oh. And by the way, these uses absolutely do not fix them. All the flaws I talked about. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how, uh, wait, what? What? <laughs> like, what? what fixes? I'm sorry, what? I like, so he was worried when he got to this part of his video that people might start thinking he's a good character. And he's like, let me ride you. <laughs> this is, he's it's still bad. Fixed him, even though he's whole time I was talking about why they're bad. Where am I? I feel like all you've done is highlight in incorrect ways, albeit that he is relevant <laughs> and meaning and important. It's so odd. You How like, are you man? He's, he's you incorrect in every direction about the character. Yeah. Like, God, I'm like, gonna give I'm gonna give incorrect reasons for why he's bad, and then incorrect reasons for why he's good. Why he's like, good. what the fuck? But he's and not good. Don't to... worry. Isn't this and I'm gonna job? fix him, but not fix him. About in the beginning of the video are still there, still prevented from being compelling, satisfying. Oh, good God! Satisfying, no. appealing. It's getting worse. Words, Even vaguer, satisfying. What does that mean? Oh, I literally. Why does, why earlier does I said Marcus story have to be satisfying? But how is it a character he... satisfying? Wait, what? What is appealing? What does appealing mean? Well, and, and I literally said like why I like him so much is I find him compelling. It's like, but he isn't though. No, but I'm like, like okay. <laughs> like, like. I use the sentence, Marcus is satisfying, and that's not... <laughs> what? It's an odd way to describe... <laughs> like, you, I, I'd say that you can describe, like, a narrative through line or a plot point. These yeah. things can be satisfying, but, like, characters... It is an event weird. in the characters. Yeah, like, well, that, that implies that you feel satisfied story. when he appears on screen, like right? But you're just like maybe you see him oh, and you Marcus go. Is here. Here. If I asked any of you guys, oh yeah, Marcus is here. Oh yeah. If I asked any of you guys, like boy. your opinion on on Arcane as a show or an individual character, and you describe them as one of these three, I'd then be like, uh huh. Yeah, he's go on. Compelling. Yeah, because yeah. like go on. these are all oh, these these are all so broad and. Feeling y. <laughs> like, obviously, is the only are, one of these I'd very, use. They're very synonymy, too, as well. Yeah, it's all just buzzword well, nonsense. This is. Genuinely, it's very it's, human. If, I, if I have three words, that's better than if I have one word, all right? If, if Rags had told me, like, is, I'm though. interested in Marcus because I find him compelling, and I go, oh, yeah, uh, why? And you go, I just find his story really satisfying. I'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah why? why? And you go, well, I just he find the appeal because it was so compelling, yeah. It's like, why is he so appealing? Well, because he's so compelling. At that point, I'd be like, Rags, you, we've talked you before. Okay, you, like, you know this. Are you trying to piss me off? <laughs> like, why are these me? buzzwords are so annoying? Because they only mean anything when backed by references that support an argument mm -hmm. about what the character is. I think, I think that the buzzwords can be incredibly useful, though, when you're trying to convince people. Because if they agree with you, they can just fill in the gaps. Or it just well, goes on question. I would argue I there's an the irony here that I usually roll these out when I can no longer translate my experience to you with other things. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if you're like, I just don't get it, why do you like Marcus? I just go, I, I don't know. Like, it, there's something about him that appeals to me, you know? I, I find words like this, probably not the ones on screen right now, except compelling. They're good for, like, getting your foot in the door in terms of a dialogue. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Like, for all of us, right? If we were with... writing a video and this was our conclusion, we, we'd be like, oh, we failed then. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you were if you're driving down the road and someone else is driving down the road on the opposite side, but you both want to tell each other how you felt about a show really quickly before Who's you're gone. Compelling? This is how you do it. I think because uh, I've definitely used the word compelling when there's probably a better way to describe something. I think in like regular conversation, I don't really mind if these come up as long as we can expand on it further. But when this is like the the crux of your structured scripted video. Yeah, yeah, if you're just oh, trying man, to give them the cliff notes, more. you're just going to use these words. Well, yeah, sure. But this yeah. is this is like writer-oriented advice. This yes. is an analysis of a character, so you need more. You need. It's, to it's insane more. to me that this is writing. I guess it's not insane. This makes sense. A lot of this makes sense, actually, with all the complaints we have about video essay advice. Like it, a lot of it follows similar yeah. aspects. It drives us nuts. Well. You haven't helped me. Like, if I if I came to this video looking for advice on how to, I, I don't know, how to use a bad character well, it's like, you really haven't helped me, because I don't I even know if he's bad. Yeah. I, I don't know what answers. Well, to be fair, <laughs> well, yeah. we haven't even gotten to his fix yet. 
Oh, I'm so excited for that. Oh, there's a I'm chaser for a shot. I'm already upset, but I'm going to be upset. I'm, I'm, that's part. It's partly contributing to my <clears throat> excitement. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited to be upset by this. That's not unironically. <laughs> I kind of am. Hey, Who look, that's pretty character? compelling, all right? That's that's what we learned, that that's what makes you interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a juxtaposition a within my character, so I'm Ooh. interested. Juxtaposition equals interesting, okay? Yeah, th it's that's why that EFAP is an interesting character. It's all about tearing down writing advice in all these different video essays while simultaneously trying to give writing advice. That's so interesting as a premise. It's very interesting. Mm. Wow. And I think that Mauler pretty... guy, he's like, he, he wants to be a martyr, you know? No. But he's also <laughs> racist. <laughs> but he's no. also a racist. <laughs> a racist martyr. <laughs> like Hitler. I just, I can see that being in this video. It's like, he wants to be a martyr, but he is racist. That is so interesting. There, and as we know, racists cannot be martyrs. True. Go straight to hell. From being compelling, satisfying, and appealing as a character. Hell. But that's what I wanted to highlight here. The Arcane writers had a bad character. Every story has bad Stop. characters, bad mm. scenes. Every story every, has bad every characters. Every story has bad characters and bad scenes. Hold on. Okay. Oh. Every story has that. That's just like every that's story. your hands up in the air and saying, well, I give up. <laughs> If every what, story what? has bad characters, you say, I put so, to okay. you arcane. So if Marcus wasn't I'm... in this story, who, who would be the bad character, right? Let's say... Yeah, yeah that's a good, that's a good way to put it. Every story has bad characters I am... and bad scenes. Even we say, right, yeah, sure, there's like flaws in everything. But even with that statement, if someone said, wait, so you think it's impossible to not be flawed? It's like, well, I guess it's theoretically possible. It's just that we usually find at least something in everything. That's typically what tends to happen. Yeah. Um... But he just said you always have bad characters and bad seeds. Like, oh. We are just currently talking about a show that does not have bad characters. I think I would happily say it has no bad characters. Yeah. I, I would I, say I that. I would agree. Bad characters, yeah. We'll yeah. say, okay, so like, um, so if we look at something like 127 hours, right? That only has one character, I assume. I've not actually seen it. I'm just using it as an uh, example. I, I think there are flashbacks, right? Or are they now? Is it? Are there flashbacks? I can't remember. I have seen it, but not so for like a hundred years. If only I could have fucking... a flashback and remember. Is that well, can anyone name anything with like one character or maybe two? What, who what? are the bad characters and scenes uh, in Shawshank Redemption? Um, well, I... Heaven Sent has one character in it. That's was, a Doctor I Who think episode. the Heaven Sent hours example appears. is still great, like because yeah. I don't think people remember there being much more than just him, and he's doing he's recording himself, right? That's how they ex get him to explore himself a bit while mm -hmm. we're watching him. Um, like he's he's like doing vlogging, I th I think, because he's trying to record like a thing could, people could find. Whatever your point is, very clear. It's like so if there has to be a bad character in a movie that only has one character, it's like well <laughs> that movie is fucked. Well, <laughs> I guess I, I there think this is just a thing he didn't think that. about, right? Because he can't oh, actually you mean the video? believe this. Yeah. Right. Uh, like, it was a statement he threw out that if he sat with it for, like, another second, be like, hang on, wait, no, hold on. Is that I, actually I, I, think, I think he's just trying to say, like, you know, it's not a big deal that it has a big char a bad character, because, like, lots of stuff does. I think that's I what think, he means, but he's just said I think everything. This is, I think this is his mistake. Everything has, like, flaws, and he's, he's taken it a step further to, not that everything has, like, flaws. No, everything has, like, bad components, like, really bad, big components. Characters and, and scenes. It's like, oh, 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 oh just pull it back in a little bit. Is there a bad character in Lord of the Rings? Who would be the bad character in Lord of the Rings? Yeah, because I was gonna say, like, that's the variables are fucking sky high with that one, and the amount of people in it. It's like they're a bad character. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't remember. Be... I don't think so. So there'll be a be bad theory. character in Lord of the Rings media pretty soon. Who was the bad character in Chicken Run? Yeah, true. Who's the bad character in <laughs> Chicken no, Run? Who, yeah, who's the bad character in like Wallace and Gromit Curse the Were Rabbit? Or any like Wallace and Gromit short? Or like in Finding Nemo or The Incredibles? Who are the bad characters? What who's are the bad, the bad characters scenes? in Wally? Please tell me. There are no bad characters in Wally. Maybe Wally um, is fantastic. Otto, because he's morally dubious and thus Ah, see, evil. Otto is Otto is not interesting. He's a robot who's evil. I've seen that a million times before. <laughs> they even have a reference to Hal as part of his design. Hal, that's yeah. terrible. That's some that's some lamp shedding right there. <laughs> lamp shedding. Well, see, but that serves a meta theme or whatever. Therefore, it's well used. Bad character, well used. Otto, I got done. So confused for a second there because I forgot the autopilot's name was Otto, and I was just thinking like of the Simpsons character. I mean, <laughs> Otto, what's going on? Oh yes, Otto's face, which is the red light, like <laughs> walking around in the Simpsons world. 
It's oh uh, man. Oh, like we're almost there. Yeah, I'm what? sure of it. Bad scenes, flaws, and sometimes there's nothing you can do to fix them. You have to cut scenes for time. What? Nothing what? you can do to fix them. There's nothing you can do. And you have to cut scenes for time. You're, I, you said stories, I think, didn't he? He didn't say TV shows and movies. He said, he stories. said stories. So with stories, if you're writing a book, you got as much time as you want, you know, barring like your a... book being like 10,000 pages long. Can we please read like, highlight that he just said sometimes there's just nothing you can do? What the fuck? Yeah, what? like just, there's no way to fix it. There's he's, nothing he's, you can do. He's got the secret I... hidden asterisk there of what there is, is nothing you can do given the fact that there is what time is... and monetary constraints. What does it mean for a character to be bad if you can't do anything to fix them? What does that mean? I mean, what does it you, mean for a character to be bad if there are no amendments you can make? You fuck think, yourself completely. That That's just it. It's game over. But that, you really need to like backstep a lot if you've if you've reached that point. I don't even think you were generous with what you just said there, Theo, about the like time and money constraints because it seems like the context was adding on to the whole like every story has bad characters, every story ends up with bad scenes. Sometimes you can't even fix it. It's like the fuck. Why are we what even talking that? about it this way? Why? Because he said, you yeah, cut scenes for time, I'm like, I'm assuming but that was additional, that's what he would right? be appealing to. Yeah, it was. Let's, let's give it a little listen again. But that's what I wanted to highlight here. The Arcane Raiders had a bad character, every story has bad characters, bad scenes, flaws, and sometimes Mad. there's nothing you can do to fix them. You have to cut scenes for time, or solutions just create more Okay, you could argue that he's or the talking solution. about you examples. You can't say there's nothing no, he's about to say. And... He's about to say something about problems elsewhere. But this is great food for A thought. solution will create more problems elsewhere. Yes, yeah, so you just keep working on it. Yeah. What what kind of writing thing is isn't that? easy? Yeah. Sorry, that, well, it, dude. It, I would funny. argue It'll that is like the saying... primary issue with writing is you generate a thing like saying... that has ripple effects in other places. That's the th main problem solving no. you do in writing. Mm -hmm. So the when whole, when people the whole went to, aim is to make it so that those ripple effects are beneficial to every other that's part what of makes the story. it hard. When, yeah. when when you're developing a video game, one of the issues with bugs is that when you fix one bug, it might create bugs elsewhere. That is not a justification for a game to be buggy. You just keep working at it and try to keep fixing yeah. those bugs. It's the same with a story. If it creates problems elsewhere, fix those problems thing, now. I'm like fixing a leak, to... and then there's another leak pops up. It's like, well, shit. I guess I can't fix that leak. It's over. I'm not happy I guess to concede that that's like my house. an element. It's like that is the element of writing is problem solving. Essentially, mm -hmm. you want to get your stuff across, but you're like, oh, I can't have that and that. I'm gonna have to. Hmm. How do I? Hmm. Okay. Uh, this. 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 And you're like, yeah. The longer you go, the harder it gets because the more variables you've introduced. That's just how it works. So, you know, uh, if, if, if writing was easy, every story would be perfect. Pretty much. It's going to be a long game of compromise, I think. Like, you will have to, in a reality in which you do not have infinite time and infinite money to do whatever you want, which is, you know, an unfortunate reality of a lot of creation, uh, you will have to compromise in places uh, mm -hmm. which but the sign of, I guess, good creators, good writers and stuff, is when they take well-intentioned compromises that sacrifice little to gain a lot. Yeah. It's it's picking your battles, very much picking mm -hmm. your battles if you have limited time. Think about what will yield the greatest uh, results for the product overall. Um, yeah, it's opportunity cost and all that is playing into it. I guess I just, someone I in chat mean, said, like, a problem was, I, I just Sorry. saw someone in chat said a problem implies a solution. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, Not it's, necessarily, it, though. No, that's what I mean, implies I means. Would, it implies that there's a solution. What does it mean for there to be a problem to which there is no solution? It's not really a problem anymore. It just is how things are. Like, is uh, it a problem that I'm gravitationally bound to Earth, you know, and there's nothing I can do other than, like, I guess, build a spaceship and fly <laughs> off? That there I you go. That's the solution. <laughs> well, there's a the solution. Yeah, I guess. Necessary I'm sorry, surely, surely it would be more of a problem to not be gravitationally bound to the Earth, Ringy. You would, you would well, die. No, no, no. Well, 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 what? Not. So, my. Man, I feel like you've totally misunderstood the. If Quite my possibly. objective is, if the problem, if if my objective is, I want to go space. It's like the problem is, well, wait, Fringy, you're gravitationally bound to the planet. You need a certain amount of energy that you need to exchange with Earth to get out. It's like, well, I mean, yeah. is that really a problem? I, I guess it's like it's a problem if I, I want to get off of the planet. It's, it's, it's I, a problem. Well, you it, within that framing is what a problem. Your goal is within yeah, that it's, framing is a problem. Actually, your goal. Through, I need to well, I need I, to fix it. Well, it's not a the goal is not I, float off into well, space. Like, I actually I actually agree to the first 
statement, but the second one's throwing me. Like, the first statement of a yeah. problem implies a solution. I agree with that. A problem... Uh, no solution well, means it's not really a problem. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, so, like, uh, if you've been stabbed in the middle of the desert on, fuck it, an alien planet, there's no one else there. Um, and yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, really, yeah. really bad wound. So, like, I don't... I think you could describe that as a problem. Uh, yeah, If sure. your goal is survival, it, yeah. which is generally implied. If your goal is to survive, then it's a problem. I guess it's just <laughs> if you want to die, if you want to become a martyr, to... you'll be you'll be good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but who will know on the alien planet of your sacrifice? If your goal is to just maintain the integrity of your intestines. I like yeah, people gradually I, I realizing like... the, the reality hmm? of your avatar. By the way, Jay. Oh, is it still happening? <laughs> Every once in a while, some people in chat like, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just, I thought, you know, I'd like to have an animated av avatar. But at some point, I thought, what's the stupidest thing that I could do with that? And you chose a really smart thing, very clever, very interesting thing. It's the cleverest joke I've ever made. and you have to cut scenes for time or solutions just create more problems elsewhere but this is great food for thought for writers if you have something like this that's bringing your story down in a big way and okay don't bring say it down a in thing a big way and then have a different thing in text on screen that conflicts i can't read that and listen to you i have to pause it's confusing I, yeah i it, really it, yeah, hate yeah, it stop when doing that. do yeah. that i hate that so much it's so distracting don't do it. if it's not like five words maybe don't just don't do it or if, it, a if the text the is what you're it. saying, like subtitles are, we like subtitles. There's a comma at the end but, of it, so I'm anxiously uh, awaiting for another sentence as well. Or something else, anyway. Yeah. Solutions just create more In problems elsewhere, but this is great food for thought for writers. If you have something like this that's bringing your story down in a big way and you can't fix it, what you can do is find uses you for that can't. same element. So what do you mean, why can't, can't you? Why have already, you already you accepted it. defeat? Yeah. What, what does it mean to find a use for a flaw? Is he talking about like? Is he talking about like? Oh, I just need that payoff where Han Solo shoots his pistol into the planet and it explodes. I have to have, it. and it's like you can't. That doesn't <laughs> that doesn't mesh with that. And he's like, I have to. So that's a problem you can't fix. It's like no, that's that shouldn't be your that's attitude. A, this is on you. I feel. It's, like, it's, it's almost as if we're, it's almost as if we're in a, an unworkable situation here, right? Like almost as if like I don't know. Let's say you're some kind of cro crooked cop. And you're working with a mob boss who's <laughs> threatening your daughter, like that kind of situation where there's really no out. I mean, like you could pull out a, a pin out of a grenade. grenade. But what? Yeah. Shut up. What's that gonna do? It makes you become martyr. Make you the martyr you always dreamed. Of? Yeah. No, no, no. He never dreamed of that. That was Silco's dream. Oh, I yeah, am a bad. But like, if you have the time to think about finding uses for your flaws, and you still have the development time for that to be a thing you can do, you can fix the flaws. You still have the oh time. Oh God, I'm. I was just thinking, like, imagine that was a real thing where the, the guy was like, I have to have Han blow it up with the blaster. It's like, all right, how do we use this? It's like, well, let's make it so that the planet he chooses to blow up with the pistol is, like, really, really interesting and meaningful. It's like, what are you... No! We're not having him blow up a planet with a fucking blaster! Are you kidding me? It's like... <laughs> what if the planet is made of, like... What if the planet is made of bombs? So it makes sense. Uh, you, you sound go. like someone who's on drugs and needs their fix. <laughs> like, I, I what have if the have planet have it. Size, the planet have is the size it. of a tennis ball. Yeah, there we go. We've come. We've understood the video now. This is how he's contextualizing this advice. It's when you cannot fix the character, you must use them, despite their flaws, essentially. Yeah, they must be a prop for other characters now, or the themes. Meant to raise your story up in other ways. <laughs> Marcus is what makes Caitlyn's whole character function. Oh, oh no! 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 I love how the. The power of the no caused Discord to freak out. <laughs> I heard robots for a second during all those no! Like, so, <laughs> like a wolf howl, but everyone was just going no! 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 <laughs> Anyone can take this. I ain't doing it. <laughs> Let's hear it again. Let's hear it again. No, why would you? Why do you want to? You know what it says. <laughs> Just gonna hurt again. Thanks. Must you inflict <laughs> such damage upon us again? Oh, someone moved the video back. Oh. Uses for that same element to raise your story up in other ways. Marcus is what makes Caitlyn's whole character function. He's what makes Marcus is what makes Ouch. Caitlyn's whole character. Character. Can we hear function. if he elaborates on that. Okay. It's half the scene. Well, I think he's talking about the foil thing. 
Yeah, he's just gonna—he's no, he's just referencing but, back but, to the well, whole foil wait, thing. You can have a character but, function whether or not their foil exists. Like that. Yeah, fucking. Well, we, well you Marcus see, Mahler, The thing is, I know Kevin. that, and you know that, and we all know that. But does he know that? I don't know. Ma like, like fucking. Yeah. So, Marcus shares two scenes with Caitlin. Cut those scenes. Cut fucking Marcus from the story. It's literally just a story from Caitlin's POV. She still looks great. She's still thoroughly characterized. Um. With clear motivations and values, and I, just, uh, this is just this is just an understand an alien understanding of storytelling to me, right? That you have such a thoroughly well developed character, uh, as all also, the characters in the show are, and you say, "Oh, but if you took this character that they never interact with on screen for more than like five minutes." Um, also, didn't he say all of his scenes were bad? All of Marcus's scenes? Yeah. Did he say he had that? a good one? Well, he's I don't know. I don't. I can't remember him saying all of Marcus's scenes were bad. I fucking right. hope not. They certainly were. I don't cool. think he said that. No. They I weren't awesome and cool and funny. Yeah. Function. He's what makes half the scenes that take place in the Undercity make sense to us. His what? Oh, half the si man. scenes in the Undercity only make sense because of Marcus. I'm so lost at this point on how you're even concluding uh, these things. It feels like he's given it. us all the information we're supposed to have to understand this, and I am like, no, 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 no. You, you, you. I need help. You're in space. You're, you're lost. Ah. Bluffer's daughter isn't compelling, lost. but Silco's is. His daughter isn't compelling. <laughs> Shut up! What is this? <laughs> this is what makes Caitlyn's whole character function. He's what makes half the scenes that take place in the Undercity make sense to us. His love for his daughter isn't no, compelling, wait. but Silco's is. His love for- the, it's, it's amazing, oh. he's literally the opposite of what the truth is. He's- he's found a way to do the exact opposite. If you he's, he's, a bad character who makes, he's a bad character who makes half of the scenes in the Undercity work. How is this not he just an said contradiction? His love for his daughter isn't compelling. It's possibly the focal point of what makes all of his decisions compelling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you it's talking what about? How did choices. you get this so wrong? <laughs> it's why you f you've even stated that. Like, what are you talking about? Well, I guess he said he's as a whole just uncompelling. That's just how and it works. This is why you fail. Mm. Take Yoda, the Yoda is the only reason Luke's character works in the trilogy. <laughs> Bro, Yoda was fridged. Okay, Yoda was Fridge. fridged. <laughs> it motivated Luke to become a better Jedi. Makes sense to us. His love for his daughter isn't compelling, but Silco's is. And Marcus's inability to sacrifice is what makes Silco's final act just that much more meaningful. You're insane. I was not thinking about <laughs> yeah, Marcus during that guy. scene, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, it's odd for a bad character to be at the front of your mind when watching the scene that's probably most important for, like, Silco. Yeah. Okay, so now the big question. What would have fixed Marcus as a character? Oh, oh God, boy. Jesus. Here, oh, we go, oh, Here we go, Here we go. Everyone, oh, buckled in. Buckle is ready for a railing. Theo is muted. I demand that he return to and go. There's no way I'm going. You, you are. You'll get hurt the most, hopefully. <laughs> I'm trying, but I'm in the fucking internet connection vortex. I don't know if I'm coming through clearly. You think that? Oh, that's <laughs> um, right. You're understandable. Get a little bit of robot. We'll Let's, see how it goes. We'll pop us over to Singapore just for safety. Nice and safe in Singapore. So anyway, let's engage with this discourse. So what I can't answer is how any change would have impacted the rest of the story as a whole, and that's the hard part. You can dream up anything you want to write, but little changes in a scene or character have a ripple effect. Change this scene, and now you have to tweak this other scene a little bit, and that scene makes you tweak this other character, and now the ending has to be different, etc. Okay, so what he's established is, if he makes any changes, other things have to change as a result. All right. And therefore, I am going to choose not to acknowledge that. those. Yeah. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And there's considerations of timing and animation and all these other logistical concerns. Logistical. Man. Logistical. Logistical. Is that even logistical? Slow logistical? the fuck is that down. Even logistical you don't need to talk like you're in a fucking hurry all the time. Yeah. If it's, you uh, cannot but, speak you clearly, can... then you need to speak so isn't slower. Logistic. Logistics are to do with like location and where things are, right? So how is animation a logistical concern? Unless I'm just I, completely misunderstanding the word. I was you the impression logistics refers to like how everything's going from different places to different places in any way. Like right, when you get on, that broad, you can argue a lot of things come under logistics, I think. The detailed organization and implementation of a complex operation. Yeah. yeah. So it's absolutely You're allowed to call that logistics. I just wish he'd pronounced it 
logistics. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> They're allowed to call it logistics, but not whatever he said. Logistics. 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 Whatever. But in a vacuum, what does this character need? What's the most efficient path to making this character work on? I'm not looking forward to this. Well, if they're in a vacuum, they probably need, like, provisions. <laughs> I am. Air, What's he gonna water. say? On the same level as the rest of the characters work. Answer number one, I think, is his daughter. Make yeah, of course it is. You're yeah, here we go. <laughs> Give Red more go. meaning We're in already off to a strong start. So, before he gives his thing, anyone here... Anyone in the world can give what he's about to give, which is, he's just gonna make something be true about her as a person. The thing is, the show isn't doing that. Alright, we're not, we're not exploring Ren as a character, that's not a thing that happens, that's not a fix, that's just a different story. Tyler Ren? Oh yeah, the worst kind of Ren. Make her play with Enforcer He's dolls in the Silk so and scene. Make her saluting with the rest of the Enforcers in the funeral scene. She Why? idolizes her father, Why? and Why she has this rose... To show that she, she looks idolizes up to her father. her father, that's like... That's like the default, is that she looks up to her father. She clearly You would have to him. show why that wouldn't be the case, yeah. ...since the idea of enforcers. When she's with Soko, make her convinced that Soko must Rose be a good guy because he's her daddy's friend. All this being know. geared towards making Marcus's weakness feel more pronounced, more hypocritical. You know what would really have shown that she, um, that she, that she looks up to her father as if, um, she had a mustache to, to simp to mirror his. <laughs> she drew one on and she was like, oh, look, I, dad, I'm like, you. Jay, Jay, I thought what you were going to say was, you know what would make it better? Is a tattoo on her forehead that said, I look up to my father. <laughs> oh, that's, that's next level that's writing weird. advice. I don't know. <laughs> she's got, she, she's got the Mark, the Marcus has a mug, world's best super dad. She needs both. Bye. She needs both. She needs a mustache and a tattoo on her forehead that says, I look up to my father. She's drawn some eyebrows on like really big. He's an idea. When he's being a bully and just beating up random Undercity people, he sees his daughter playing Enforcer with her dolls and stopping bad guys and helping people, and he knows he's not that. His failure in his career is his failure as a father. Wait, well, Whoa. we don't know why it's bad or not necessarily. Failure as a father? <laughs> Wait, why would that be an example yeah, of a failure he... as a father to have told her Enforcer's are good people and then to not engage that in behavior in his real life? That doesn't mean he's failed to raise her. I don't even know that, like... Why do we have to make him a failure as a father anyway? Why would you want that to be a goal? And it's more interesting, Mola. It's is it? It's unique. Yes. There we go. Argument know. one. I think the fact that he's a good father is an interesting element along with everything else we know. Yeah, that's why all of this works is because it, the the daughter's doing well. He's got the good house, a good position, his, his family's doing pretty good, and it's because he's doing all this other stuff. That's why. It's the reason why he's doing all this. Yeah, because he gets paid for all of his uh, yeah. dealings. Like, it's got to tie in. And then the if sheriff's Marcus... role was tied to Silco. At least the show makes it clear that that was the case. So this is just, like, this is just a, it's funny because he opened with saying, like, it'll have ripple effects. Like, yes, this will have ripple effects, like, making him a bad father, because apparently that's, his failure as an enforcer is his failure as a father. It's like, right, okay. What are the right? He's a, he's a dad, but he's also a bad dad, and he's a racist. That makes him interesting. <laughs> these are all, yeah. yeah, these just keep adding levels of interest. The other scene to address is this one. I think this is intended to be a big moment for this character, but it's just not quite hidden. Intended? Wait, he, he is this literally is struggling with his conviction right now. He said it doesn't quite hit. Like, what? what is going to be his fix for this? Kind of big on these moments that feel right and meaningful, but are open to interpretation. And we discussed a few of these before. But you changed two, you're perfect. Then a real monster showed up, so late tantrums, Mel's paintings. Amazing source of content, by the way. Thank you what for writing your show. Wait, what? 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 So what fucking what fast. What's happening? What even was Wait, that? Slow see, down. Sorry. Right, sorry, I missed all of that. Can we? I want to. I missed that. he suggested all of that. changes to all of these scenes. Is that I, what he said? We're gonna go all the way back for the for Fringy's sake. All right. We'll, You're fine. gonna need to all slow the, him down because I just missed. He right. lumped quite the, the last thing. The last thing we did was he said, "Make him a bad father." Which is fun. Um, let's see what else. Let's see what's going from there. Guys and helping people, and he knows he's not that. His Wait a second. I'm sorry. I just saw a thumbnail come in from the related videos. It's been there the whole time, but I just registered what it says. It's a picture of the of the the last event of the show with the words "is not a cliffhanger" on um, in text. Are you in? Are you shitting me? That's what it's. <laughs> are, you are you pooping of... on my chest right now? My... Hang on. I want to see. I want to see why. I want to see the title of that. 
Sure. Well, the fact that we've already got season Why, two on the way. Why seconds later ruins everything? Okay, no, it wouldn't. By the way, if if that scene went on to see who died and who lived in that scene, that wouldn't ruin the show. I I'm fine with it being the ending, but to say it's not a cliffhanger is a bit interesting to me, considering we're gonna get the conclusion of all of it, it very soon. It wouldn't be a cliffhanger. Maybe maybe best faith interpretation of the information I have is that he's saying it wouldn't be a cliffhanger if you ended seconds later. Which is wrong, but it's less of a dumb point than everything else Very well. he could mean. His failure in his career is his failure as a father. The other scene to address is this one. I think this is intended to be a big moment for this character, is but it's just not quite failure? here. Arcane is kind of big on these moments that feel right and meaningful, but are open to interpretation. And we discussed a few of these before. But you changed two, you're perfect. Then a real monster showed up, so close to tantrums, Mel's paintings. Amazing source of content, by the way. Thank you for writing your show like this, Arcane writers. But Fucking hell. Confused. Why too what? quick? I don't know what all that was, but all right, I guess we're moving on. Yeah. Um, this scene is supposed to be one of those. Why can't he shoot Caitlyn? But all the answers that kind of come to mind for the scene, I don't think are that meaningful. He, he doesn't want to be <gasps> okay. Oh, he doesn't want to be a bad guy. Yeah. Caitlyn. He doesn't want to be bad. Caitlyn is the closest thing to Grayson right now. She's doing good work for good reason. He doesn't want to fucking kill her. How is that not meaningful with everything that we've already talked about, being that one of his biggest motivations is to be Grayson, but he can't? How how have you managed to miss any meaning here? I just don't get it. Yeah. He can't shoot her because the tribalistic bigotry is just too strong. She what? What? Tribalistic bigotry. What? Huh? Because his tribalistic he, bigotry is Sorry. just too strong. What? What is <laughs> nothing to do with that? He's, he's he arguing picked, that the only he reason that he can't why. shoot yeah. is that she's a topsider. What yeah. the fuck? I, I don't know if <laughs> that. That's insane. <laughs> what? You, didn't, you didn't understand this, but you just didn't understand the show. You didn't. You barely you, watched you, it. You've missed There's so much. Sense. How did you conclude this? Oh, man. I'm annoyed now. Like the rest <laughs> of these, the rest of these. Like, That's wrong. Let's no, it's, it was up this until like, this that was point wrong. He Fuck off. To realize. Breaking yeah. point. That was. Oh my god. Fuck you. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All it. right. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like a free HLJ to chill out. Chill out. <laughs> he's, <laughs> just, he's a bigot. <laughs> 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 he's too, he, just, he just loves his Actually, own people. I do enjoy, I do enjoy the idea that he's not shooting someone, he spares someone's life because he's a bigot. Yeah, that's, that's the, bigot. it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I mean, hey man, I keep on being a bigot then, I guess. I'm gonna, yeah, like, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be a good deal, and there will be someone in the audience who's like, no fucking way anyone said that, that someone spared <laughs> a person's life because they're bigoted. What? How does this make any sense? It was a big to spare this person's life. It's, you know what it is it ironically? You know you. what it is ironically? It's the peacemaker joke where he goes, oh, I've killed lots of white people. <laughs> yeah, pretty That's much. That's what it is. <laughs> showed up, so close to late tantrums, Mel's paintings. Amazing source of content, by the way. Thank you for writing your show like this, Arcane Writers. But this scene is supposed to be one of those. Why can't he shoot Caitlyn? But all the answers that kind of come to mind for this scene, I don't think are that meaningful. He can't shoot her because his tribalistic bigotry is just too strong. She's a fellow enforcer. <laughs> she's from Piltover. He can't shoot Fuck off. Man. Like, what a terrible one read. Potential, that's one potential read he's coming up with. I'm less annoyed, but it's still really stupid. It's, well, that's it's, just, that's uh, just nah, him detailing no, that's the not, same reason. That's not a meaning... It's not... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's... I don't see it. I legit don't see how... I, yeah, it, I don't see it. I think that's absolute bullshit. I don't think Marcus is thinking of her as a pilty when he's like, well, well I, I think he looks at her as Caitlyn, and I think he sees a lot of Grayson's traits in her. And to be fair, probably traits he would wish to have. That are in Caitlyn. Yeah. Well, it's not like Caitlyn's a like a bad person or anything. Even he can recognize that. He doesn't want to kill people. I think that's pretty fucking straightforward. Just I feel like that's pretty straightforward. Not specifically, I don't want to kill Piltoverians. Yeah, dude, like, you're like, how, well, he shot that's why Echo. He's mad. Yeah, and he was mad at someone else that because he felt like he was put into that situation. Biased. He's like, oh, I'm so fucking upset. You made me have to shoot this guy. God. Shoot her because he knows she's the good version of what he's supposed to be. She's a good cop. She's right. a selfless person who wants to do good. He wishes he were. And I think the, the second option. Those is reasons, not so the over just, thing. You just gloss over that. That's like the <laughs> primary. Mm, all right. What are they supposed to get out of this? But so what? Why now? What is he? What? <laughs> what? what you mean? Why, why, now? why now? Because this is where why the now? opportunity presented this is a situation. itself. 
This is a serious because situation it, he's been that, presented that, with right now. That's the situation he's currently in. That's why now. Like, what? What, what is? What oh other? He doesn't just get to there? choose when this happens. It's like, why are we making these arguments now? Probably because in, they're in response to the thing that you just said. Like, I don't. That's the situation. This is some that basic we're in. cause and effect. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this is just how things work. <laughs> things happen as a result of other things. <laughs> He's seen her exactly. What about this situation is making him have this moment now? So the way to fix it- So it would have happened it's, it's at any not... other point. He just- This is when it happened. What do you mean? It had to happen eventually, and it happened because all of these characters converged for all of these reasons onto this location, and he was there. Didn't want to do this. His daughter was threatened. And then time comes to put that pistol to Caitlyn's head. Can you pull the trigger? I can't. I'm too racist. <laughs> Too big trick. Oh, if only you weren't Asian! <laughs> so, I'm not 100% sure this one. Oh, I'm too racist. Because you'd be black like Echo. I'm, I'm too still racist. still reeling from this whole thing. The spirit of Hitler that is too strong in my in veins. I can't pull the trigger. I'm too racist. That needs to be on the page. <laughs> if only I wasn't an honorary Aryan. <laughs> I'll put that in there somehow. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, put, yeah, put that in after the he can't, he didn't shoot because he was too bigoted. He said, I can't pull the trigger, I'm too racist. <laughs> I oh, guess this gun was like, do you want me to, um, I can say the dialogue is too overt and then I can play the scene and I can have you voice over that. <laughs> Something like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm too racist. <laughs> I'm too racist. <laughs> <laughs> have this moment now. So the way to fix it, I'm not 100% sure on this one, but I think you tweak this scene of Grace and Dine to give us a parallel. What the tweak is, I, I don't really know, it doesn't really matter. Tweak it a little so that we know that this is- What? I don't even care what the tweak really is! Matter. It doesn't even matter! doesn't even matter. It just <laughs> exists. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, fuck it. It's fine. Just whatever. <laughs> you know, you do you. <laughs> He, to, he re that... to recap, all right, we what we should do is make it so that Grace's death parallels uh, Marcus's. How? Who gives a shit? I don't know. <laughs> really? He thinks that it. He thinks that a show is like an animal in the wild, and you what? can just let it go free, and it'll find its way. How is this not already a parallel? He doesn't want to cause what he caused again. It's the same, like, it's already a parallel, but he's like, no, it's not, you need to make it one. How? Uh. How? I don't know, who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What is that scene? Know. And I don't what? know what they have in mind for Caitlyn next season, but this is sort of Caitlyn's version of the Grayson dying scene, passing the baton. He tries to pass the baton to the right How? person, and maybe he fails. Maybe he could do a thing- Oh, he's talking about his fix. I his fix is he. I I need so much more material to work with here. We're gonna, we're gonna to try know again. If this is even cause... approaching. They don't know it. each other, so the thing that you would need to make a big change for would be them interacting throughout the show. How are you going to do that with the time that you have? Maybe this yeah. isn't a good fix. Maybe there would be oh. something more that you need to change that it might be worthwhile to consider an alternative route. Well, we have. That's pretty good. Why don't we go with that? Right, what are you, Rex, what are you, Rex, you made you a big O. Oh, I'm waiting for this. What, what are you writing here? Uh, no, I, I was like, it was in response to something, but I've already forgot what it was. <laughs> it's so yes. Look at this. Look at this Gadelb script. It's growing. Oh my god, we got a lot out of this one, boys. This has been horrendous advice. Like, what else can we say? Yeah. Just, <laughs> don't listen to this shit. Like, what is going to get you even worse position? He's like fixing Arcane to be worse, but he doesn't even know. I, I don't really know, it doesn't <laughs> really matter. Anyone who tries to fix doesn't Arcane really is gonna matter. fix it to be worse. There's, there's, like we said, there's a bit of, there's a bit of plot armor you could, you uh, could do there, there are so, okay, yeah. Anyone who tries to fix the characters in Arcane is probably gonna fix it to be worse. A little so that we know that this is that scene, and I don't know what they have in mind for Caitlyn next season, but this is sort of Caitlyn's version of the Grayson dying scene, passing the baton. He tries to pass the baton to the right person, and maybe he fails. Maybe he could do a thing where instead of the daughter line here, he tries to put his sheriff's star in Caitlyn's hand, but it drops and falls off the- No, 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 and it puts, it's a really weird thing for him to be like, emphasis. Caitlin, you should be sheriff. It's like, no, they don't know each other even close to well enough for him they to do that. He, just, yeah. he, just, he was just considering shooting her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, no, yeah, that doesn't work. Imagine how much Wait, of a weird day work. for that, that for her that would be. It's like, yeah, he went to shoot me, but he couldn't because he was too racist. And then he offered me the position I, of sheriff. I got a promotion. It was great. It doesn't even, like, you know if he, like, <laughs> crawled over to her as he, was, this guy. as he was bleeding out, he's crawling over and then he hands her the thing. I, I, I'd be like, ooh. I don't even, that doesn't even make sense. Like, if Caitlyn was like, oh, that's not how this works. You can't just hand me the badge. <laughs> I've got to be sworn in and stuff. Like, it, it's, Yeah, it's I'm not even, like, an enforcer, yeah. so I'm not in the organization, really. That's how uh, this works. Just... <laughs> it's so, what's, what's, it's so just great the way it is. You know, just stop. Just leave it alone, yeah. The bridge. Leave it I don't alone. know if that really would have so done good. it. I'm curious if you guys have any ideas. No. But again, the problem with... <laughs> yeah, it sucks. My yeah, here's, idea is what here's my writing show. advice. I'm curious if you have any ideas. My ideas are what the show did. Just stay there. Yeah. Little tweaks like this, Leave Logisco, she's aside, is any change in one area affects everything around it. This is supposed to be a big moment for Jinx. Taking the emphasis off her for Marcus, even for a moment, is making a sacrifice. It's great to get a scene to do multiple things. So they actually do that briefly. No, but... In, yeah, in the scene. yeah, because we get the Marcus thing and then the Jinx thing. They yep. they happen one after the other. They don't step on each other. Yeah, they this, are this very. Is, yeah. They're extremely close related. We are doing a weird thing here of like, look, this scene's about this person. We can't have this one. It's just like they they managed to pull it off the way that it currently exists. So I don't even know why. <sighs> things but he got away that with sacrificing focus so that's my take on marcus another character that's it those are the fixes make right. his daughter a, a fully realized character left and well i don't know what the rest of this will be i guess we'll find out but yeah the two fixes make his daughter a fully realized character make him uh, simultaneously making him a bad father to her and his death scene needs to have it so that he passes on the role of sheriff to caitlin Somebody he's barely spoken to. This is what I mean, like... Oh. So those three fixes. Number one, uh, the, the daughter's just like, that's not what the story's about. So it's, it's, if you want to have the daughter be a fully realized character, you go right ahead. Second one being the... um, Well, well, the, the, the sheriff one just doesn't make sense at all. But then this... this, this uh, The second one of making him a bad dad, I just... I don't even see the the real utility in doing that, storytelling wise. Like, you can make utility out of it, but I just don't I know think why it you're doing hurt. that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think it would hurt. Yeah, I think it would hurt. I mean, it, because we, if, yeah, it's if, good to have that angle on him, the, the idea that he's a good dad, despite some of the stuff we've seen. Yeah. And, and plus, if it shows that what he's doing, even if he doesn't like doing what he's doing, it works. It is, pro, it is yielding good results for his family, so he's going to keep doing it. So that's his take on Marcus. Uh, what are these last two minutes about? I'm glad I looked into more. Like Mel, I wasn't so moved by the character on first watch. Like Silco, I found him to be cliche. And with those characters... Silco's what? cliche. Oh what? no. Cliche. We, joked, we joked that that could be something someone could say. It's like, oh, he's just a crime lord. It's like, oh no. Though to be fair, he just, said, he just said that was his first impression. But I'm still surprised someone comes away with a first impression of Silco saying he's generic or cliche. Like, yeah, how could a writer have that as a first impression? Oh. Oh, oh, hang on. I'm just looking through his channel. There are some really fun thumbnails in here. Who did crazy like, better? Uh, He's gonna say Jinx, obviously. I hope so. I hope so. I really hope so. He's, he's even Jinx said in this video Harley that he Quinn. thinks, like, the writing in the whole show... He thinks the show is great. He just thinks that Marcus is bad, and it's been pain to see why. First, I made an effort to understand them better, and I realized I was totally wrong. They're great characters, there deep characters, and I realized I misunderstood and misjudged them. With Marcus, unfortunately, after looking into him more, I can't say the same. He's not a good character. He You'll get there eventually, guy. You'll be fine. Yeah, one day. Yeah. <laughs> you'll see your sins. The light. Hopefully you don't go to hell. Your sins. <laughs> You're just as undeveloped and uninteresting as I initially judged him to be. No, yeah, uh, no. It's so it's so wrong. It's so wrong. Wait, hang on. He's did he say he's watched the show multiple times? He has to have to be making all these videos. Yeah, right? because it's like first impressions and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. He's pressing at least X watched now. it twice. Pressing he X. He doesn't remember what happened in it. He's just as undeveloped and uninteresting as I initially judged him to be when Terrible. looked at in his own Maybe. right. But that's not the end of the discussion. That's what I learned. And honestly, I think this is as important of a skill to develop as a writer as making good characters. What to do Stop. with bad characters. You Please. shouldn't be talking about writing. <laughs> no, because you're not allowed anymore. Baby. Yeah. Stop what to do with unfixable words. elements of your story. What to do with unfixable, unfixable. elements. Unfixable. I feel like that's really bad advice that there are elements of your story that you cannot fix. 
Because first of all, I certainly wouldn't give people that advice. Yeah, how do you first know? First off, how do you identify which problems can be fixed and which can't be fixed unless you try to fix them? So, like, shouldn't the thing be always try to fix any problem that arises if you have the time? One of his things was, like, if you try and fix a thing and then it causes problems elsewhere, that might be why you stop trying to fix it at all. Just like, whoa. Like, uh, I feel like any fix that you make is going to have some effect, ripple effect on yeah, another that's... aspect of the story. Always that's just the trade-off. That's part of the that's part of the work. Is you need to if you need to make changes, you need to think about how they'll affect other parts of the story, identify them, um, and work on it. And no, just give up. <laughs> like, yeah, just give up. Don't even try. Really bad advice, and no way to really figure out how to identify these things anyway. So yeah. How to salvage the utility of your story's flaws and put them to use. And I'm going to be thinking about this a lot in my own writing. So your feelings on Marcus? Good? Bad? How would you fix them? What would you add? Leave a comment. Very interested to hear people's takes on I'm sure he reads them all. It's going to be great. I have to thank you, all of you. Well, 15% of you, but no, really all of you. This channel hit 10,000 subscribers last week, and it's overwhelming for okay. me. I don't know if you guys realize how sort of random this all was. I mean, I want to start a channel for a while now. I want to make a platform to promote things I write. But if you look back on my old content, it's me uploading videos for my family and friends about traveling. And I did some kind of unusual traveling. There's some weird stuff there. So I was on this trip, and I was trying out some new things with yeah, YouTube, just to experiment. And I was at an Airbnb that had free Netflix, and I was like, cool, I can watch Squid Game. And then when that was done, I was like, huh, what's the show Arcane? And then I uploaded my first Arcane video like a day after that episode aired, and a few days later it had 5,000 views, and I couldn't believe it, and I found that I really loved it. I really love sharing my ideas, I love talking with people in the comments, and I was like, I want to do this for This is so wholesome compared to our coverage of him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? It's, it's great. The, you talked about something you're passionate about. And it worked out. Uh, Aww, please do better, I guess. Revise your opinion on Marcus. I feel it has holes. From now on, and I am. And even if you haven't subscribed, that's fine. It's it's not that important. I, so yes, just because yes, yes, I yes. decided to look through, like it, you said, yeah, like 19 or so videos on Arcane. It's like, man, they are coming out so quick. Like I. Well, so the thing is, them... a lot of them are a minute long, though, which I think is um. Yeah, true, but I mean, like, I feel like even if you sit down to try and do an analysis and then you want to condense it into one minute, you're going to have to do a few... Re like, if anything, that requires even more revisions well, because you need to it, make sure that, like, every single thing that you're saying is super important and relevant. Drink. You know, I, I think it depends on the kind of, on the scope of the thing that you're analyzing, right? So if you're analyzing an entire character, then sure. Um, but if you're analyzing something like uh, the symbolism in one scene or whatever, then I think I yeah, would you actually probably side do that with Fringy on this one because of the fact that Ooh. if you're using so few words to translate a big yeah. idea, you need to be very exactly. careful about what those words are. Yeah. Because... You can afford to be superfluous when you're talking for an hour. You can't afford to do that when you only have a minute to work with. Yeah, if you go like... So to summarize, he's not compelling. It's like, oh, do you know what you just said? <laughs> do you know what that means? <laughs> like, You need to use a different word. It's not that important. What's meaningful to me is just that you watch. And a lot of my views are from returning viewers, which means you guys value my thoughts and analysis, and that's just so cool. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, we, we valued it. <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> got a lot out of it, I can tell you that. Yeah. I'll also put it. It means, it means the world to me. It's really validating. So thanks to everyone who watches. Thank oh, God, we were the opposite of validating. Sorry about that, but, I mean, <laughs> your ideas are bad. I don't know. I and it's uh, it's the experience that um, getting your videos covered like this. And it's experience. I know and the best thing you can do for it is learn from it. I mean, yeah, who knows? Because maybe he's around, or maybe he'll ignore, and that's totally fine either way. Thanks to that Airbnb host who had free Netflix. Thanks to the patrons that's been growing so much as well. Been loving the discussions I've been having with people on there too. And yeah, new videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Thanks so much. Well. See, that's I think that. that's, that's, that's a of, uh, lot to make in a short amount of that's time. That's a lot to make. I think to, I yeah, could make it, three short videos a week without compromising quality. I think I could. I, you know but what? To be fair, I my just, process I is scary and alien to you. I, uh, I, I think that there's an amount of time that you need. And... Well, okay, let me, let me make this clearer. I think I could make three short response videos a week without so, compromising quality. Here's something to think about, I guess. Um... Oftentimes, when you sit with an idea for a while, it starts to just develop over time. And, like, the more time that you afford yourself to work on something, the more those ideas can develop. Yeah, um, but that's that's why I say response videos, right? Because I find that with a, an analysis video, that is true. And I, you have to sit on the ideas for a long time, uh, in my experience. Whereas with a response video, I think it's much easier to just say, okay, here's that pro the problem with this. This is wrong. This reference is wrong. 
Um, and you can just get it right away. That's 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 why I find um, that's why I had I to guess. really slow down when my, my channel moved away from mainly response videos to mainly. Well, uh, sure, but I, I guess that's but but this channel is mainly analysis. I guess that's the reason why I was. Uh, I guess that's, that's true. I'm You're right there. Just give yourself a little bit more time. Um, I guess I would I would want to watch one of his one minute analysis videos first to see what kind of thing they're like because it's like. I think there are one minute. If like if, yeah, if I had to do a, I think I could do a one minute scene what? deconstruction every day. Like I think I could do that. Um, what I don't think I could do is a one minute like overview of a, a certain aspect of something. Right? I don't. I don't think that would be possible. I, so it but, just I mean, depends yeah, how tight like, the focus is. Even with a one minute scene analysis, I feel like depending on the importance of that. Like if I if I decided to do a one minute scene analysis of the Jinx Echo fight, it's like I there's a lot of references I need to think about. Um, there's a lot I need to think about to explain what I think works in that scene, and especially I since I think I need a lot more than a minute to really say what I mean. So if I'm I gonna agree, do it in a but minute, I, think, I would need to. I think especially if I always made content on the same show and I had all those references to hand, I would be able to do that in a day. Um. Like, you know, Doctor Who is the show that I know back to front the most clearly, right? I think if I was doing a scene analysis a day of Doctor Who, I could do that fucking easy. One minute so long, I, I could definitely I, make that. I am pretty confident in my references for The Simpsons, but if ever I wanted to talk about any episode, I would have to sit down and think about it. Even if I yeah. had the references on hand. But if, if you're talking about one scene from one episode, do you not think that a day, a, a full day would be long enough to actually do that? Um, not to a place that I would be happy with it, probably. I don't know. I, I think I need time to, I, like, I can't, I, I, I don't, I don't know that I could write something that I think would be really strong, that is a minute long in a, in a day, and then, and then make the video afterward, depending, I guess, on how much editing there is. It just feels like a pace that's a little too... Especially when, if you're doing that be, um... and you're making long videos as well, because we're making it sound like all three are shorts. If you're making like one full length analysis oh, yeah, in a true. week, plus you need to try and figure out, it just seems like a lot to do in a very short amount of time. Yeah, um, your script's going to be a mess. I'm just wondering, though, like, I wonder if a lot of the um, our perspectives on this come from the fundamentally different uh, processes that we oh, have. Oh, sure, we've sure. talked about I, a bit. I, I guess it's just that... Um, because now, now I'm thinking about it through the lens of he's just started, so this is pretty new, um, and like the swift pace, I think it res I think it leaves you with a situation where you write, oh, this should be a parallel. I don't think it matters. Where if you gave yourself a little more time, you might look at that and go, well, yeah. wait a minute, I should actually expand on that a bit to try and explain what I mean. Like yeah. let's let's spend more time digging into this. Having a friend to be like, wait, man, you just said. You just said this whole thing is important to fix the character, but that it doesn't really matter. And you'd be like, no, 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 no. I just mean the specific nitty gritty nature of exactly how the scene runs. You go, oh, well, that, that doesn't really come through very well. It almost sounds like you don't really care how it's done. And to be fair, aren't those the fix? Aren't the specific details the fix? Yeah, like when, when, you're, when you're writing a script for like a video, I think that it can become a bit tricky to identify um, the, the flaws in it that aren't stemming from just like grammar or particular sentences but more broadly i'm trying to make a point ideally i don't want any of my points to just be a dead end where we're moving we're moving we stop and then there is no further relevance at all like it doesn't even really tie into uh my broad point neatly ideally you want like all of those points building up and then you tie them all together at the end and i think that it's a lot easier to have just weird dead ends, redundant uh, qualifiers, or just these irrelevant, like, non sequiturs if you don't have the time to sit down and think about what exactly is it that you're trying to say. I, 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 I don't see the detriment in giving yourself more time. Um, that's all. Well, um, less content, that's... I mean, that's yeah, all. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, that's a balance we all strike, right, as well, as that we all strike the balance between... I balance it very poorly, to be fair. <laughs> but... Yeah, no, I know. I know it's a balancing act. I guess it's just... And also, he said he was making a comic as well, so it's like, damn. It's, just, it's like, you're not giving yourself a lot of time. I think, like, you know, if 
If everything he was saying was accurate, I would then just be like, your production could use a little wick, especially the commentary, but I mean... Yeah, but I mean, if he's new, like, yeah, I that, don't that's know what I'm how saying. much it, I, now, it that, probably... now that I find out he's only been doing it for a couple of months, it's like, well, you'll get there, you'll figure it out as you go. Well, yeah, and I, I would honestly try and appeal to him and be like, you know when you have words blending into each other and words that you have sentences that are starting up as other ones haven't even finished yet, it's like... Yeah. Just pace it out a bit you better. You need to slow you, down. As you may have gotten a false told... assumption that you need to be as fast as possible, especially if he's making the shorts. That's probably why he's doing that. I should be like, you really don't need to do that. Like, yeah. Wow. Dude, I did that. I did that in my early videos. I was like, sp speaking fast. That's what like, like good YouTubers do. I'll do that. I as think that somebody... was the entirety of my thought process. Well, I will say, as somebody who frequently... You know, I, I did pretty well in oral presentations. I will brag about that. The one note that I got all the time was that I spoke too fast. It took me a long time to realize, yeah, actually I do. Slow it down. Trust me, slow it down. Like, it's it's way better. You'll enunciate more clearly. Um, there'll be less goofs. People will have a better understanding of what you're saying. Slow down. Slow it down. It'll always help. Wow, not all, well, depends how, <laughs> you know, how slow depends we're going. Slow, you know. if, you, if you're talking like, yeah, each each word takes uh, three seconds to come out. Uh, Pronounce all the letters? Yes. Word. Pronounce all the letters. Try to like overcome the, the limitations. Well, just try to overcome the limitations of the accent as well. Well, no, because um, like um, you can play into enunciating the well, properly. Enunciating, you can, you can. So like, yeah, um, articulating properly doesn't mean um, and this is because like I feel like this is a common misconception a lot of people have where they're told to articulate their words properly, and so what they do is they get rid of like certain aspects of their accent. Well, that's not what um you need to do. It's like uh, okay, so let's say you're it can um, be. you're from a region of Britain. Well, I can't. Well, I don't. I'm not sure that I agree De with that. If you want wide appeal, so it just, definitely is true. Like, because if you knock Why out, do, okay, so, your your area of the world will understand what you're saying, but other areas won't. And if you, so hang on, can I can I can I do my example, and I want to see if you still agree with that, right? Okay. No. Okay. Um. So if you are from a place in the United Kingdom where you don't pronounce the letter T, and instead you say like Britain, Better. right? And you say, Better. Um, yeah, British. Yeah, British. There is still like you can pronounce that more clearly without putting the T in there. You can uh, go, like, yeah, yeah, a, sure. There's a difference between like British and right British, right? British, British, right? You can still enunciate very clearly and articulate um, without getting rid of those aspects of your accent. That's not a necessity. Yeah, so I think what we're talking about there is articulating British as opposed to articulating the word properly to a way that most people, more far more wider appeal to understand. Because the people who understand I British, is there any other people? British. Are there people who don't understand British? Like, are that is that? Going to be something that there is almost think. certainly someone in the world. I would say would guarantee. I guess. I guess. I guess. Like, um, like, what? There are going to be, be surprised when like, people hear you talking in that accent and they actually genuinely can't understand you. Well, if you're not very all... clearly and you can hear because accents, like you learn them pretty quickly, right? You you learn the patterns that someone's speaking with. Well, and it maybe depends. you don't understand you never... them the first time you hear them make that sound. But like you hear them do it a couple of times, and you're like, oh, okay, that's how you say that sound. Um, maybe, but I mean, if you're only exposed to like American voices for a long time, it might take you a while to fully wrap your head around a different accent. I think that uh, if ever your accent is getting in the way of your ability to communicate to I a guess... broad amount of people, then it's probably worth trying to find a way to dial it in a bit. Yeah, I guess I am coming at this from a perspective of I was exposed to a lot of different accents growing up, like, in person. So yeah, maybe... Like, there are a lot of... I mean, there are people who think that I'm British. That's true, but they can still understand what you're saying. That's where you really are. And then there are people... I remember I've had a couple of people say that they thought I was American. I don't know where the hell that came from. <laughs> I feel like there's nothing there on that front. I can see the British, but I can't see the American. I can see, I can the, see the American, but I can't bit. see the British. That's the thing, right? I it... really, 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 well, I can, really. really. I can, well, I guess I can see it more than more so than the, I can just see it more so than the British. Right? I can. I just well, so I. I don't know. Maybe this is contentious because I remember I brought up the idea once and I got pushed. I got pushed back on it. I can't remember if it was more or if it was someone else, but the Australian accent is much closer to like. British English, or you know, like the the way that uh, certain British accents than it is to American. At least I yeah, think. You yeah, you want to say, yeah, like say uh, T's in the way that Americans do, though. Um, you say like 
British. British. Start... I thought Australian was born from like Britain. Like you come over and then it you're was. Actually it was. It, well, it, it is, but well, I guess Americans born from Britain say, too. I've heard people yep. say that that uh that they think that the Australian accent is closer to American English than uh than British. Which I again I feel like that's just not true. We we spell the same way as British English, and so, of course okay, you like. You do a have, lot of like, that for me, the defining color. trait, the defining trait of the American accent, at least the one that I listen to, the hard, is the is the really uh, strong. Oh, I love a, I love a hard R. Yeah, uh, it's not yeah. the R. Yeah. I knew like, that you, you do, do that, you do the so British R's. R's. You do the British R's. You you say your R's like a British person. Yeah, well, I'm well, saying like an Australian the, the, person, the, but you know what I mean, right? But they're so sort of closer to the to strong aspects of the American uh, American is really strong R's. Uh, instead of saying like we say can't, Americans say like can't. You know, I I can't yeah. do that. You know, like you always and or is it kind of like A's as well? Like it's a project instead of a project. But for me, um, um, the what do we call it? The um, like one of the first things that I identify an American by is the way they say their T. And you do yeah, that but in a lot American of British way. people say t that don't say T either. So I feel well, it's like not, there's it's not, not saying that, right? T. It's pronouncing it as a it's pronouncing as a it closer t? to a D. I'm pretty sure um, that there are British Mola, say a word that has the letter T in it. British T. Oh uh, no, something else. Um. <laughs> and it's it's the word it's the the letter T in the middle of a word. If it's the start of a yeah, word, yeah, that's Americans of course, that. yeah, of course. Uh -oh. Um, Rita attack. Yeah, whereas I would say a fritter. Yeah, and that is that is the American pronunciation of that sound. Well, it's also you know the Australian one, but you know what Rags, I mean. They water. Sometimes we enunciate T's in the middle. It depends on the <laughs> oh, word. Yeah. I guess the clear one is we say water. Oh, that's a great usually. one. People say here say water. Well, we say water. Whereas, yeah, we say water. Yeah, we say water. water. Well, I say water generally. Water. Um, I think and, it's just yeah, British, well. The worst version water. is water, which is what I used to say. I'm trying. Water, I've, I've yeah. since moved on to water, which no, is I, the. I know, I know. Yeah. But water. I don't know why I find myself. Water is confusing as hell. Say, like I can I totally picture like people not from, from Britain yeah, to be like, "What wet? the fuck is a is water?" Not wet? You saying I snicker more? at the people who say water. W. -E oh, I had a teacher. In, I had a teacher in school who calls it water. She just say water. Yes, water. Y'all want some water? W u d d r water. I but, guess um, um, I think a matter of like a lot of this is just to do with matter. you notice the differences between you, you notice the differences from what you hear um, well, yeah, rather than most often rather than the similarities yeah yeah, yeah and to clarify so it would be I'm very saying... strange for me to hear your accent and to say and to think that you sound um like an English person with some differences like, that's just not how like I think perception that kind of thing really works. My point was never the less accent, the more enunciation. It's just that there's a correlation between them where sometimes your accent, especially if you're in like deeper parts of whatever country you're in, like language league, really culturally, gets in the way. Yeah, yeah, there could be words where people be like, what the fuck are you even saying? And you're like, oh, right, yeah, because, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a benefit to trying to taper it down a little bit, uh, unless you're really leaning into it. Um, yeah, which but you I can guess do. it's just. You can, but I guess if the goal is to communicate clearly to the most amount of people, you're probably better served trying to uh, more Who strongly enunciate the words. But I mean, However, yeah. Scottish, it, it, I will say, it. though, Scottish people don't change a thing. You're hilarious. I love you guys. Well, I'm pretty sure Dankula said that he will dial down a Scottish accent when he's recording videos. That if he was really? speaking normally, he'd be harder to under. Yeah, and I can believe that wholeheartedly. Meanwhile, I, I mean, think I'm pretty Drinker, sure I dial down my accent too. Drinker, I think, plays it up when he's doing his. Uh, he's obviously playing yeah. up being a bit drunk as well. But, yeah, he does. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think he, maybe that's what makes him sound more Scottish, you Mola. Maybe you're a accent racist. Is, accent is oh, part no, of I won't the be able to shoot people. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm not. A, I wouldn't espouse that you try to like completely change your accent no. to present YouTube videos or be racist. Um, the well, it wouldn't. No language. It, that's a topic. Language. You can't be racist towards a language or an accent. You can. No, you have can't. racist intent. No, well, no. Let me finish oh. my sentence. You. <laughs> right. you okay. Can, you can use like you can try to use it in that way. Ah, uh, you can, but it is it is not fundamentally racial. No, it's because not. anybody of any race can speak any language and have any accent. You know, like you know, you see like a fucking Asian person, and you like 
make you go you, like you do the like the ching chong thing and you pull oh, your eyes like you're making fun of the well, language there yeah i mean if you do the with, eyes of like, course that's, that's racist well, yeah right <laughs> like, of course that's racist but like <laughs> the, the whole point i'm making there is that you're 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 making fun of the language because you're trying to be racist. Well, like that's uh, goal. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. It's just the idea that uh, on its own, it, it can't be because it's a, 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 at its core. Anybody can speak any language and have any accent. Yeah, I know we've had this discussion before. We probably had many of the discussions we have on here before. We stream for a while. Ideas. Topics go around, yeah. Idiots. Let's talk about the most effective ways to be racist. Let's do it. Let's start with Marcus. <laughs> what, sorry? Because he's the opposite. Oh, no wait, he's no, he's a great example. Of yeah. teacher, he's Mark the most Marcus effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people is pretty effective, right? So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He he controlled his gun, so therefore gun control is racist. Um, yeah, I I suppose it's time yeah. for me to. I, I said I'd probably say what video I've made at this point. Oh, so, oh um, boy! But I'll do it in the form of interpretive dance. Not not. It's kind of like that. It's in a video. Um, I chopped out a piece of the video, and then I put okay. the thing on it, oh. just so... It's only so a short one. Watching. Okay. Um... How exciting. Yeah, alright. Alright, chat, here we go. You bastards. And... You wanna watch together? Yeah. The oh, studios and everything said, well, wow, we can make a lot of money. This is a license to kill. And they did it. They just simply, and of course, the only way you can really do that is not take chances. Only do something that's proven. Let's not do any, so you've got to remember, Star Wars came from nowhere. There was nothing like it. Now, if you do anything that's not a sequel, or not a TV series, or not, or it doesn't look like one, they won't do it. That's the downside of Star Wars, and it really shows an enormous lack of imagination and fear of creativity on the part of an industry. Da, 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 ba, da, da, oh shit! There you go. Okay. God dang. <laughs> a lot of people. I've seen some people say it's definitely not TFA Part Four, and I was just like, why? Why would? Well, I wonder what you? they thought it was. Find those people now. Whoa, Embarrass remember, them. There Embarrass are, there are a few. them. There are a few things that I think people would be latching onto as potential. But, uh, yeah, there's, there are lots yeah. of different things it could be, but I don't see why you'd block out. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I saying it's possible. People who just, just believe just when part never five, finish the it's series. already begun. <laughs> when part five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be Friday. Uh, I'm not sure what time. We'll figure it out, but. Um... Uh, with that, I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna jump right into the uh, the old super shorms now. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, let's see. Should I start with our arcane backlog or today's ones? Probably today's ones, right? We should probably well, do today's. Today, yeah. 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 Start today. What okay. do you think, Jay? What's your opinion on yeah, this? Yeah, Jake, come on. Or is the has the come addled your mind? <laughs> Both, but I think we should do today's. Ah, oh, okay. Very well. Here we go. Uh, hi, Rags. Hello to you. Hello, others, I guess. Not as cool as Raggleton, though. Oh, well. Ooh, it's true. Hello, I guess. Which means, yeah, I Rags, guess. you are a more interesting character. You know, this is how I've done so many very cool things, and mm -hmm. I am not a single father. Um, are you dying? Guess, uh, I guess didn't that's deny a guess. it, so, yeah. <laughs> what is this? I'm a one? collective mirage. This, this is they've sent. You're a this. collective mirage. Yeah, you're all experiencing the same mirage, and it's me, and it's also it has an audio component. That's pretty cool. It is very cool. Um, new st st games fake and gay. What what is this? What does that mean? Hmm? New st games fake and gay. News, thank you, games. Fake and gay. <laughs> All right. New soul style. New soul. Tet. Hmm. All you have to do is send it in a way that we could read. Yeah, that's that's the the big that's... clue as to how to make this system work real well. You know. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. 
Um, all right. Uh, do you believe in the ghost of Kiev? Uh, heard the story? Or um, don't, no, I don't know. I don't I've know. heard the story. I don't know if it's true. What is that story? It's, um, there's a there's a story that a a fighter pi a Ukrainian fighter pilot is uh, shooting down a lot of Russian aircraft, which is extremely impressive. But I don't know if it's true or not. Ah. Uh. Lord no, Longbomb could be. of Mewishington. Yeah, like I said, I don't know. Uh, of Mewishington Abbey. We're, not, we're probably not the people to ask about the Russia-Ukraine <laughs> conflict for the most insightful answers, to be honest. We're talking about Arcane, not Ukraine. Come on. Nice. Have you given Arcane? any more thought to a Kong fab Arcane. of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? It'll be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. Ohio Ragson squitches for the good boy. Oh, hello. Thank you. I'm not opposed Ohio. to a Long Kong. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's on the cards. And I don't know what this person's going to do when we release a Long Kong fap, you know? Well, I guess the next thing would be Kong Skull Island, right? Oh, maybe they'll, yeah, they'll go with that. That's got Brie Larson in it. Ooh. It's, got, uh, it's got Loki Brilliant. in it too, Tom Hiddleston. It's got Samuel L. Jackson in it as well. It's got, uh, John Goodman. It's got Sully too, yeah. Um, I really didn't buy into Marcus's entire conflict. They should have had him yell, Why am I so bad at being good? <laughs> um, I mean, that is some pretty good writing right there. That, yeah. uh, <laughs> that would have really cemented him as a character. I think it would have been clear at that point what we were dealing with as a character, yeah. Have any of y'all seen Peaky Blinders? I feel it's a good TV. Or it's good TV, rather. Uh, but I'd love to hear y'all's opinion on it. Season 6 is releasing soon. I've not seen it. I've heard it's good, but that's I all. I saw that season I one ages ago, but don't remember much about it. Um, I've been meaning to pick it back up. Dropped it. Oh, did I interrupt you there, Rex? I mean to. No, no, no. I was. That was it. You you were able to nestle comfortably in between my two thoughts. Hmm, that's that's nice. a, that seems like a cozy place to nestle. Mm -hmm. It is, but it is it is a tiny place. Ah, uh, so the, the the comfiest places to nestle are the places where you just fit. Badly written, who dares? Well, so, yeah, we, we got to find out. They did. Um, Batman EFAP next weekend? Uh, very, 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 very likely, yes. When's that out again? The, well, it's different for everyone, right? Uh, it's come, I, I'm going to one on Wednesday. Mine is Friday morning. Oh, uh, I think I'll be the first of everyone here. Yeah. So you gonna go see a J? Hmm? Yeah, it's the fourth yeah. for me. When are you seeing a J? Hmm? I haven't got tickets yet. I haven't decided. You probably get onto that soon. Yeah, idiot. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I've been on Definitely. south for like well over a week at this point. Um, boop, boop. Where's Duma? I'm sad and mad that he's not here. Anyway, play DDLC, Dumbos. Uh, the Holy Fab crew were, was invited to this one as well. Uh, sorry, not Holy Fab crew, Arcane crew. Uh, we got like a group chat for them. Though this will be the last outing until, I guess, mm -hmm. season two. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, hmm. Springy, please say it's Bully McF... Okay, I'll... Uh, uh, Just post it, yeah. Yeah. It's Bully McFring. See ya, chump. Electricity, my enemy. Spider-Man, he hates me. I hope that's in a <laughs> meme at some point, I guess. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, maybe I should have split them up, but there's no full stop. Oh, there's one full stop. Um, Cover Star Wars Explains video, Boba Fett arc. I think I've got that in my selection of videos I was supposed to check out, because a couple of people have said it's incredible. Um... Ooh, so yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, because this is the thing. We've had a lot of Boba Fett, you know. Yeah, we have watched a lot of Boba Fett, and I'm ready for that to be just uh, the doors closed on that chapter. Ba 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 ba. Fett. See this vid? Grace Randolph's arcane character ranking is worse than this by far. Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh, that, that could be so fun though, because she's so weird and she talks about John Cena's <laughs> penis. Oh, she, Ooh, she was very entertaining. 
Grace Randolph Arcane. I'm curious what her rankings look like, just so we can have a little taste of how terrifying. But like, there's no terrible characters that she could put at the top. That's no, no, like that's encouraging. Like, how bad can it be? Oh, her it's ranking... not like she could put like Boba Fett up, up at the top. Hmm? Does she do them like one at a time and give them? Because I can't even see what her rankings are just from visually. I guess she's not doing it. Oh, I see what she's doing. So number one is Jinx, two is Vi, three is Victor, four is Silco. These, this is pretty normal. Yeah. Unless it's the reasoning that's really floompy. It might be the re. I mean, like I feel like the, women I, I, is that need a single, to be on the top of lists more. Like, is there a single like list order that she could give where we'd be like, that's completely like, nah, that's crazy, wait. Like, yeah, I think if, if you put, put like, like Silco and Jinx at the bottom, I'd be like, oh, okay. Tell I me guess. why. But even though it's like, yeah, all the characters that are above them are great characters, though, so. Yeah, I guess it's her reasoning that's going to be the big, big, big fruit. Um, all right, boop, boop. Sorry I can't catch all of this live, my biggers. I'll see you in the archive. You bet. I will see you there see in the there. archive. See you there. The in animal square. of the day is the Bombardier Beetle. Thanks for the great content and high rags. Hello. I'm looking up the Bombardier Beetle. I'm pretty sure we, we, they asked us to look just, at this one before. I feel like we've uh, seen that before. I know a this guy. guy. Yeah, because the fun fact is I had to do a bunch of voice lines for this for the video game. I remember the Bombardier Beetle. Terrifying. He fought some people and they die. Yes. Oh, it can no. melt your fucking skin off. Which is bad. Yeah, by the way. yeah, yeah. Marcus is my second sure. favorite character in the show behind Victor. When it showed that he was contemplating pulling the pin on himself and Silco, I really felt for the guy and his struggles. No, no, no. He's, he's not compelling. Nobody's that is unlikely. so interesting, haven't no. you heard? Like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's it's a it's a scene because it's like even though I'm pretty sure none of us have been in that situation, right? I'm I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that with confidence. I'm guessing none of us have been in that situation. I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. everyone has been in the situation of thinking about doing something in that way of like, oh, if only I could just say this or do this, and, but it, but knowing that it's too drastic for them and just not doing it, I feel like that's an incredibly relatable, probably to most people, an incredibly relatable experience. No, he's unlikable and unrelatable. <laughs> the animal of the day is Rags the Doggo. Hi, Rags. <gasps> oh my goodness gracious, it's me. I'm one, not going to Google myself. One I nice. know all the things. Thank you very much. Initially, I liked Marcus, but thought he was underutilized. You guys helped me gain a new appreciation of him. I feel like my uh, perception of him went up after our big three streams on Arcane, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Lots to remember and connect. Magic is real, but not like these stories. Check out the Ewan Method. Science calls it natural intelligence, but does not really understand it. This is because it cannot be understood. It must be experienced. Okay. Um, okay. whatever you say, buddy. Ewan Method? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, okay, all right. It almost comes across as you're not even human when you said all that. <laughs> just, just, yeah. what, what, what do they call it? Yuen, like the name. Y U E N. Yuen. Y U E N. Yuen. Method. Oh, Yuen. Right, what is this? I'm going to find out what this is and I'll, I'll be back to you. Okay. All right. Hello, Pepple. Hello. Oh, hello. Wanted hello. to know how Arcane ranks to other animated shows and movies, both objectively and subjectively. For me, it's up there with Incredibles and others. Also, oh wait, so that's the second question. Uh, so first question, yeah, how does it rank for you versus other animated things that are also good? Pretty high. It's just not fair saying. Really like, highly. When it, um, when it comes to like shows and movies, it's like, oh man, why'd you have to lump them both together? That makes this so much harder. I mean, yeah, it's tough to say, but yeah, like I'm not going to tell high. you whether or not it ranks above or below any particular thing, but I just like it's a very high rank. It's up there. It's with them. It's chilling yes. out there. It's having a drink with Wally. <laughs> and uh, and Incredibles, hell yeah. 
Um, that's probably the best I can do without... Yeah, figuring out how to definitively rank TV shows against movies is very tough. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good lad. Uh, also, what is your favorite shot from the show? Hmm. Um, favorite shot from the show? It's a tough one. It is a tough one. There's, there's so many that are good. That's the thing. Yeah, they, they really carefully considered all the shots and angles on the show. Um, favorite shot from the show? Uh, what, maybe the opener from the very first episode near the beginning when they first climb up onto the roofs and you see, you it's know, a pretty cool one, yeah. kind of over everything. Yeah, it's neat, good establishing sort of this is the world we're in kind of stuff. Yeah, you could pretty much um, make a poster out of that shot. It's pretty good. Well, that's the thing, I guess. There's, a, there's like, would you choose a favorite shot for what it represents and means, or a favorite shot for just the scope and scale? Um, because there's a couple that come to mind that you know, like the coin falling into the blood and stuff. It's like, I like that one quite the a bit. The big old moon. Yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. That, uh, that, you know how when Vi looks over and, uh, Silco is seen with powder, uh, near the flaming bridge. Yeah. And she's about to come running after him. It's like that, uh, that little shot kind of gave me chills. Like, oh no, bigger trouble. And so it's like, it, it was, it was impactful. And the shot was just really fucking good too. You know, it's like, it was kind of interesting how it was the focus wasn't even in the center of the screen. It was off to like the bottom left, but it still like conveyed a powerful impact to it. So that was a pretty good shot that kind of comes to mind there. I'm, I'm sure there's more. It's just that that's something that kind of sprung to mind. I, I really like how the, uh, the rocket smashes the glass and it like yeah. reflects the face. I was everywhere. just thinking that. Yeah. So there's a couple. Um, hey all. Hello. Hi. Molly, you want to take a look at this ARG stuff Metal brought up recently, if you haven't. Look up Backrooms Found Footage as a new example. I think I've seen that. Um, I've seen the Backroom stuff. What was he saying was... Uh, ARG, I think, what, is what? the medium slash format. It's just like internet found footage things that are all spooky. Um... As for what Metal has brought up recently, like, I, I yeah, I mean, I'll, I can chat with him about that. Uh, found an interesting burb, the long wattled umbrella bird. The okay. long wattled umbrella bird? This is how it's spelt. Okay. I got it. It's an, uh, oh, wow, that is a, that is a long wattle. Yeah. Man, look at look how big you can get. Holy shit. Wow. It's really big. Look at it look at him go. Man. He's, got a, he's got a BBW. BBW. <laughs> Do you like his hair as well? <laughs> yeah, it's got that, that Fonz kind of thing going. Yeah, it's like is he overcompensated? It's like no, it's just it's the style he likes, okay. Ah. Uh I recommend this guy's video about whether or not Vi changed over the years. Very insightful. This Marcus video is pretty bad, though. Like I said, I um, from what I I was surprised to find out it was the same guy that I thought I saw some interesting and good videos from, but that video was horrendously bad. Um, can't always hit, you know. Can't always hit. No, you're not. I made you some memes. See Twitter. I see. Um, I'll have to collect them. I'll have to just move through my notifications about Hassan being a poo. <laughs> uh, He's a poo. I saw that. That was very funny. Uh, ah, I believe this one, and it relates to, oh my goodness, more hot goo. Not what we need in our lives, but all right. Oh man, there's some interesting stuff going on here. It's like behind the scenes in Fringy's lab, you know. Wait, what's that? Uh, sorry. Uh, I just got someone some, said his name. Got some experimentation. Yeah, it's just someone going was on. talking about my lab. 
Uh... <laughs> Hello. 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 Just in time, Jay, for your favorite part of the show. The... Oh boy. <laughs> Except it's I... you and it's my goo. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> so dramatic. I returned, by the way, with knowledge of the Yoon method. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm surprised you were this so invested I... in it, but all right. <laughs> well, I don't like um bullshit science. Uh, so I was like, that sounds like bullshit science. And I looked it up. And let me describe to you the philosophy of the Yoon method, gentlemen. Oh, no. Okay. The yeah, Yoon method, um, devised by a... Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't take notes on all of his qualifications. We had a lot of them. He was a... First, he was like a monk. Then he was a um, TV, like, choreographer or, or something along those lines. He had scenes where he did martial arts and television. Then okay. he was um, an, a physicist and engineer, uh, and now he's gone, and then he went into, he became a chiropractor. So, you know, he's got a wow, bizarre that's quite fucking a, qualifications. That's quite, a, yeah. quite a life, yeah. Um, so the Yoon method, devised by him, looks at, our looks at our body as if it were a computer. All parts are either ones or zeros, which represents strong strength or weakness. A part of your body is either, either strong or weak. Uh. The spine is viewed as the hard drive, and it remembers everything that happens to you. Um, Thoughts, emotions, why would it be the, the genetics of your, your ancestors. Um, That's a good question, Fringy. Instead of your brain. Because he's a chiropractor and he wants to play up his importance. Nah, I'm just <laughs> fucking around. Um, the, the method itself is to find programs that are no longer working, that may have slowed down over time, and deprogram them and reprogramming them, right? To which the person talking is asked, what, are you were talking about your spine, it works on that? To which she answers, yes. And the method itself to reprogram and deprogram and reprogram these old programs is to think about them really hard using your mind, like you're running your mind up and down them like a zipper. Okay. What? A zipper? Okay. That's the Yoon method. I mean, that all so makes sense to this, me. When was this invented? When was this all made up? Oh, I, I, I th I'm not sure. Sometime, I think 40 years ago, I want to say, was the okay. figure I remember. It was definitely mentioned in the video, but I, I, I'm struggling to, re to remember what it is. Oh, I lost my voice for a second there. Um, this, Glad yeah, you found it. Um, unless this is a very poor explanation of what it is, you know, so poor that it describes just something else instead, um, pretty sure this is dog shit. It, do it does sound like that. Yeah. Like anyone who's believing in this stuff, you've been you've been spun a placebo. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, sounds like another Scientology, to be honest with you. Is yeah, the, is the Take imagery real on medicine, screen? Guys. Those images of the the hut cream is does that relate in some way? Is this the, the no? It method? doesn't. No, no. This is much more of a important. And... No, the hut cream has real. No, scientific this is scientific. Validity. Yeah, exactly. We uh, we we care about the scientific method at Fringy's Goo Labs. We don't, we don't just be like, yeah, you want to, well, you just really want to focus on your mind. And, you know, science can't explain everything, you know? No, the, the, no, that's, yeah, see, so science. It can, that's science the point. Science is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. yes. Actually, science seems to be able to, yeah. Uh... No, there, there is no fring method. My method is just the scientific method. That's good enough. Uh, too busy playing Elden Ring. We'll watch this later. That's that's fair enough, you know. All right, that's fair, fair enough. enough. I'm not gonna. I'm not judging you. Why can't you do both, you fucking weirdo? You fuck. You know what? That's true. Fucking so true. Uh, got Netflix just so I can rewatch Arcane with the Swedish dub. Interesting to see how it compares, since Swedish dubs are often kind of bad these days. Yeah, Mel was saying like he gets frustrated now when he ever has to. Get a German dub. I don't cry, Jinx. You're perfect the way you are. <laughs> Mainly because of the losses from the the original dub, and it's just like, yeah, uh, it's got to be a frustration. It is for us when, well, I wouldn't know because I don't watch Wumbo dubs of of like Korean content and stuff now, ever. No should anybody. No, watch the, <laughs> no should anybody. the only reason to watch dubs is if you have like. Um, actual problems reading subtitles, like um, if you like have severe dyslexia or something, you can't read subtitles fast enough. 
Sure. What an undoing to have a daughter. At that point, you should just learn <laughs> Korean. Come on. Lazy. Learn to read. Learn to learn. Dyslexics. You guys like shows dealing with the law and courtroom dramas like SVU, etc.? Matt Murdock in Daredevil also counts. I uh, kind of like them, but not so much that I really like go out of my way to watch. Well, I like anything. Like, it just, you know, like yeah. if it was like, yeah. you guys like shows about carpentry? It's like, well, I mean, it's, what are the characters like? It depends. <laughs> it could be really cool. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Was, I guess, are there any genres for you guys that you're like, oh, it's that genre? Science. Like, I, I really um, like that genre. I'll check I it really, out. I really like science fiction, but like that alone isn't enough to get me to watch something. Um, yeah. I, I'm really into murder mystery and stuff like that, so when it comes to, like, court stuff, yeah, I, I usually dig court stuff, as long as there can be good in-betweens. I don't, like, sit down and watch Judge Judy or nothing, but, you know. If I was to choose any thing, I would eventually explain, it's because I'm, I'm searching for the highs of that genre, and then I'd be like, well, I guess this applies to all genres then. So, yeah, really, I'm not, I don't think I'm searching for anything particular other than I just want some good stories. Good material, yeah. It's like, I mean, for me, I'll tell you, like, as well, I think I mentioned on before the podcast that, like, I do have a a real thing for for sci-fi archaeology stuff, where it's uncovering old things from alien civilizations. I will just check something out because it's that. But I don't know why, yeah. really. I don't know why. So, have you played Halo? No, but that's so high mm. on my list. I mean, sounds like you're not that desperate um, to... How high could it be on your list? Halo's been out Lord of the Rings. Ages. Yeah. Basically, you never like, played any of the Halos. I have these very strong intent. Well, I've played for each. That doesn't really count. Um, well, it certainly I've, doesn't I've had, have I've any had, of the alien archaeology elements. No, I know Reach, exactly. Yeah. Uh, basically, um, as soon as I discovered, I played Reach first, and then I discovered that um, pretty late on, actually, discovered that that was a large element of other Halo games. And ever mm -hmm. since, I've wanted to play them. And I have MCC, and I'm gonna. At some point, just install it and go through all of them. But the thing is, they're yeah. games, so they are long time commitments, I imagine. Um, I mean, each I mean, individual campaign is probably going to take you like 10 hours. And they, but they oh, do have co op, so you can play them with people. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it's at the top of your list to play, much like Soma is on Fringy's list. Yeah, so, um, also so, so high thing. on my list that I started playing Disco Elysium the other day. <laughs> Rags, <laughs> shame him. That is oh, Fringy. Shame. What are we going to do? I'll play Fringy, Soma. I'm going to play Soma you. before you. You might. <laughs> I should you, honestly... You I, <laughs> I'll pay whoever completes Soma first $100 out of you two. <laughs> well, technically, you owe me $100, Mauler. Or... I do? Oh, you're airing you this actually... out publicly. No, you do. Well, that's the thing. Um, I well, <laughs> I just wanted to make the joke. You said uh, it was um, a while ago. Uh, you said that. Oh, I'll send you the super chat money that people sent directly to you if you want to just send me a PayPal. And I said sure, and then I never did. That's where that comes from. Oh yeah, I'll do that um, whenever you want. And then I never did. I think it would be funnier if you paying me that money is conditional on me completing Soma. Well, it would be 200 then, but only if you beat Fringy. Which is very possible. But, um, yeah, I, I don't want them to race through it, that's the thing. That's, yeah, that's, no, that's the only thing holding it. me back from actually doing that, you know? I'm the like, thing oof. holding me back from playing Sure, what games do you want me to is, play? Uh, Fucking hell. Uh, the thing holding me back from uh, playing Soma <laughs> is the fact that um, <laughs> I, I want to stream it and my internet currently isn't good enough, but I think I've got a fix for that. See, I'm be. the opposite. I don't want to stream it. I just want to play it. Um, I think I think it just is... Like, for instance, I played Mario Kart this morning for probably longer than it would take me to beat Soma, but it's a lot easier for me to start Mario Kart than it is Soma because it feels like Soma is more of a commitment, even though it's incredible. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I mean, it feel, it's just... It feels more... Like... Even though it's well, like I'm, I'm a kind of mental right? effort, like, um, right? It feels like no, more know, mental effort to start something new that you have to pay attention oh, to. Oh, no, I mean, it, it, it's not necessarily that it's new. It's that I know that, like, Mario Kart is a very non-committal game because I can just jump you do in have, like, a little bit. Like, is it, is, it, is it not a relatable thing to other people, that aversion to, like, starting something new rather than something you're familiar with and comfy? Oh, yes, I, because I of the time it. commitment that it could pose, and I, I have a very little of that lately, well, also, so, yeah. I think... People are generally more comfortable with the familiar than the new. There's that too. 
Yeah, I mean, it doesn't not make sense. It's just um, you'd hope yeah. that the angle of wanting to play it will compel you enough. Yeah. Um. All right. The single frame that says Marcus is a single dad just reminds me of that EFAP video meme titled Where Are They Now? Star Wars with the Ewok music playing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even remember that. <laughs> Where are they now? Like, like, the, enthusiastic laugh. Like, is it like da, the end da, of that da, film da, that stops da, like da. after that guy gets like shot with a flare and then it's just credits roll? It's like he turned himself into the authorities and then just like the credits. Is that the God I butchered that. It's you guys okay. know the thing I'm talking about though, right? Yes, I do. Well, You're talking about blood debts. The best That's ending to any movie ever. Yeah. yeah. All I was thinking when you said that was, I have to leave now, my planet needs me. <laughs> and Pucci. Another great ending. Just... Yeah. It's like, yeah, Blood Death's ending with just like Marcus's story. He gets shot and it's like, Marcus became, <laughs> Marcus survived and became a single dad. What was that Stephen King movie where the murderers are a bunch of like trucks that came to life? Oh, um... oh, you're talking about, um, I the yeah, Transformers I'm... horror movie. You, oh, you know what is technology that? that comes to life and kills people, right? I think it's so. Like, um, what is it like? But the, but they're uh, being pinned into an eatery by a whole bunch of semi trucks who like wanted gas or something. I'm gonna eat yeah, I know of the movie. I think that's that it. That might have that might have been what it was because I remember that one ending with like all of a sudden everything was solved and then like in the like a text blurb it said like oh. The, the cause was a satellite, but it got blown up by another satellite that had nukes and lasers and shit, so hooray. We did it, everyone. <laughs> oh, so they just ran out of time. I get it. Rags, do you care for Marcus's I think that, daughter? I think that movie would... Say what? No, well, just a few things about that. There's a new thing. I thought that was a, supposed to be a parody movie, Maximum Overdrive. I thought that was Stephen King parodying himself. At least that's what I understand to be the case, right? Don't know. Yeah, I have no idea if it's supposed to be a parody. I just know that it's a goofy movie. Oh, imagine, imagine like you you try a serious effort and someone goes, "So you're parodying yourself with this movie, right?" And you're like, "Oh, oh no." Oh. Yeah. Like, it... You're like, yes, and then yes. the producer is like, "No, you would." And you're like, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> I <laughs> definitely Shut was. Up. I'm a genius. Uh, Rags, you care for Marcus's daughter now that she's an orphan? No, of course not. The opposite. Sort of sort out. Who owns now that she's blood? an orphan, I care for her less. Yeah, that's how it works. Uh, you fuck. As a family equals automatic deep meaning dismissal. Um. So, this is the thing. You don't want to go too far in the other direction, right? If someone says, yeah, okay, he has a daughter, I guess there's an automatic amount of care comes with that. Um, but we don't get to know why specifically. I should be like, yeah, but the story never required anything more than he has a daughter he cares about. Because she's used as leverage. She's not a full character. A lot of people have uh, blood ties. It's a thing. It'll be fine. It's normal. It's okay. A lot of people have blood debts. Nice. <laughs> ba 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Generic dadness oh. with a crying face. Like, yeah, I know. No. <laughs> hey, Efab, you should watch Bake Monogatari. I will tell you this, everyone. No. Theo is on. That is all. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I yeah. knew everything I needed to know <laughs> in that title. <laughs> and I'm afraid Theo's not even in the call anymore. So that's. Oh, yeah, sorry. I should have mentioned that Theo's connection went wombo. So there's, there's no way he can stay, I'm afraid. Wombo. Nothing interesting or deep here, just gener generic efapness. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of generic efapness on efap's cream. Why is he so mean? Why does he only hate? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's it part two, I think. That was it. Yeah, I think it was it part two, yeah. The original or the film? The original. The original, yeah. The TV movies, I think, the, yeah. Um, I think this guy got triggered by how much of a jersey Marcus was at first and missed when he became a man trapped by his past bigotry and mistakes. Yeah, Maybe, the, yeah. The video Maybe. was strange in terms of trying to address a Marcus as though he's not had any change of mind about anything. Like, he's a, he's a constant from episode yeah. 1 to 9, which is just not true. Um, 
we care because he Not has a my name. First watch through. Go, go so ahead. on my first watch through, it took me a second to realize they were the same characters simply because of the mustache. That's a that's a true story, right there. I think the first thing I noticed <laughs> when watching it with Fring, I was like, oh shit, he's sheriff now. And I was like sad because yeah. I was like, what a piece of shit. <laughs> 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 but it's a cool way of just being like, yeah, that's what happened as time went on. Uh, but yeah, we care because he has a name. Are you sure this guy is a writer? Because he doesn't seem to understand basic fucking concepts. <sighs> a lot of I wonder what he's written. Basic concepts, like JJ. It... Hmm. True. He seems to elevate himself above a writer. It's like for you writers, this is my advice to you. It's like I'm oh. a good enough writer to teach writing, but not the uh, not accurately. Steve Rhodes... only, as we know, the only people who teach are very successful in their field. Yeah, of course. Right. Steve wrote his own story. He was an interesting character. F you. The, uh, the pencil, Steve, wrote his own story. I like that. That's good. That's good. Hey, Fringy, look up the thumbnail for Oni Plays Weed Games video. Uh, Fringy is currently unavailable, but I will pop that <gasps> in the chat and he'll see it when he comes back and he will say things. Hi, Massives. Is Duma still not here? Remember when he was certain that Silco and Jinx showered together? Good times. Uh, it, was, it was just a kiss. <laughs> and he was a little mistaken. Um, but yeah, I, I think he said he'd happily come on on EFAB on a different uh, topic, so I'm sure he'll be back. 3D Squelton. Yeah, he will. 3D Squelton is life. <laughs> also, he likes balloons. That's true. True about 3D Squelton. Uh... I hope he wouldn't be considered uninteresting or uncompelling. Oh, that would suck. Yeah. Uh, the opposite of locking up violet is l unlocking down yellow. Did anyone unlock <laughs> down yellow in the show? Uh, nope. Afraid we don't have an anti uh, Marcus then. Damn. Uh, trust Shame. the one right undercity person. So he's saying Echo isn't trustworthy. Dude, there's so much to that statement we probably didn't even address, right? Like, first of all, she yeah, trusts multiple point. people. Secondly, what do you mean the one right person to trust? Nobody is trustworthy in the entire city except for Violet? Like, that's weird. But then, of course, yeah, well, that's Echo... that's funny thing. He wasn't even referring to Violet. He was referring to the lumpy guy. Are you talking about... The... Jericho? Who, who's a lumpy guy? No, 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 the little lumpy, the, the little lumpy guy that uh, she was aiming the gun at. Oh, I thought I thought he was talking she, about Vi. She used him as a visual example. Well, I mean, even if he did or didn't, that's another person that was worth trusting. Yeah, exactly. But that's what he was referring to. Because we were all thinking that he was referring to Vi, but he wasn't. He was referring to the little lumpy dude, the little lumpy nerd guy. And little and Lumbus. He was using... Yeah, little, little Lumbus. Lumbus. So. <laughs> so, little Lumbus. Whoop, whoopsie whoopsie poopsie. <laughs> um... The opposite of a mustache is the bearded guy in episode one, lol. Look at this ugly mug. Look at his ugly... Yeah, the whole, uh, like a full beard and no mustache. That's a that's a style. Remember when Jay on Red Letter Media would have that, Rags? Remember that? Remember yeah. Remember would have that? That was a fucking <laughs> terrible decision that he eventually stopped doing. I'm glad I make good facial hair decisions. What are your facial hair decisions, Rags? Yes. Wow, you do all of them? Well, my whole my whole face is hair. Because I'm a dog, you see. I, my whole face is hair is a great statement. <laughs> all my face is hair. So, um... Fuck, marry, kill, Vanda, Silco, Jericho. Marry Jericho. Mm. And who's left? Vander and Silco. Vander and Silco. Oh well, we're killing Silco and oh no, we're we're I, I spoke too soon. We're we're fucking Jericho, marrying Vander and killing Silco. All right, seems about right. Vander seems like a great dude. I I'd yeah. hang out with him. I would have beers with him, and I would consider marrying him. Yes, I want him to fucking raw me. Uh, all right. So anyway, <laughs> is Cup Kate meant to be Asian? I didn't notice. Um, I think. Her dad is Asian, her mum isn't, I think. And that's why, so she's got, like, uh... Like, her eyes are, are, are not quite as rounded as the other characters are drawn. So I, I assume that's, like, 
the way that they're trying to show that. I don't know. Um, He's obviously... a mixed race, you might say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've just only plays the weed games <laughs> thumbnail. Well, now I've got to see it. Only plays weed. Why games. did someone ask me? Is that they why did, you um, but now that you've laughed at it, I want to see it. Oh my god. <laughs> it's real funny. Holy plays. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd finally give back, uh, give some back for the literal months of video after catching you guys live. I arrived at the two hour mark, Ooh. so I guess I'll play on 1.5 times speed and see if I can catch up. Wish me luck. Well, Magnus, did you catch up? Because we're now at nearly five hours. Means you probably should have by now. If that'll if you would times oh it was time points point five. Fuck, I can't figure that out. <laughs> Maths. But um yeah, maybe maybe you are, maybe you're not, I don't know. McLean, South is where your marriage went. The last tight thing you slid in was an air vent. <laughs> is that a that? uh Die Hard. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's harsh right there. Um, I don't like X, therefore X is bad. That's what this whole video is. Um, he seems like he's got some, this is the thing, he's got some sort of a system, but we haven't really figured it out. I want to ask him why it is that a well-utilized character cannot be, that can't be a part of how well-written they are as people or whatever, and that, you know when he opened with the whole unlikable, uncompelling, blah blah blah, it's just like, because he kept repeating the unlikable things, like why does a character have to be... All of those things, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I was thinking about how it's not even a collection of them, it's just any of them individually. Especially when he said that, um, when you said Marcus didn't do anything awesome, cool, and funny and stuff. That's probably the biggest indication that we would have been dealing with someone who's barely past, like, ten years old, but I think he has. So I would like wow. to have follow-up questions. You're being mean. Yes. Not meaner than you, yes. Jay. You were much meaner. Freeney had to tell you off. I just said meanness. fuck you, and then I took it back. That's far meaner. You're you're cruel. Too cruel for this stream. Mm hmm. Hi, long I'm man. Too cool for this stream. I'm looking forward to the fourth next week. Hi, rags. Hi, Frungle. Jay, you smell like cheese. Oh. I <laughs> 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 wasn't expecting that. You smell like cheese. I How did you know? Cover. Have you been smelling me? There's something wrong with smelling a person now? Is that where we're at? Yes. The future the left wants. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's smelling like cheese. <laughs> um, I think the tragedy of Marcus is that by the time he had learned from his mistakes, he was already in too deep with too much to lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a mm -hmm. fair assessment. He's, he was trying, man, and he just, you know. Uh, some people do not review. All they do is coping and trying to find a way to convince themselves that shit ain't shit. Uh, is this referring to the video or something else? Try and convince so themselves that I shit ain't shit. Maybe maybe it's instead like, of shit, it's stuff. Like, that's what it's Yeah, sort shit of... in the non-derogatory sense. Like, trying to convince himself that shit ain't shit, right? <laughs> so what did Chad just said? Was it ever revealed what Baller's next video is about? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> no, no. It's a shame, but we never got around to it. No. Uh... Lex paid off Marcus, it all makes sense now. Wait, Lex Luthor? I don't know. Yes. Checks out. Uh, producing slash mixing music is similar to the video game bug analogy. Fix one problem equals creates another is fundamental in almost every creative process. I think that's fair. Yeah, um, it's just they're all interconnected, the pieces. Uh, it's just that code is a really good example because the code is very much built up and it's, uh, based on the connections to other 
bits of code. And that feels like a commonly understood thing, that when you try and fix a thing in a game's code, it'll have repercussions in places you may never have thought it would. I think it's somewhat commonly understood, but I do, I do get the impression that there are some people who don't quite grasp what that means. Like, have you ever looked at behind-the-scenes things for video games? The amount of bugs that they need to go through and triage is, like, insane mm -hmm. sometimes. So yeah. many. And you have to try and prioritize which ones you do. You need to hit the game-breaking ones, then the major ones. Which bugs are you going to let slide? You know, the ones that you're like, look, yeah. we can fix this, but it's not worth it when we have these other ones that we need to deal with. It's been a problem and in... That, um... You know, only speedrunners will exploit. No one else will notice. It's been a yeah. problem in... Or maybe we can fix it later. Yeah. It's been a problem in League of Legends for, like, since it was out, because they've only ever put code on top of code on top of code. And so when they're like, oh, we need to lower, you know, this item's AP scaling by 0 0.1 units, and then they do it, and then it's like, so you've just made it so that one of the characters now doesn't even... It can't even be selected in champion selectors. It's like, what? Well, why? And it's like, I don't know. Did that actually happen. Stuff. That... Yeah, they call it spaghetti coding, where it's just like they're. Yeah, when it's so tangled and so you just keep yeah. adding things on without going to like the base and reworking it from there. Where like, like just because quick... that was a real example of a thing that happened. Oh, I don't know. If I'm, I that was just made up. I don't. But that's the the nature of the kind of problem you get, where it just has these kinds of ripple effects that you're just like, what the fuck. And other people, the players well, are like, yeah. how did you screw this up? And then they're like, I don't know. <laughs> That's not I don't actually happened. know. Because it's just, yes, but it's, uh, I remember that it was, it's, it's something that gets talked about when like trying to build a new engine or something or developing a game on an engine where it's really not suited or alternatively, you just keep iterating a little bit each time until you're like 10 years removed from the original release of the, the engine. And you just keep adding on top of it, and yeah, it becomes really difficult to work with. Yeah, and, I know um, that that was a big problem that they had uh, when Bioware was forced to use Frostbite to make games that were not made for Frostbite, that they had to build new systems, and making changes was really difficult. <clears throat> and there's this thing of, like, it sounds a bit abstract and bizarre, but it's true. Um... You're, you're sitting there like, oh man, who should attack Boba Fett? It's like, oh, I guess just some assassins. <laughs> what do they have? It's like, um, we can't, like, we can't kill him. So, you know, like electric batons or whatever. It's like, oh, also like shields, just arm, arm held shields that are like really effective. Nothing can get through them just to raise the stakes. And it's just like, you know what you're just done? Do you, know what, do you know what you're doing when you do that? You create like this really easy to access and use shields that apply to the, it's like, why doesn't fucking everybody just have these? Why does it? And then you start to think more and more, and it can all like cascade. It's just like, why is there no effective armor in all of Star Wars except for the main character in the Mandalorian? Like he's like the only person in the world who has armor that works. Um, Bugs the hell out of me. It's this is the thing about be... you. It, it has the same problem as the hyperdrive, where it's just like a lot of people think this is a good argument, where they're like, well, of course you can weaponize that. It's like a it's it's an object moving in whatever way. It's like, you have it's like yeah, but if you do. It fucking breaks everything. Like you, you have to basically just create an arbitrary rule that you know. No, it just doesn't work like that. It just doesn't. But they didn't even state that. We just had to understand it that way. And then TLJ was like, la, 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 and just like sprayed paint all over the walls. And he's like, now you fucked everything up. And I saw people discussing that uh, two days ago on a Twitter thread, and one of them was just like. They still never explained why no one's ever used this before, and they still roll out the excuse of uh, Holdo was the first person to come up with it. Which is poor so shit. She, she came up with using the, the fast-moving thing as a weapon. Wow. Not that's good enough. great for her. And see, that's an attempt to make hey. it fit, you know? It's just like, that's not good enough. Not a thing that goes really fast. Could we make- what if we slammed that into someone? Do you think that would, like, hurt them? Whoa, shit, I never thought of that. How does Ray appease the sandworm without killing it? Uh-oh. She... Gives it a wink. Uh, gives it a wink. Gives that worm a wink. No, that, you know what? That would have worked better. That sounds I mean, like a 90s from a plot children's toy wink it worm. Would've, it would have worked better for the plot. Yeah, it would have in the world. Yeah, because you're just like, oh, all right. Yeah. 
man, you know well, that they were like. It. Do you think it? Do you think it makes sense to have Ray do a force heal in Rise of Skywalker when they've never seen that in the movies before? And it's like, what if we um, what if we put it in that stupid show we're making? The little baby can do it. I'm sorry, you think that it would have? You think they asked <laughs> if it would make sense? I'm gonna ask, look, Jay. There's no way it was a coincidence that uh, the two first Force healings ever done were done within days of each other in different mediums. It's like, there's a reason for that. It was to try and ease us into the fact that Force healing is even a thing. It could be... To lube it up before they ease it in. Because this is the thing. JJ is worse than John Favreau at writing. We all agree on that, right? Eh. Yeah? I think so. Uh, it's, it's like... Uh, they're both just shit, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, they really are. Like, if we can thing. zoom into the scale, right? Like, I think he notches above JJ. Like, why, though? Like, but, what's the uh, point of zooming in that far? Well, to, to say that JJ just did it, the heel thing, he didn't give a fuck. And then he was like, or someone else was like, whoa, 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 that's fucking dumb. Uh, John, can you do something about this? And he's like, I, we, we could have the fucking baby heal. That sets a precedent that healing's a thing, I guess. Ugh. I don't know. Like, would you no rather have cat shit smeared in your face or dog shit smeared in your face? Um, there's dog probably, shit, because at least I could pretend it's mine. There's probably an answer to that. Like, a good answer. The, the, maybe the, the, one of them is typically more Probably stinky. depends on their diet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so... What he's saying is that people can never be redeemed ever? What the heck? That was a weird part of the video where he was just like, this was the morally correct thing to do, and he'd go straight to hell. <laughs> so like, okay. Um, Alright. Generally, sacrificing yourself for someone else gets you a one-way ticket to heaven for the most part, but I don't know. Whatever. I don't know if the rules anymore. are in land. Well, yeah. Uh, unless yeah, you're uh, Asian. Unless you're a minority. You Wait, gotta... Asians are minorities. You gotta do a bunch of other good things first, cause yeah, I mean, we just have to find out from that guy what it. What, how do you get to heaven? What do you gotta do? What's Mark's gotta do? I uh, want theology maybe, videos from this guy. Maybe he didn't pull the pin because he was he wasn't racist enough. That could have been it. Yeah, it's like the trigger. So because he didn't pull the grenade pin, every death after Marcus's meeting is Marcus's fault. True. In fact, every death in general is his and Joel's fault. Do you remember when and Joel, the dynamic duo? Remember when Just Right said that? Every single yeah. person who's died it's is wild, Joel's fault. It? It's so fucking wild. <laughs> I, wonder if, man, he, I wonder how he felt when he said that. He's like, yeah, I'm so right. This is so correct. I'm just, <laughs> just right. right. <laughs> I have never been more correct rather than right now. Uh, Bringy's goo could cure cancer, but he's too racist. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we can convince him one day. It's it's I'm i I'm still working on the goo. Calm down. You need to make <laughs> sure it's safe. Well, that's what they all say. I'm still working on not that's being right. racist. He's, he's like no, uh, Jace. I'm, I'm he's not the... he's not gonna rush things. I'm not listening to your racism for Yeah. No, I'm more like Heimerdinger then. What? Ten years and we're good. Oh, you mean like smart but really dumb? <laughs> and super ignorant. It was an ivory tower. Oh, evil. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Ivory, tower, ivory evil. tower evil. Yes. He never explained what that meant, by the way. He oh, just said it. It's like, you guys know what I mean, right? And I was like, I kind of, the, I think. The best we got was evil via ignorance, but I don't even know if that was actually the point. And I don't I, know how maybe, it applies to Heimerdinger yeah. any more than any human being that's ever existed. Because, of course, there are things you just do not know about. So, going as yeah, whatever. Um, there is nothing I don't know about. Liar. Try me. Uh, two plus five T. Four. Yep. All right. Uh, we could recognize Australia, but we're too racist. Yeah, that's true. Anakin could not have killed the younglings and Tusken Raiders, but he was too racist to stop. This is that's what all these stories have been about, really. That's gonna be the meme, isn't it? Maybe we'll see. I don't think I was the staying power of, uh, I grew up around X, that, uh... <laughs> I grew up surrounded by racism. By X. <laughs> uh, hatred, revenge, I don't need any of that. There is no reason why. Is there any man that needs a reason to protect his own children? Adam, the first human, record of Ragnarok. Um... What? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's a reference to something, but, uh, yeah, I definitely don't need a... 
detailed and passionate reason for why a parent would protect their child. I can kind of <laughs> see that as being a thing on its own. If next week Mola told us that his mum died and that he'd, he was sad about it, his mum would have been fridged because we haven't seen their relationship. True. How it works. Unfortunate, but I mean, fridging happens in real life too. We don't make the rules, folks. Um, have a New Zealand coin for being funny on Shoes Vid. Yeah, even when I listened back to it, I was like, man, that's almost pretty edgy even for me. But it's a good, it's a good joke. Wait, you're in the new Shoes Vid being edgy? Yeah, uh, she, she wanted me to record being a misogynistic M&M. Oh. <laughs> you know, just the usual. <laughs> All mine. If you were an M&M, what color would you be? Blue. Yellow. I, mean, I think I'd, I'd be... I'd be. I think I'd want to be orange. Well, That's if you're be. not going to be, be the red M&M M &M Mahler, then I'm going to be red. I mean, I'd be chill with red. But uh, yeah, I, I like red's blue. wonderful color. Yeah, this kind of seems to me like you you would have chose red. I'm kind of kind of surprised. Well, by I blue. thought you would choose flesh colored because you're racist. No. Oh, well. well, that's a well flesh. What flesh colored is? Oh, uh, you know, like might, the, that might get a different. Imagine answer, having cause... a fucking flesh colored M and M. Well, flesh colored M and Ms would be brown, right? Because like the flesh of an M and M. Is the chocolate That's right? True. Like the flesh of a fruit. Or, well, what if so, it's like, maybe he what if did it's choose because it's like the in the inside of your flesh. Yeah, so maybe oh, okay. he did so choose flesh. It... Yeah, and maybe the Eminem has no shell yeah, and wants to be flesh colored. All right, lots of flesh in the world. Lots of colors of flesh. Cool. There are lots of flesh in the world. world. Like lots salmon flesh, flesh is uh, is is orange. Not salmon. It is orangey. Really. It's it's orangey, sort of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also delicious. Salmon it is. is. It's fucking it's delicious. Probably my favorite fish. I really do like salmon. I had salmon last night. All right, Mr. Salmon. Yeah, all right. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I didn't Mr. say I'm Mr. Salmon. That was just you getting real mad there. I, for some I, 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 you didn't have to say it. I inferred Are you it. Okay? What you said. Jay, you sound really big mad at the moment. Is everything okay, all right? You tricked me into thinking he said he's Mr. Salmon, unhappy. which is not nice. You just sound happy. Have you considered going to therapy or? Uh, I just decided know. to take it out on you. I'm sorry. I look, that's okay. All right. I won't hold it against you. The first step so is that's, that's, that's chivalrous of you, Fringy. The second step is denial. Um, the, no, it isn't. The, no, the first Aha. step is acceptance. <laughs> and then the second step I'm is not denial. Okay, it is. And then the third step is uh, anger. And then the fourth okay. step is depression. Oh, no, okay! The fourth, step, the fourth step is bargaining. And then the fifth step is depression. It all ends You know what? I'll place. give you that one. I'll give you that one. Yeah. The, the, yeah, that's uh, it's what what's the other one that people like? Mas the the hierarchy of Mas needs. No, it's uh who is it? Is it Maslov or like Mas Kanata. No, it's not Mas Kanata's hierarchy of needs. I think it is Mas Kanata's. Yeah. It might be. Mas she does Kanata's have a hierarchy, hierarchy of needs though. Of needs. She does Definitely have a good, folks a, good, a good question yeah. is below <laughs> that would, She would fucking die. <laughs> She's versatile. <laughs> Someone in chat will know. It's just the other one that people cite. Um, Maslow. That's it. Oh. Maslow Kanata. Is that her full name? Maslow Kanata's. Oh, Pavlov. No, that's. that's Pavlov Kanata. Mm. Pavlov Kanata's hierarchy Maz of people lost as five stages of grief. Uh, uh, all mimes have a French accent. They have no accent. Well, they do. They just. I guess don't, you still have an accent no, if you choose not to talk. Accent. Are you Are you sure? Right. I think so. Yeah. Well. What is the accent right. of a mute person? What is person, an accent? Then, who's well, wait, wait, wait. Mimes and mutes are different well, things. People, well, they must. They must no, have okay, an inner so monologue with which they have like an accent. Yeah, I, that's where I was going. What does that mean? People, I think the people who don't mean, have though? accents are actually uh, deaf people who have never heard speaking in their lives. Yeah. So, so what is your inner? Because th I think in words, um, I generally what, what form is... sentences in my head, and it's generally my own voice. So yeah, exactly. 
So how now, if you if don't you have, have a voice, voice that is your own to use, perhaps you use somebody else's voice for your own inner monologue, and that would have an accent. So that's like your accent in a what sense. What if you're uh, well? What if you're deaf? Then how does the inner monologue? Then you probably sound like I. So I, I'm just, I'm just thinking. Like, would it be more likely that you'd be thinking in abstract, like in visuals, or uh... probably? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I that's um. I mean, how... You could ask I'm, someone. I'm, I'm, deaf, I, I guess. I, I am genuinely like that. I guess the thing is, though, is that it, it's the thing of if you don't really have a point of reference for the way that someone else thinks, um, it might yeah, be but it hard seems, to communicate. It seems universal for everyone that I know that they think in words. Rather than sure just pure concepts. I have a yeah. Voxy.com article. What language do deaf people think in? Oh boy. Um, let's I'm see. So helpful um, that there's an article that's just about that specifically. I, I could say how a lot of people would be curious. Um, what if a mime mime's actions in order to speak had the accent? Okay, so their thinking process is a little different from normal people, essentially. When they think... They are normal seeing people, themselves. Wow. Yeah. Uh, That's accurate. Because being deaf is abnormal. Yeah, it's abnormal. Uh, when they think, they see themselves signing from a first person point of view or a third person point of view. When they imagine a hearing person speaking, they imagine them actually signing instead of speaking because they can understand him that way. Hmm. Interesting. So, now, I mean, I guess the question because, I have now is what if what if you have a deaf person who can't sign? How do they think? With their fists, like Vi. How do you? Mm -hmm. How would you? How would you think if you were deaf and blind? Like, what what would you be able to latch onto? I mean, I guess Helen Keller must have like thought of the uh, well, simulation. Of... Well, she first learned to communicate with uh, via uh, people touching her hand, right? And. Um, Right, so without spelling sound, words out on a hand, you would have to latch onto something else. Yeah, touch. Yeah, and I guess, yeah, I guess that would probably be the main thing you'd have. I guess it's just interesting to think about, um, especially when I think about how much of what I, you know, think relies on sight, um, and I guess written language or spoken language. There are people without internal monologues. Are there? Like, is there anybody who is just an absence of thoughts arising and, and dissipating? Hassan. That can't be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 to... oh, got him. <laughs> this is funny because it's probably true. Like, I don't... <laughs> he just doesn't. Like, they say there's some people who can't. Like, if you're, um, like, if you don't have a particularly high IQ, a lot of like a high percentage of those people can't think of a lot of abstract concepts and hypotheticals. Some people have trouble just visualizing objects in their head. Um, so I think it's absolutely very possible that Hassan like legitimately has issues doing a lot of the things that we take for granted in terms of being able to conceptualize things. I mean, thinking. Like, are just thinking, well, period. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's uh, it sometimes needs restating because I think that we throw around terms like stupid as a society pretty liberally. Like, Hassan is bafflingly foolish um, t to an extent that it is honestly bizarre that he has such a large audience. I, I, like, I do not understand. I maybe, don't understand. Maybe lots of idiots connect with him. I have more faith in humanity than that, I guess. Like, come on, guys. Oh, we'll we'll take care of that. Oh, how sweet of you. Just, I think it's. The, I think he's the Force Awakens again. I think that people just enjoy <laughs> him in that capacity where they they just like they throw him on. They don't really think about what they consume. Well, it's, I mean, it's it's the the problem that's sort of been discussed on the whole React thing is that um, it's like a lot of people will cite it's okay because it's it's basically a stream that I can go to to have all of the information I need to know to be engaged in like internet circles. But I don't have to go look for it, and yeah. I can have a sense of community as well because I, yeah, it seems like a lot of the reason why people congregate in online communities is not even necessarily like a shared mutual interest, but that their mutual interests are shaped by the community that they want to be a part of. Whether that yeah. be video, like you have more normal ones that make sense, like that you're part of a community that talks about video games and you congregate around like strategy games or something. 
And, you know, maybe your interest in strategy games increases because you spend more time. Then we have the weird ones, which is people looking for community through shared political positions. Odd, but whatever. I think that actually it really depends on what the position is. Maybe. Like what but... kind of issue it's on. Especially I, if I you're... Know, um, I don't know that there's actually... any... I don't know that there's any specific issue a lot of the time. It seems like well, broad, I guess I misspoke. I think terminology. What I mean is... I, what I meant... <laughs> It's not. It's not really like it, it's. Just, I just said something else, but I think what I was trying to get at uh, was, um, I think if it's the kind of thing where people are going to go out and advocate together and actually try and like yeah, but nobody does that. They just together. hang out on internet circles well, and true. talk about how good they are, and they never do anything. They don't even vote. Some of these people don't even vote. It's like <laughs> it's the true. one way that you have to affect. That is amazing to change. think. There is yeah. a sizable chunk of Hassan's audience that, because especially if they're young, because young people just don't fucking vote, they just don't vote. They'll they'll sit all day and watch his streams in his chair, and they'll talk all this stuff up and do all these things, and then they won't go vote. How is that odd? Um, it's really odd if you don't do anything with this shared interest. I think, yeah. Like, if you why is Hassan? Are they asking why it's? Well, because they're like, well, people join political parties. It's like, I would like to think that we can recognize the difference between joining a political party and like getting involved actively as opposed to just hanging out in niche internet circles to talk Dreaming. about do our something. Yeah. And then the one time that you could actually do something that's meaningful and it costs nothing except a, like a car ride or a trip yeah. or something or like that. Basically, it costs basically sending, nothing. Sending an just email. To, like, when yeah. have you ever sent an email to your local representative? I didn't mean to make this a whole discussion. <laughs> we can get back to the super chats if we want. Well, one of the things I was going to say, by the way, was just when you were talking about how it's a one-stop shop, in a sense, for a lot of viewers um, to watch his stream, to stay abreast of all the sort of happenings of the abreast. internet world. <laughs> a... I would actually argue that's why they've uh, a lot of Twitch streamers have been so defensive over the criticisms that have come from Jay, because you are actually, like, you're going to be dealing some damage to what is essentially the core appeal to a lot of the things that they do, which is... I, will, I think you're right. I will grab all of the things for you, precious viewer. Don't worry. Let me just grab this YouTube video. Hit play. Ah, my job is done. <laughs> I've I've worked very hard to do this yeah. today. We, we People want to, will want to keep what they do seeming well. Have a have a seem legitimate essentially. Um. I'd rather them do nothing. It's the motivated people that tend to cause problems. George Carlin said that. Point to me, somebody who, like, point to me, somebody who's sitting around stroking his dick all day, and I'll tell you someone who ain't causing any trouble. It's like, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> like, it's all the motivated people that are causing all the trouble. <laughs> but they're also the ones that make things better. Typically. Um, right? People watch reactions to form shared opinions on stuff they otherwise don't have to watch. Cough, cough, this community. We openly encourage, like, conversation, though. And Absolutely, we do. So we are, we are actually making the content as we go, we right? We just like, turned you can't, 15 you can't minutes watch this stream. into four hours. Yeah, you can't watch this stream and say that we have not engaged in making well, content yeah, in so at least that, some way so here, right? First and foremost, it's true. We are not simply guess, curators. I guess if it's the idea of RC, all internet online communities are the same. It's like, I would like to think that there is a way to identify. Like, what, what was one of the things that was talked about so much when we were covering that Hassan stuff is that anybody who criticizes him, he screams his head off at them and then bans them. And then the whole chat are like, ha ha, 11 months, see you, buddy. You know what I mean? It's, it's weird it's so, elements. It's of so like, weird where they all celebrate it because it's like, I don't see how you don't realize that that could be you. Because they're it's not like, smart. Unless, unless you think that, like, how you, you, you failed, you forgot the rule that we don't criticize senpai, right? Like, I, and, unless you are of that perspective, where, like, you, and you genuinely think that you should not criticize this man ever, how do you not see yourself in the position where one day you think that Hassan is being unreasonable and this happens to you? Well, it's because not happening dumb. to you in the moment, therefore, I'm fine with everything happening so far. All it right, could then. never be me. Wings quote of the day. I can't take these snipers, man. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> had those days. We all had those yeah. days. The bonus quote just says, <laughs> why? Can't take the snipers. Why? Why? <laughs> 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 Something very amusing about that, but yeah. Uh, uh, um, 
Oh man. <laughs> TFA part five when? Haha, <laughs> I need it to get I need to get to work. I need it now get to work. Oh there you go. I can't read sometimes I just can't read. Um twenty well, they need that video or they'll be stranded away from their work. Twenty twenty four. That's uh, TFA part five. On the way. Oh. Nice. So, so this this is Silco. Vanda lied to me. He hates me. Hates me. <laughs> Vanda is my. <laughs> this is a pretty good scene. It's bad to me. <laughs> uh, I'm drowned to me. <laughs> yeah. Muller on the song Enemy. Well, I like it. It doesn't fit the story, but I like the. I think I said it doesn't fit it tonally. Uh, not that it doesn't fit the story. The lyrics definitely fit the story. I just. Uh, the lyrics fit, yeah. Uh, rags. Oh, the misery. Yeah, yeah, I know. Rags. <laughs> yeah. And aren't, aren't tonal criticisms generally going to be subjective in nature? I think it's, it's I a think tough it's one a to nail. Complicated. Yeah, because like, one. how do we like? For instance, Tarantino is probably a good example of somebody who balances tone in a very interesting and somewhat unconventional way. Like of, yeah, of so. marrying comedy with drama. Comedy and drama is like the interesting one because. I feel like um, the conventional approach is you have the jokes and then you have the drama scenes and the less conventional choice, the one that I find really interesting because I'm not, like, I feel like it's really hard to figure out why it works or it doesn't work is having comedy and drama happening at the same time. Um, how, do, how do we point out something as being tonally inconsistent or like, you know, d what context do we need to look at? Um, and what if it's just that somebody finds it like upsetting personally, or they just don't like it? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's tough. Um, I think Jojo Rabbit's another, possibly one of the best examples, actually. This I think uh, that's a very strong example. Yeah. Um, Drinker recently like, did a recommend that for last them. sequence, that uh, that like final third in particular. It's like that feels like a really strong example of a. Uh, blending comedy and drama without one compromising the other. Mm -hmm. I I think I've said it a few times, I think I mean the Chief is like a pretty strong example of m marrying comedy and drama. It's tough. Yeah. tough, tough it's tough. tough. I, th I think it is tough. Um, I think that you can... I remember that was like one of the issues with Barry was that uh, there were times when the comedy was like so utterly absurd given the situation that was playing out that it was like, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, keep in mind, I love Atla despite its issues. God, I absolutely love Silco. Amazing character. Why is he so bad? Uh, good at being bad. Lol. High ranks. Hello. Uh, yeah, Silco is top fucking notch. Have you seen the Long Long Man commercials? I have. Yeah, they are they're quite amusing. It's like a gum or something. Um, but but, but the, a lot of people made edits where I'm just it's just me. Giving some gum to some ladies, you know? Long gum. Music has and a And the ladies impact. give you the gum, oh, if you God. know what I mean. Oh, jeez. I agree. Music music is a relevant part of tone as well. For sure. It's, I, think, I think it's... Uh, we talk about this sometimes, where what is a story trying to tell me can influence whether I think it's good or bad. Like, for instance, if a story is trying to tell me something that... Like... I think the simplest example would be if there was happy music playing, like if there was triumphant Star Wars music playing while Darth Vader was going down that hallway chopping up all the rebels. It would just be like, what are you trying to tell me here? Um, like, are you Dude, trying to tell me that this um, is good? I would almost got, go as far as um, it would it be funny if it was just the, the general Star Wars theme plays. It's like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, what the fuck is this? What are um, we doing? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, I've and, got um. I've got a I've got a real one for you, Fringy. Um, okay. You were you're you're aware of this one, but you haven't sure. seen it. But it's one of, it's one of those things that we suggested checking this out to see how bad Misfits gets. Oh, uh, it's that the final episode right. has actually the final season has two scenes on separate occasions where a sexual assault is put to triumphant music. Yay. Um, yeah, no, the show that show got real bad. Well, and you you really have to think about what exactly you're communicating to the audience uh, with the choices that you're making. And I think, because I, I know that this this gets a little bit tricky, because what do we do when we have like 
like for instance, when Walt, no, no, Breaking Bad's been out for ten years. When Walter uh, orders the uh, the execution of all of the uh, informants, and they're playing that, you know, take a deep breath and start yeah. all over again. That's that's kind of like it's kind of upbeat music to a very horrific scene. And I mean, of course, the point there is there's a contrast. We've got upbeat music contrasted with incredibly violent acts. It's um, supposed to make you uncomfortable. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think that's a good example of the show is not communicating to you that this is good. Yeah, uh, I think that the scene in isolation communicates that well enough. But I think when you add the whole context of the show, it well, yeah, becomes and... clear. It's like Walter's the bad guy, guys. Like, don't don't forget it. Like, he is he is the uh, protagonist of this story that we're following. But like, he is the bad guy. Um, so and I think... like, and it was after Mike's gone. Who was the person who would have stopped him from doing that? Exactly. Whereas in, um, in Misfits, it is literally like so. It's it's literally triumphant soundtrack, not like licensed music. Which I think I don't know. Those communicate different things, right? Licensed music and soundtrack. Uh, well, I'll give I you an example of that, can... Jay. Have you ever seen Good Morning Vietnam? I have, I have not actually. Let me shot well, like remember that. there was a there was a scene where they play. Uh, I don't remember. What a wonderful I've not world! Seen it. And they have Vietnam events. You know, kind of mm. you know visuals that you see, and you get this contrast of the the music and what it's saying with uh, what's happening. You know, in the uh, in the visuals, it is. Uh, it's definitely People... diegetic versus non diegetic music is uh, relevant as well. Um, is it? People yeah. Want... Is it score? Is it from? Is it in universe? Um, like, can yeah. the people around hear it? Because you want can have a... on the oh, go for it. on the misfit stuff as well. So like. It's a weird show, right? But it gets way weirder in its fifth season. There's a character who has the ability to, uh, if he has sex with someone, they lose their superpowers, right? That's the ability. Uh, the first occasion is, um, I think, I think the more defensible of the two, where um, he sexually assaults someone who has been possessed uh, to remove the possession so that they have free will again, right? It's a really fucking weird story, but. Um, like, I think that you can, it, it's more justifiable to put uh, heroic music to that scene. The second one, there's just no fucking justifying, which is, um, the villain is a character who can fly, um, and the character, this is, you're about to hear these words, um, the guy who can fuck people and take their powers away, um, grabs onto him, um, and as the character is trying to fly away, um, se he sexually assaults him until he can't fly anymore, and then he falls out of the sky and dies. <laughs> so just stick his finger up the butt. <laughs> there's heroic. No, it has to be his peen. Oh, really? So he made. It does. So as the guy is trying to make his yeah, escape, so he just all, rams his peen right up the guy mid takeoff. No, he's already taken off. He's clinging onto this guy in midair, and he rams his peen up his ass. And just to be clear, uh, the, the scene couldn't. The scene had to be made even worse by the fact that this character was wearing a full jumpsuit over his entire body. That somehow this guy wrestles off him midair. Full hump suit. Um, and then, yeah, sexually assaults him. And just, just to be clear, this is a scene of a character being raped to death, and it has heroic music over it. It, just because the character being raped to death is a villain. It's like, man, you guys misjudged this. The point that... Why do you know this? Because I've seen the show. Okay, what do you mean? So I guess to pull it back to the broader discussion, the idea of what are you communicating to the audience, I think... I think it, I think it varies sometimes, but like I would consider it to be some sort of flaw in the writing. Um, I think that I think that when you think about the fact that stories are trying to communicate certain things to you, whether they be values or messages or a theme of some kind, that if a story presents to you something that simply doesn't comport with uh uh with like what ought to be communicated uh in terms of like good or bad, that you can have a problem there um that could be categorized as a flaw rather than well, they're just complicated people or something. Like it feels like that's not. If it 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 just feels like there's there's got to be something more concrete um, to latch onto in terms of messaging, and like whether you can succeed at it or fail at it, and what that means for the rest of the story. 
I was thinking as well, uh, we didn't even bring it up, I think, when we talked about it in Black Widow, but, like, obviously the prison scene has just got generic action music on it. Um, but the reason why we wouldn't even have brought that up is because it was much more glaring that the characters had no recognition of the situation at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, the music is almost not even worth commenting on because it's just, like, it's it's just indicative of a larger problem at that point with no element of the writing in, in that case has any clue of what's actually happening. Very strange stuff when you end up in that position, but yes. Oh, Wonder Woman is, an, an, uh, yeah, Wonder Woman 1984 is, is a pretty clear example of that. Something really bad has happened, but this, but the film, you could say the film is unaware of what's happened. Um, and it's really off-putting when that happens. Well, like a story doesn't seem to recognize. I feel like smaller examples of this are, you remember how in a lot of older movies there would be like one or two second glances that like the heroes would show if any of their friends had been like shot down in combat or, you know what I mean? Like when the hero seems to have some awareness and sadness for anything bad happening to people on their side. Yeah. Um, or collateral damage or anything like that. And how for some reason that seems to be something that you see less now. Like, where it seems like they're almost completely apathetic to what's happening around them. Or, or um, you know, like, a, a simple thing. A lot of Disney films, when the villain dies, the hero has, like, a sad look on their face to communicate that they are not happy about this outcome. It's just a really simple thing that you can do that will, like, endear you to someone really quickly. And, like, not having consideration for that, you need to think about, like, what tone you're conveying. Captain Marvel Wu. Uh, I guess that's a different one. She's just outright happy about this, which is very bizarre considering these were yeah, her I think, friends. Yeah, I think I think there's still a huge contradiction there. Like it's it's like from what we understand yeah. of her, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Metropolis had its chance. Uh, yeah, I guess Man of Steel is a pretty strong example. Like it should be the thing. I mean, the simple one with heroes is have the heroes save people during the battle. Have civilians there that they need to go help. That's what they did in Avengers. Um, you know, have them help out civilians to remind us these are heroes. They're not just here to fight the aliens. They're here to help people. Um, Someone just super, super chatted in asking seemingly genuinely what the new video you're making is smaller. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll be revealing it at the end of this stream. Yeah, get excited. The new Mauler video, what will it be? TFA part four, please? Arcane and unbr unbridled praise, whatever it'll be, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh man! And killing stormtroopers, yeah, that's yeah, playing stuff. I I think that I think that's a bit different though. To me, this is more of like an inherent contradiction. What I'm referring to is the standard things that you do to try and endear. I it feels like a good one, but in Tarzan, when Clayton's chopping all the vines and it's wrapping around his neck, Tarzan tries to help him. Um. And it obviously doesn't work out. Or, um, I mean, another one was that uh, Simba didn't let Scar drop. He tried to help him. And it was like Scar that we, like, he didn't kill Scar. Scar got killed essentially through his own actions. Just trying to put a little bit more of uh, either an endearing element to the heroes or a wedge between them and the really bad things that happened to, like, the villain or something. Those dwarves just... were going to fucking kill the queen, though. What, sorry? The dwarves, they were out for blood. Oh, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that's older. <laughs> that's, uh, no, I'm, that's, I'm fine uh, with it. Yeah, I'm fine with them doing it. Oh, well, I, I think it's, it's just uh, interesting to yeah, see sure. how they were just like, yeah, they're going out to fucking kill her. It's just a common thing that you do. Um, Spider-Man trying to save Vulture. Well, yeah, but Spider-Man has a lot of those where, like, he tries to save the villain. It's I feel like it's one of the things that people like about Spider-Man is that he's always trying to, like, save the villains. Like, he's, he's never just out there ready to kill them. Those bastards. True, but I don't have to save you. <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> I remember. Hi, Mambi. Mm. Uh, how do you think Grayson would have handled Silco? Uh, that's, that's interesting. In another, in another timeline, we might have seen that. Would have put her finger in his bum. Or he would have uh, pushed back on him harder, obviously, than good old Marcus did. Um, but it's, it's, it's tough to say. I don't know how they would clash. I would love to have seen it, though. No, Jay's priority should still be Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Jay. You Guys, I think you're just going to have to give up on that. Oh. Yeah. We're going to see him. 
pathetic little babies Whoa. wanting to get me to watch a films. Have you seen Vox Machina? No, I have not. I've heard of it, though. You haven't seen Ex Machina? Vox Machina. Uh, uh, from what I've heard, it's the Dota adaptation into a TV show, right? People I don't know. It. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 no, not seen it. Monogatari has incest teeth brushing for real. What? All right. Incest teeth. So, like, you're brushing the teeth of your sibling or family member? Yeah, like, which is well, pretty fucked like, up. That's right? not incest to just brush someone else's teeth. Like, unless they're fucking them in the mm -hmm. ass. That's know. that's yeah, an invasive like, medical procedure. Mm -hmm. Like, is it? Is this like you're brushing, like, your bro your brother's brushing his teeth with your cum or something? Like, what's? <laughs> <laughs> How how do you do that? Is how do you have you do it, teeth brushing incest? Please explain this to me. I, I think I'm, I'm curious. curious it's like an anime. So curious that I'm going to actually do research to find out. It, it, it's if it's an anime, you're probably going to wind up through a convoluted glossary before you even get to that point. At that point, the joke's over, and we don't care. That actually, that does sound entirely plausible. Molly, you missed most of my memes. So, I found some, of, some of them, I think. You got, you got some versus ones. Alright, so we can't go through all of these. They're the, they're the classic meme format you guys may recognize. You got Virgin Thanos versus Chad Silko. I'll just I'll show them all so you can, you can have a look around. The Virgin Discount Joel Death versus the Chad Vader Death. I did, Banda, but yeah, all right. Chad Vader. <laughs> um, okay. You got Virgin Harley Quinn versus Chadette Jinx or Jink. Jink. Chadette Jink. Then, probably my Jink. personal favorite. <laughs> Dirt under the shows of people. Virgin Step Odd versus Giga Chad Arcane. And what's the point in even comparing them? <laughs> <laughs> You would run out of you'd run you wouldn't have enough room for all the text you'd have to put on. <laughs> Look at Boba Bat, he's looking pretty uh you know. <laughs> I, like, I really like that drawing of Boba. <laughs> too many meals. <laughs> yeah, he should be sad. He's having trouble. Yeah, you know, you got, got got a lot of good uh good descriptions here to explain why why these people are you see you got dumb hair, dumb ponytails for Holly versus Chadette pigtails for uh for Jinx. That I think that makes sense. <laughs> Don't understand her for three movies. Yeah, yeah. Those, those <laughs> pigtails need to be movies. way longer. It's funny too, because remember when um remember when Silco uh picks Jinx up off the bridge and takes her away uh after she's been like critically wounded? Her pigtails damn near touched the ground. I think that would have been kind of funny if Silco like stepped on the pigtails and tripped a bit. Oof. Your head coming right off. Maybe. It depends how injured she is. <laughs> I like the description of Virgin Thanos. One of them says dumb purple. Dumb chin. Dumb purple. Adoptive daughter hates him. Adoptive daughter loves him for Silco. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I'm yeah. These things. I... Seems he's got a little Thanos. syringe. <laughs> yeah. Um, where are we? Does the cast have any more thoughts on Savika now that they haven't mentioned yet? She's in my top three favorites, so I'd love more Savika appreciation. I do like. I Savika. really like Savika. Uh, Molly, you got like all the super chats up on screen Savika, right now. I hardly know her. Well, it, it, it's funny. This is how um, uh, Nerdrotic and I think Drinker sometimes do it. I don't know if there's a benefit okay. or not to showing the order I'm reading them. Like, <laughs> I figured not. I don't know. I don't think so because they're pretty. They're pretty tiny. You got to really blow the screen up. To start yeah, I figure them. it's if anything, it's just distracting. I don't know. Because you're trying to figure out where I'm reading from or something. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice, helpful little thing that YouTube does. Except for the fact that this screen, as many other YouTubers know, is laggy as hell. I don't know why. <laughs> Like, when you scroll up and down or whatever, there's a new one, it just fucking freezes for ages. It's, uh, not the most useful thing ever. Um, but yeah, Savika! I, I don't know. What, she's not, like, that? like, she's interesting. I like, I like the, um, 
antagonistic nature between her and Violet and everything like that. But she's just, she's kind of really henchman-y. And I'm just kind of like, um, I'm not quite as invested in Savika's plight as everyone else's because Savika just kind of seems like she's just being a bitch. And uh, wow. I'm not saying that she's like an... I'm not saying that she's like a badly written character or anything like that. I guess I'm just not as quite as invested in her as everybody else. I can t- tell you one thing for sure. She's like a gambler and she's like a turncoat. So she's uh, she's certainly got characteristics you could describe without describing her looks or anything like that. So I am. Um, he's disabled. I like her and I'm happy she's with She's disabled. It, but I've not got a huge amount to say about her she's and, and I'm hoping that abled. we'll take a lot of what we've done with her in season one and move it through in season two. This thing, I just feel like I've, I've, I understand bits and pieces about her, um, and I do enjoy her presence. I feel like it would be reading into it a little too much if I was to try and make anything definitive about her journey, if there were even to be considered suppose, one. I uh, suppose it will follow that she'll probably be more significant in season two, now that so. Silco is out of the picture. Especially that shot uh, of her... In the um, in Silco's office, with uh, Silco being dead at that point, it's, it just makes me think yeah. like she's going to be taking his role. She's probably going to be in charge, and she's coming into conflict with Jinx. Certainly not Unless like Jinx. Violet beat her so hard, she's retarded. I want to see how she interacts with Jace. That too, yeah. There's 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 lots to do with her, and I just think that this season, the two times she's lost faith in her. The boss, it's just like it's led to the obvious conclusion of maybe I should be the boss, that sort of thing. Like, it feels like that's a really yeah. easy sort of journey for her to do. Well, it wouldn't be easy for her, I just mean easy as a choice for where you're going to take her character. Um, yeah, uh, and I think that she might be assumed to be a lot more evil or duplicitous than she actually is. Um, it's just uh, the, the, the Vanda betrayal is seen as a bit much, you know? A bit rude. Especially when this kid's involved. It's hard to come back from that. Uh, the new video... Oh yeah, that's the one Jay read out. Uh, Wings quote from Mola's streams earlier this week. I've never actually seen incest go down. <laughs> he's, he's, he's never actually seen it, you know? I mean, me neither. Um, the, the other quote is... have uh, seen that? I mean, I was in my mom for nine <laughs> months, but that's different. <laughs> Is, the other quote is, um, I didn't really grow up until I was 28. <laughs> this is just... oh. Wings, he was playing COD a lot, you know? You don't really grow up when doing that. But COD ruined his life. It grew him up and it's, tore him it's down. It's Call of Duty's fault. Yes. <laughs> just every time he's just getting upset, like, now I have to play a game that I fucking hate. Like, you don't have to do anything. You just choose to because that's what more people watch, and I wonder why that is when you declare that you make you unhappy. And you start getting mad. Here, yeah, Mubsley, I'm giving you money so you can admonish Jay, which, by the way, has not kicked, that's true, but not watching Lord of the Rings, also high rags. Jay, watch Lord of the Rings. Or I'll Hello? Admonish I'm admonishing you. Okay. Get admonished. I've been. Ad- what does that mean? Uh, like chastised. I see. Wait, am I? No, that that is what it means, right? It's essentially you like denigrate. Um, I don't know what I know how to use it in a sentence, but I don't know what the actual specific. Uh, Admonish. To warn or reprimand someone firmly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I was kind of firmly. Correct. I I could have been a little more closely. Well, I guess reprimand, that would be, yeah. Hello, Mormon. Well, Brad. I... Huh? What do you want to say? I'm Go not ahead. a Mormon. Oh, I thought you said you're a Mormon, Raggy. Um, however, I need to... Um, I need to go. I gotta head out. I, I need to take care of something. Uh, so you guys okay. carry on ahead, but I gotta... I gotta call it there. I shall save okay. any that are directed to you, Mr. Ragu. We shall see you next time, sir. You bet. I will see all of you later. Thanks, bye, chat, bye. for coming around and listening and for the patronage. We appreciate it. I will see y'all uh, another time. Toodaloo. Bye-bye. Bye. Toodaloo, rags. Just four remain. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Hello, mole man. So, hello. Raggy boy and the arch enemy, Frongo. Arch enemy? Oh, what? I'm outraged. It's ridiculous.
Lies Slandor. Um, and a supporting cast, of course. It, wow. Literally, I didn't even realize this, but it says, Rags, how did you get banned off Twitter <laughs> second he leaves? Well, he, he, he posted the dreaded word. I believe that's what got him banned. I can't remember if that was the reason why. It might have been something else. Oh. He had I the thought wrong thoughts. Um, it was definitely that. I just can't remember specifically, but I, th I think that was it. Uh, do y'all have plans to watch Budz's video on Arcane? So I think Arcane is, after this stream, being sequestered to a reference now. It's not going to have any streams built for it until Season 2. What if the what if Just Right releases a video on Arcane featuring Movie Bob? Um, I'd have to <laughs> genuinely ask if, if Fringy and Rags would be okay with doing another Arcane stream, or I could just do it on my own at that point, like, on a different stream, because if it were, like, the worst Arcane video ever from Just Right, it would be tempting. But five arcane streams? How many did we do for Joker? Did that even get to four? Uh, How many did you do for TLJ? Oh, like 7,000 or something, but that's like a, sp that's a special boy, okay. So I saw You're the video boy. you were talking about before this, and it made me mad too. It was weird though, I really liked this guy's video on Echo. I'm sure he has better stuff than that. That must have been his worst thing, I'm hoping it was. Um, brother brushes teeth to climax. It's very strange. Oh, there you that go. That doesn't explain anything. Well, it means that they were brushing <laughs> each other's teeth and one of them coops while they're doing it. There you go. I just have many more questions. That feels pretty straightforward to me. I think that's that's very that's fair and interesting and wonderful. Yeah. And I'm going back away from that. That uh... probably should. Yeah. No, please explain more. No. No, this... we don't. No, stop. Oh, Do it on else, your own time, this, Jay. The next super chat. There's a lewd toothbrushing scene in Bake Monogatari oh 2. God. Worse yet, that it's the main character doing it to his sister. Why? 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 Yeah, what? Uh, why are we on? <laughs> Someone has got a Moving really on. specific kink. Moving like, on. Next one is Mola. Moving on. When I mean, when are you going to stream Dead Rising series one through three? I don't really have any intention to do that ever, I'm afraid. Why 1 through 3? Did you leave out 4 because you think 4 sucks? I've heard that 4 is pretty bad. I just know so little about Dead Rising at this point. That... Well, uh, my reference for 4 is everything that I heard, not just from Crobecat, but like everybody was talking about how 4, like, 4 sucks, basically. Damn. No time mechanic that uh, Frank wasn't voiced by the same person who voiced him originally and is basically a totally different person. Um, also that, like, it was pretty buggy or unpolished. Yeah. The first one seems, like, really uh, interesting as a concept in terms of the, the actually having, like, a strict time mechanic that you have to work with. Feel like more games should explore that. I hear Disco Elysium's got that. Like that there are things that are timed and you need to do them at the right time um to progress. Um but yeah, I just, I don't have any attention really of playing Dead Rising as a series. I don't know if any of you guys ever did. Do rather. Maybe. Uh no. Maybe. In related news, where's when's Jay releasing their honor hole? What? I, I mean, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know what an- On a hole. Yeah, that's what it says. That's the, this is you it. You lost me there, buddy. On a hole. Like, on a hole, or on a hole? On a hole as one word. Oh, like, all one word, on a hole. Not like, on a hole. Like, like a hole of honor. Yeah, the- on a hole, but one word. No, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what this person's referencing. Oh, a lot of people are saying it means flashlight. That's wonderful. Anyway, moving on. Oh, uh, Google image search anime incest teeth brushing. You know, what? I'm gonna move on to the next Fuck one. Off! Fuck, Fuck off! Vox Machina. Fuck off! Vox Machina is based on Critical Role, a D and D show. Oh, sorry, it's a D and D show. Okay, my bad. I think there's a Dota one as well. Something else, but. That's it. We caught up with today's. And I think since we're at six hours, uh, it feels like a, a roundabout ripe time, especially with Rags uh, unable to 
continue this journey. Um, funnily enough, I think Metal is still streaming. That fucking weirdo. He's been going for oh, 11 fuck? hours. Wait, what, what, what are you reacting to, Jay? What's happening? I googled the thing. Why would you do that, Jay? I, just, I don't... It's anime, Jay. What more do you need to know? I don't understand this. I don't understand why this occurred. Why did someone create this? Jay, I don't know. I just don't know. But, um... Anyway... Oh, this just says so angry, Das. I think Das has a reason to be very confused and concerned. You know, I, I we're talking I about arcane, him. and all we're talking about is anime toothbrush fetishes. Exactly. I don't understand. Yo, goddamn weirdos. I think toothbrush is the less weird part of the two things involved in that scene. No, you want me to think further on it? Let's figure it out. Oh, I think I sexual toothbrushes is is worse than in, no is is less weird than incest. I I'm actually I just got a text and plans seem to have changed. So here I am. Uh, um, yeah, I got a text. Right. My DoorDash was canceled, so I'm we're both fucked up. You know, you don't have food at your house. No, I, I don't. What I gotta get up and cook. I don't want to fucking cook right now. Yeah, do it. Wait, so now what do we do? Because I was about to end, because we finished the Super Chats. <laughs> oh, well, I mean... um, well, I, well, I, apparently, my, my thing is not happening, so I, I'm here. If there's an EFAP, there's an EFAP. If there's not, you then got... back to work I go. Six and a half hours of uh, memes and fun times. Memes and squeams. Memes and squeams. Do Ooh. not let them. Oh, yeah, screams. someone asked... Uh... How did you get banned on Twitter? What was the thing that got you banned? I said I said the known I said the gamer word, I think. I oh, thought so it was, it was the gamer word then. Okay. Well, you never know. You legitimately don't know what the they specific thing you. was. I I never I never figured out what it was specifically. Um if I did, I for, I've legitimately forgotten. I assume that's what that's what it was. And the person I was responding to, they ended up deleting their tweet, so what I said remained contextless. So that's great. Uh, and so, I, yeah, it's probably what did it. Thank God. Oof. <laughs> Thank oh, man. Uh, hey, you know what's funny? What's funny? Putin still has a wow. Twitter. Hmm. Who? Just Putin still has a Twitter. Just kind but of, the fucking, kind of like, of Taliban any game of words. Twitter. The Taliban still has Twitter. Yeah, they do. They sure do. We've got three more now, so I can at least read them. Um, hee hee, I'm lost. Come. You're not lost They're not anymore. lost anymore. Oh, boy. Uh, we'll if, send another super chat you. if you want to be last. If you were a D&D &D monster type, who would you be? Or what would you be, sorry? D&D &D monster type. Um, let, me, let me look them up. All right. There are 14... Different monster types. I'll list them for you. Wait. Aberration, hmm. beast, celestial, the fuck is construct. An aberration. Oh, we'll get there. Uh, like construct. A, like a ghost? No. Uh, dragon, elemental, fae, fiend. Fae? Fae, like a fairy, right? Oh. Fiend, giant, humanoid. Monstrosity, ooze, plant, and undead. I'm going to last. Gonna go ahead and guess that. You, I'm gonna guess. I want to be an ooze. <laughs> of course. Well, I'd be a. I'd probably be a beast, a yep. celestial beast, of course. Yep. Um. All right, we did it. Except for you. What are you gonna be? What was the entire list again? Um. They are. Uh, Aberration, okay. Beast, Celestial, Construct, Dragon, Elemental, Fae, Fiend, Giant, Humanoid, Monstrosity, Ooze, Plant, and Undead. Uh, I think I'd be a dragon. Yeah, I think I you'd be Humanoid and Ooze. ooze but, uh, ooze, yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely to ooze. ooze, but uh, it's Dragon. Yeah. I'll go with Dragon. All right, there you go. There's the joints. It's nice. Uh, 
It's for me to decide, chat, not you. I don't think so. You don't get to decide what you are. You are who you chat choose who to decides. be. That's what, that's what the Iron Giant Cat decides what you are. In the best Superman movie ever made, the Iron Giant. Well, the Iron Giant isn't an aberration, even if he wanted to be. So He's Superman. Well, Rags isn't disagreeing, so nice. Yeah. Playing 1812 Overture during the prison grape scene in American History X was quite the odd choice, I should say. Perfection. Um, read the old Super Chats, you cabbage. Well, that's the thing. It's, um, it's, it's just like, what did we agree on? Was it like between 6 and 7, as long as we reach that, that we should consider it an end instead of like extending yeah. past? Um, and as long as we make sure we catch any of the uh, the ones that have come in for the current, other than circumstances that prevent such things, this is the thing. It it, it means that um, we can do other work or we can other eat, work. sleep, and stuff. Yep, um, that'd be nice. And the the super chat catch-ups are back back on on thingy now because they they got a little bit flumpy with the the Boba Fett stuff, right? Because it chopped into the time. But, but now it's all Flumpy back to normal. Flumpy. So we'll hopefully be making that progress. Yes. Not too much big media stuff happening either, other than Batman. That's it for a while. Remember Monogatari is Theo's favorite anime. I mean, it, the, 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 why are you... <laughs> what? The right. incest one. I don't know. I, I feel like Theo would be upset if... if... Yeah, it's something about Boku something or another. That's I the don't know. incest one. No. Is this why he asked us not to watch it? I don't know. I don't know. All of it's very confusing and terrifying. Otherwise known as anime. Yeah. Um. If you guys can't think of content, just use J's. Oh yeah, we 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 we've got that as a backup. Don't worry. But this is the thing we we really we're not short on that. We got lots of things we got to get get going and doing on. I got another stream tomorrow that I got to make sure I get sleep for. And uh, I got to do too. And I want to stream more Elden Ring because I feel like I shouldn't make any significant progress while not on stream. Um. As is the I've been playing it this entire fun. time. See? Rude. Anyway. I've been um, playing with zero volume. Rude. It, it's rude to play a game that other people want to play when they're not playing it. That's just that's how it works. Oh, shit. Yeah. Learned a lot today. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Alright then. We'll, prob we'll probably stop there. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, who knows what adventures may befall us in the coming years. Thank you very much for, 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 uh, for chatting with us, in this company, for the donations, and um, is there anything else you guys want to say before I read the last Super Chat? Hmm. No, um, I don't think so. I... Time to working on stuff. No, I would, I'd love to hear this last one. I want to send us out with a bang. All right. Everyone, you all ready? Are you strapped in? I am yeah. strapped on. In. I'm strapped in. Okay. It's pretty sus that Mola can say the Animu name perfectly. It's only because I remember that that's how Theo pronounced it, okay? And then I was like, wait, is it... Oh, yeah. Is it, is it culturally insensitive to Theo specifically if I don't pronounce it perfectly? That's a yes. likely story. You You're listen a to likely Theo. Story. Oh, okay. I've listened to Theo before. Sometimes. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> this stream right now, roll back exactly 37 minutes times 3, and you'll hear it. That's probably not enough, actually. Because he's probably left. Uh, three hours. That's probably with Theo still there. But okay. That was that. Beautiful. Thank you all for watching. And I suppose we'll see you next time. Good night. Yeah, goodbye, everybody. We will bye, see bye, you bye. later. Big Bye.